I saw Gary on Sunday. He goes, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I go, what happened? Baby woke up at six. His wife made him get up and be with the baby while she while slept. She slept. Oh. I said, dude, you are an a-hole. I said, you got to start talking to your wife. This guy, this guy gets up for a living every day. Never wakes up without an alarm clock. What's, what is going on with you? And he can't talk to his wife about it. Of she yells not. at him. She didn't yell at me. I'm so glad she you're in said, hell. She just said, she, no, no, my wife said, you want the six o'clock feeding or do you want to get him when he wakes up? So I was and you drunk. Said, and you should have said, I don't I, want either. I was drunk, so I said, I'll, I'll get him when he wakes up. But I should have taken a six o'clock feeding because it's 10 minutes long. <laughs> then you go back to sleep. Instead, I was up at eight o'clock. Why are you taking any feeding? Do you know I never fed my kids once? Uh, you never? Ever. Crystal, is your wife breastfeeding? Yeah. Well, so partially. So why, then why the are you feeding? Oh, bull, no, no, she's, uh, you know, she's breastfeeding and we're also giving a bottle. Don't her breasts hurt? Sometimes. Yeah. Does she have to relieve her breasts? We're weaning. Oh, oh are she's you? trying to cut back. We're okay. cutting back. <laughs> you know, I never once got up and fed the kids. Never. Never. What never. It? Zero. Even when we didn't have help. I don't believe you never did it. You never I'm t call my wife. I'm you, telling you. you never if I did it, ever? Only, I only did it like once or twice to see what it felt like. And then, and then the knot like, wears off. It's boring. You stay in and bed. you say to your wife, you, you stay in bed and you say to your wife, you know what, honey? I get up every day. Your job is to take care of the kid. You're not working right now. Your job, you're working. You're working with the kid. I what get up early. What is going to happen when Gary's wife goes back to work? Gary's life will become even more of a hell. Oh. <laughs> you, you seriously? I saw the way you were with your wife. I met baby Jackson for the first time. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. And how is he with a wife? Oh, his wife got him trained. He, he's jumping through wow. hoops. He's I jumping through hoops. Figured. She comes out. So Gary's now got... A family man's Jeep, you know. Oh, yes, he got the, the new Jeep car. is loaded with the baby seat and all the crap in the back, right? So the <laughs> wife comes out and she says to him, Hey! <laughs> She's snapping at him. Hey, listen to this. She goes, she goes like this. Hey! I thought you were supposed to be the man. This is a man's Jeep and load the car up with all this stuff. Guess who ended up having to load it? Oh. Now, personally, I would have taken her like this. I said, I'm going to tell you something. You see, it's Sunday. This is my one day off. I have to work today with Howard. I'm going to tell you something. I busted my balls right in front of everyone. I would have dressed it down. I would have said, listen, you had to lift three things and stick them in the car, and you're going to sit here and bust my balls? Get the hell in the car. Go home. Already, get, already. get yourself home. I would have. You're looking in the car, and you see Gary stripped of all his man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and Gary, and then she stands there. I was stripped before I got the car. And then Gary's like asking permission. He goes, uh, why don't you hold the baby and I'll hold the bags so I can go, you know, get the car set up. Please. Then the wife comes and she stands there. God love your wife. She's got you trained like a puppy dog. She's standing there holding baby Jackson. And baby Jackson's no lightweight. No, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Beautiful boy. And she's holding him. And she's sitting by the car. She's standing by the car seat. I see what's going on right away. I size her up in two uh -huh. seconds. Baba Booey's in a coma. Oh, I could tell this right away. He's, stand he's standing there, and she's going to hold the baby until Baba Booey comes over and sticks the kid in the baby seat. She's not moving. She don't move. <laughs> and I'm watching this battle. I see the battle going right, on. There's a power play. Here. There was a battle going. Did I catch this? Absolutely. All right. Now Absolutely. no one knows what's going on. I'm watching. I'm watching to see Baba Booey right. and what happens. And he's back there. He's talking to me. He's avoiding, avoiding, avoiding. He don't want to put the kid in the car seat because I know putting the kid in the car seat could take hours. It's, it's a not that, you know it, it wrenches your back. You got to wrench your back. back. It's, <laughs> it's a real pain in the ass. And my wife's whole rap is that since she wrenches her back all week, can I wrench mine on a weekend? Yeah. Well, oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And she's standing there and just standing there and standing there. She has nothing to do. Going to stand there. And finally, Baba Booey gets over and puts the kid in the car. He doesn't look at her and say, what is wrong with no, you? Get no. the kid in the car. He goes so, over and does his Let me tell you something about Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey gets no sleep now. Baba Booey has no life. And yeah. I love it. <laughs> Baba Booey used to have the perfect life. I used to say it to him. I warned him 900 times. I said, you have got some deal going. You get to have sex with all the girls on this show. You're living in Manhattan. You're living in Manhattan. Have a great apartment. Yeah. I said, you're in love with Mary now. I said, you'll get over it. And you know what? She'll hang in there and just be your girlfriend for a while, and you could cheat on her. It used to be, yeah. should I go to the screening of Planet Hollywood, the Nick game, or just go hang out in Central Park in Sheep's Meadow and look at the women in their bikinis? <laughs> or go bike riding <laughs> or do whatever you want. Right, Gary yeah. can't go bike riding now because his wife ba, 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 has decided how that... How many ooh, nights if, a week did he go out? I mean, we used to scream. He out every night. Because he was always groggy and had no voice. Never had a health problem, nothing. 
Now he's on three different medications for headaches. <laughs> and you, you should see, we're sitting by my pool. He's I look at, No, I look at Gary and I'm watching him and all of a sudden there's blood trickling out of his nose. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I oh, said, really? Gary, let's stop for a second. There's blood trickling out of your nose. He goes, really? He goes, you know, all the medications I'm on, I think they dry me out. And he's blowing his nose and blood is all over the place. I mean, there's blood on the napkins. You're going to explode. I personally think I have a brain tumor. Yeah. <laughs> he is having the worst this nightmare. This pressure is going to kill you, Gary. I can't wait to get married. What? I can't wait to get married. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> you know, Howard usually, Howard usually embellishes. He hasn't said one thing wrong yet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what happened. I wish I could say he I said was watching one that thing. battle of the baby seat, the car seat, and I just said, you know, I got to tell you something. I love the whole thing because I love watching guys who's, who ruin their lives. And I... And Guys, I've warned. <laughs> and I said, you know, I didn't just, I, I said to Gary, here is what's going to happen in your life. It's all going to end. Yeah. Everything that you can do is going to end. Stepping out of the house, all, carrying, and Mary's gorgeous. I'm going to tell you something. But, but, you I saw what? her. She looks better than ever. Everything she also enjoyed. was very smart about it. You know, the whole time they were dating, oh, go out with your friends. Yeah. No problem. I told you. And I said to him, that's all going to stop? And he said, no, it's not. Mary's not like that. I said, Papa she Paul, is huh? like that. She doesn't know she's like that. Wait till you have a baby. Oh. You know what my favorite room in the house is now? Yeah. Take a guess. Basement. No. Bathroom. Bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, you no can go can hide you. in there. Long, they don't disturb long, you. 20 minute. I sit on the toilet. What, what concerns me is you're on the medications now, and your nose is running with blood. And this is early. <laughs> He's and in the bathroom. It's, it's all because you got to get your wife in line. And I'm but going to tell you this something. Is early in their relationship, <clears throat> Howard, this isn't a long time in, and he's already cracking under the pressure. Wait till they decide to have a second Lump kid, which they will. I've told them not to, oh, but yeah. they will, because this is going to go on again. And let me let me say something. People, Robin was asking me this uh, last week when we had the same discussion. She says, "What is the ideal wife? What is the person? You know, if sexist, be sexist if you want. Tell me what it is you want. Let me yeah, hear. Yeah, what is it you right. guys want? I made a list. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> All right, <laughs> I made a list, and I would like to read it to you. Oh, now. go ahead. Right. I'm I'm interested. I'm all ears, and right. so is every other woman out there. Let's call this how to be a good wife. Well, let's not call it how to be a good wife. What would be a good wife to you? Okay. <laughs> First thing, have a dinner ready. Oh, right Plan away, ahead. No. <laughs> Plan ahead. Plan ahead for what? Plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal on time. You don't. You don't have to be last minute. Go on. What else is on the Prepare list? Prepare yourself. For what? Number two, take 15 minutes to rest so that you'll be refreshed when he arrives. <laughs> Touch up your makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Put a ribbon in your hair. Be fresh looking. That's great. <laughs> your man has been with a lot of work-weary people. Be a little bit gay, a little more interesting. His boring day may need a lift. Oh, jeez. <laughs> really, man. Number three, clear away the clutter. Oh, tidy up the house? Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Gathering up school books, toys, paper, etc. I can see it now. Come on, kids. Daddy's about to come home. Let's pick up our toys. Run a dust cloth over the tables. <laughs> now you're getting crazy. <laughs> you know what? And your husband will feel like he's reached a haven of rest and order. And it'll give you a lift, too. And let me tell you something. My mother did all this stuff for my father. Remember, girls, it's all for him. Right. Prepare the children. What are they supposed to do? Take a few minutes to wash the children's hands and faces. If they're small, comb their hair. And if necessary, change their clothes. They're, they're little treasures, and Daddy would like to see them playing the part of little treasures. <laughs> and see that things are in control. Don't I kid yourself. To. to come home and see Is your kids a mess. Is this you have at home? Yeah. I, no, I don't have it, but I'm working toward it. Well, after 20 years of marriage, you're finally going to get her in shape. Minimize all noise. <laughs> Minimize noise? Minimize all noise. Kids can be trained. At the time of your husband's arrival, eliminate eliminate all noise. Throw them out of the house if they're around. No, 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 no. They're not actually about kids. Eliminate the noise of the washer, the dryer, the dishwasher, the vacuum. Oh, in other words, none of that stuff should be still being done yeah, get, when you right. the prince get Try to encourage the children to be quiet. Be happy to see your man. Greet him with a warm smile and be glad to see him. You want to keep your marriage together. This is what you do. Baba Booey would run home. Be happy so and if here's some don'ts. For Baba Boy to do, he'd be happy to come Papa, home. Po, po, here's po. some don'ts. <laughs> don't greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain if he's late for dinner. Count this as minor compared with what he might have gone through that day. Make him comfortable. 
Have him lean back in a comfortable chair. Where did you that, read this? I'm not reading this. I'm, you, you told me you, to make a list. You got this out of a book. No, are you no, nuts? I tell you, you didn't make Have this a cool, up. warm drink ready for oh, your husband. That's not a wife. You got a St. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> Arrange your man's pillow. <laughs> Offer to take off his shoes. Oh, this, Would you run home? I know exactly where this came from, you plagiarizer. Where is it from? It's from the Happy Homemaker. That's right. <laughs> What's the difference where it came from? It makes I sense. I knew you didn't write this. It's from the 1950s high school home uh, <laughs> economics workbook. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep going. All right. Speak in a low, soft, soothing, and pleasant voice. <laughs> Allow him to relax and unwind. Man, I'd run home. I, I would, I'm thinking about getting married now. And yeah, listen to your to man. Find this. You may have a dozen things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not the time. Let him talk first. Uh, <laughs> she's good. And now bark and roll over. Oh. <laughs> Make the evening his. Yeah, yes. Never complain if he does not take you out to dinner or to other places of entertainment. <laughs> Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure. He hits you, take the punch. Sometimes your man needs to be home and relax. <laughs> All right, well, maybe that one's a little off. <laughs> try to make your home a place of peace and order where your husband can renew himself in body and spirit. Who cares if he comes home? Well, the, yeah, yeah, I notice you're not married. <laughs> but anyway, seriously, Baba Booey, you're in bad shape, pal. If you get married... Yeah, when there's blood dripping out of your nose, you're in yeah, bad shape. And, and you've only been married how long now? Be three years in July. <laughs> no, but I know what Baba Booey's problem is. Seriously, like they got married and real quick they decided to have a kid. Try to delay that. Yeah, but Baba Booey didn't want to be an old man when Baby Jackson Baba plays Booey. baseball. That's right. But now what now his life is. In a but now his life is, hey, get up early at six in the morning. Don't go out because you gotta watch Baby Jackson. I'm not gonna do this alone. You've got to help me. And he's miserable. And you know what my house is going to be? Right. I'm going to say, hey, baby Jackson, I'm still a young dad. Let's uh, throw the ball around. I go, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be play. gay or something. I don't you know? play. Yeah, he never uh, wanted to play right. ball. Yeah. He'll be addicted to drugs. He'll be like, I want to hang out with mom and wear her dresses. Well, I've got some news for you guys. Hey, you little bastard. I worked my ass off and I'm waiting to play ball with you. Did you think that your parents <laughs> considered you attractive children? No. You, Gary? Uh, yeah, you know, I guess they're, you know, biased. Mine didn't. You sure? You sure they thought you were attractive? Why? Well, you mean, do they tell me I'm attractive, or would they say different when in a poll? When you were a baby, did they find you attractive? Well, they didn't send any pictures What's of your any, point, any contests. There's an article in the paper today yeah. that says parents, especially moms, respond to their children differently depending on whether they're pretty or not. Yeah, well, Gary was no doll. <laughs> but here's the point about it. There's a whole study, though, that wow. says that it affects your life because your mom treats you in a different way. She doesn't give you as much attention. Wow. And if you're ugly, she considers <laughs> being with you a burden. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and everything you do is considered, you know, some kind of a problem as opposed to, oh, isn't that cute? Look at how smart he is. It's like, wow, that's incredible. Who are you staring at me for? I don't know. I, I was working, I was working you into a fit. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Believe me, Gary, you are a hairy baby. Your mother, <laughs> your mother didn't, didn't find you a pleasant child. But let me tell you something. You're on your road to ruin. I see it, man. And it's, I, know, I know what you're going through. I empathize with what you're going through. Very happy. I really okay. am. I know. I know. And your I nose saw is it. bleeding. Your nose is full of blood. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Einziger has this wedding, and of course Gary had to get up at 6 in the morning to feed baby Jackson. This is before the wedding. I thought this was Sunday morning after. This was Sunday, Sunday morning, morning after. Oh. Did you... Uh, I got it at 2.30. Yeah, so you had four hours sleep. And what happened? Baby Jackson, of course, didn't want to go back to sleep. Right, so then my wife got up and I went back to sleep for at half, 10 o'clock. Exactly. Yeah, so uh -huh. you stayed up and probably had a headache and had to sit there with the kid. And what did you do while the kid was up for three hours? Well, you know what's really funny? Remember how, like, you you were saying the other day that your father never did this? Yeah. And Tom was saying, you know, not. how his, his mom raised eight kids. Yeah. So I got up at, like, you know, I got up early and I'm running around, I'm feeding the baby, and my father in law is sitting there reading the paper. Yeah. And I know he's looking at me like I'm, like, some sort of a pussy. <laughs> yeah, you're like an idiot. Because <laughs> your father in law never did. He's reading the paper and I, I, he's almost like, you know, I, I thought he was going to turn out to me and say, why don't you go wake up your wife? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, what's your problem? I so, can't uh, believe that the guy gets I mean, up at your like wife gets to sleep every or late every day or sleep whenever baby Jackson gets up she, taking out she, she, she gets up at six o'clock. No, she yeah. gets up at six o'clock every morning. But she can go back to sleep. Yeah, when he goes working. when he when he takes a nap. Sometimes he doesn't go back to sleep, but when he takes a nap, that's time to do the housework because you can't do housework, you know. I don't know. That's what, Why does he, that's what she says. I don't know. I man. don't know. I've got to put a video camera yeah. around the house. Yeah. Just to check her work. Gary's got to stay with you and learn.
You, you, you need to take him into your home for a while. Yeah, you, you need help. He needs right, an apprenticeship. I, I got to call my wife now. I'll tell her I need to be at your house for a week. <laughs> yeah, just I'll give you lessons. I need to just observe. <laughs> We're doing work. Yeah. Talk about avoidance. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get work. Then you're gonna get back pain, and you're gonna get everything else. You know what you did, Gary? You went home and you did too good a job. You can change Baby Jackson's mm, diapers. Right. You can change his clothes. Never you do can it do once. all that. Stuff. I changed the Duke diaper maybe three times. Period. That was the end of it. And then you do it so bad that the baby really gets messed up. You know, you know what you do? You wipe real hard. The kid gets a rash. They'll never oh, let you touch the kid again. <laughs> Super hard. Get hemorrhoids. Do a two-year-old with a hemorrhoid. Or you turn the clothing around like this. Like you don't know right. how to get them in it. Yeah. And they oh, just here, grab it from you and take it over. Yeah. yeah. You got to mellow out. You're being too good a father. You, you don't know. need to be there for the kid like that. Yeah, you're a little too much there. Jackson won't appreciate it. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Ralph needs to be quiet. Yeah, right. Yeah, be quiet, man. <laughs> it's nothing worse than a single guy sitting in the room. When I, don't getting, getting, I don't mind getting it in stereo, but I'm getting it in quad. Yeah. <laughs> be like Ralph's dad. Leave. Leave. <laughs> no, but, you know, like, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I love my kids and everything else, but you, there's got to be, a, otherwise you're going to lose your sanity. I know what it is. Well, you want to, you know, I was telling Gary, hey, I went for a bike ride on Sunday, and I went Saturday. He was like, oh, my God. And he's jealous. And he's jealous. And I love yeah. that he's jealous of me. I do have to say, I mean, I was, I was at Howard's house from noon to 6.45 yesterday, and I believe the total amount of time of interaction with his children was under three minutes. All right. <laughs> well, I don't think that's anything to emulate. But. <laughs> Gary was jealous. <laughs> I got it worked out. You could work it into ten. Yeah, and it was oh, enough. Funky. The kids know I love them. You, you, you. I, when I see those three minutes, man, I make that quality time. <laughs> I, t I kiss them. I love them. Those are Kodak moments. Yeah, those three minutes. They're beautiful moments. How much do they want to see you anyway? They don't. They're busy. They got to teach your kids to be independent. That you, you coddle that baby Jackson. No wonder they used to take me over when I'd come. There was somebody to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, you know, don't worry about anything, man. You just got to mellow out with that. I'm Get your worried. wife under control. Ooh. I'm not worried. No, because you're really unhappy because it's like, I know he wants, you know, in the worst way, he wants to go bike riding. He yeah. wants to do certain yeah. things. And his wife won't let him because she says, hey, when am I going to go bike no, riding? No, I'm going bike riding. You know what he's going to do? When's Father's Day? My wife he used to do that to me. He's going to get one of those seats now that they yeah. have for the kids you can put yeah. on the bike. Yeah. And Gary will be that father <laughs> with the baby well, on the I'm bike. I'm actually trying to get one of those, uh, what do they call them? Those joggers? Yeah. You know, right. I could take the kid and jog with him. Oh, man. See, he's going to be one of those A baby jogger. Oh, God. <laughs> Gary, you, 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 that's a mistake. What, you think I'd look like a homo jogging with the baby? It's not even a question of that. Once you do that, then your wife's always going to expect it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious right. with you. You see those fathers with those three-wheel <laughs> things running? That. Yeah. Then they have the special seats and the little baby sitting there with a helmet on Yeah, on the great. Bike. Yeah, that's a real manly ride. <laughs> you should lose lots of weight doing that. <laughs> you <make laughs> what are you, a coolie? <laughs> 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 oh, you want me to ride you over? <laughs> I got my kid in a rickshaw. Yeah. Build railroad. <laughs> now, you got to work out that whole thing, man. And don't have any more kids. You've had enough. I don't know if you can handle it. <laughs> yeah. Your wife can't. I have seen. I saw for myself. I sized her up in three seconds. She's another princess. Trust me. She does a great job. I got a princess, too. Do you, do you have dinner waiting for you when you get home? Hell no. No, my wife cooks every night. I, oh, she does? I, don't know, I don't know that it's waiting for me, but... But you do get a nice hot meal every day. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, you okay. deserve it. She's a real good cook. You deserve right. it. You watch Jackson while she cooks? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, great. That's a, that's a fun day. Hey, hey. Uh, parenting is a two-person job. Look, the nose is starting to bleed. <laughs> two-person job. It is. Job. No, it's not bleeding. It's running. You see, he, says, he was sitting there while I was talking. Every minute he was like... <laughs> <laughs> can't even breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have an embolism. Pop up whole high. If you're lucky. I gotta go blow my nose. You do. It's, there's blood coming out, isn't there? <laughs> blah, blah, so blah. how did Mary and the baby get to your house? She picked up Gary in the car. Oh, okay. She had the car. He dropped off Gary. I see. And, um... Gonna be picked up like a little kid. Yeah, it's just, you should have seen how pussy whipped he is now. And this is the guy who had it made, and he knows it, and that's why he's getting all these headaches and stuff. He's and he knows it. The baby. And it's bad that I'm pointing it out. Maybe, maybe I should just shut my mouth because he's really going over the edge. No, this is good because if I ever get any thoughts of you're, marriage, you're straightening yeah. out Ralph. Yeah. Huh? All right. But I remember he used to be, you know, he had that whole situation under control. He thought Mary was so different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she sucked him right in. And he got mad at me once. Cause I'm talking do. about privately. I yeah. pulled him aside and I said, you got to understand what's going to happen. She, 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 you know, she's going to crack from the pressure, too. 
he was like, you don't understand, man. I love her. And I was like, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. I love her. She's great. And but he was always telling me how cool she was. Yeah. And that's what made it so great. Yeah. Because she put no pressure on. <laughs> he had the same life. There yeah. were no orders. Nothing yeah. had changed. He was <laughs> the same Gary with Mary as before Mary. It's a slow process. It's almost like cancer. It comes on slow. And you don't even realize and it's you don't happening. know it. And then when you're in the middle of it. <laughs> but when it gets a hold of your stomach, it eats it up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> He's on three different medications. <laughs> what is it called? What is that stuff called again? Ampicillin? No, amoxicillin. You no, uh, uh, amp, uh, amoxicillin is for the ear a the earache. I've got <laughs> no, uh, neproxen. No, what's it naproxen. called? Naproxen. Naproxen. Don't you think maybe your wife on a Sunday could have let you sleep because you've got, you're on all these medications and maybe it would have helped you get better? Yeah. Did you tell her you had gone to the doctor? I thought she oh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah did she realize that like, that's, you need rest? She thinks it's normal that you should be taking all these pills? I don't know. No, you know. Go for it, dude. You're you're in great shape. <laughs> Get a note from your doctor and give it to Mary. Maybe she'll maybe she'll lighten yeah, maybe up. Maybe he can schedule you some nap time. Yeah, you guys make it sound a lot worse than it is. You got to do what I did when I, I used to have bad backs, and I, every minute I'd be whining about it. I'd be like, "Oh, I can't, oh, please." I, was, uh. I mean, the truth of the matter. And is... And you know what I used to do? I used to go in my room and have to lock the door and lay down on the floor and like rest my back and my head, and that way I got to watch TV un uninterrupted. That's what I was going to say. That's when he was watching no, the, television. The I got to tell you, I'm tired. It's a bitch without a alarm clock goes off. I I had real trouble getting up this morning. Yeah, me too. I, I got to tell you, it's uh, maybe it's the time of year. Maybe it's the time of year. Maybe it's the time of... I don't know. But it's usually like when the weather starts to change from summer to yeah. fall that I, I get real sleepy and dopey. Especially dopey. So it <laughs> makes for better shows. When I'm dopey, it... Can't be anything but good. That's right. Dopey equals good here. <laughs> this is where underachievers achieve. There you go. That's right. Beavis and butthead you. That's it. You know, uh, oh, I'm so itchy, too. I'm just scratching. Excuse me. I decided yesterday I was going to go to bed at 530 because <laughs> I never get enough sleep. What kind of life is that, Howard? I don't have a life, Robin, okay? <laughs> And actually, you're to blame that I stayed up because Robin gave me this TV show to watch. <laughs> Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, the TV show. I got thoroughly depressed. We have to live on Earth. Oh, my God. Did you guys, anybody else see that beside I want me? To borrow it. Can I borrow it? Yeah, I, I didn't bring it in. I left it in my VCR, so I'll have to bring it he tomorrow. He couldn't move after he saw it. Yeah, I've been telling everybody about it. God. It is. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's very depressing <laughs> because you realize you are them. What did I say to you? I said, mm. here's your nightmare. Go home and yeah. watch it. So it's, a, it's a thing about these great guys who are married to these annoying women to whine and bitch. You know, I, have to, I must be from Mars because I identify. The only guy who scared me was the postal worker. Wasn't and, he funny? Yeah, well, he reminded me of Ronnie the limo driver. Oh, man. Yeah. Always angry. Yeah, like a stick. Yeah. You know, he's like a totem pole in yeah. the house. It's weird, but, you know, us guys... Uh, you're great, right? Well, no, after you watch this, you go, we shouldn't be living with women. <laughs> we should just, like, you know, mate with them and then leave. Did you have that feeling after, you know, they went, went through the, the mix master and came out different? Yeah. I, I got to tell you something. Men who live with women, and I'm one of them, <laughs> and I've, I've done 20 years more than any of these guys on the TV yeah. show. And look at how whipped they were. Yeah, they were totally pussy whipped. And the only reason that I'm not totally pussy whipped is because I throw money at the situation. Uh, you know what I mean? They have to do some housework. Yeah. <laughs> Every time my wife wants me to do stuff, I just hire another person to yeah. do it. To the point now, my house is overrun with people. Because women, uh, even this guy shows you on the show, they're never satisfied. They want you do in order to prove your love to them, you got to do stuff. You got to do it every day. Yeah, you got to like clean. If you clean the kitchen, that gets them hot. Meanwhile, you should see these women. All their husbands are aging better than them. They all look like they're, they're the, these guys' mothers. <laughs> <laughs> it's frightening. It was a, a black couple, lovely black guy. I said, boy, what a lovely guy. And this woman is just uh, running them into the ground. Did, that, you know, that was really, that was the saddest one. Oh, because my God. Because remember they showed the pictures of him cleaning the entire house. And she still wasn't happy. And she folded her arms and went, you did a little better. Right. Oh! I was like, I mean, oh, my get God. Get away from, I, I, I watched this show. he was devastated. I mean, he was doing... Leap! He was leaping through hoops. But Robin, you're a woman, and you couldn't live with this oh, woman, oh, right? Oh, he was hard. Right. So it's just, it's just, men and women I've learned are not really meant to live together. And every guy on this show, after he's been in marriage for a while, 
isn't getting enough sex. The wife thinks, oh, he's getting plenty of sex, and they think plenty of sex is once or twice a week. <laughs> and every guy wants it every night. You know, my wife has been feeling ill for like two weeks. She two weeks? To, yeah. She, she should be in the hospital. Yeah, right. They should have her committed. <laughs> so, like, she never thinks of, like, before I go to bed, just coming up and using her hand. Yeah. And, like, massaging me. Generosity. Yeah. I mean, like, so it's like... Did you wipe a table or and what, bring a flower? And what does like, she think? I mean, I got a I got a pretty decent job, and I got some chicks who are interested in me. What yeah. she, how could she not worry that where I'm not going to... Where are the gonna, rewards? Yeah, where are the rewards of marriage? I mean, we all got married because we want to get laid on a regular basis, exactly. and all of us aren't getting laid. That's our wiping of the table. Right. That's our taking out the trash. You know what I'm saying? What's he talking about? Uh oh. Am I having a male bonding session know. with Fred? No, that's our, that's uh -oh. our equivalent. I'll tr I can explain it. This is what Fred. Yeah, right. I know. We need that, and they. Yeah. Uh, that's they what we need. Right. You right. need a wiping of the table. We, we need, need that, that activity. We need constant right. activity. It's not that far a stretch. Right. right. No, I well, get it. Howard didn't uh, uh, understand you either. Uh, nobody understood. But you know, this <laughs> is one of the few times Fred comes to life. Men are from Mars. Fred is from Pluto. Back a couple of steps. I don't know where Robin's from because she's beyond all female description. <laughs> Freddie, he hasn't been awake in a No, just get Boy, you going. Everybody go. Fred ain't having the greatest marriage. Oh, forget it. Yeah, right. It's like, you know, that, and that loudmouth, he should be stoned. Oh, you John saw the show, Fred. too. Yeah. I, I saw a bit of it before I went to bed. My, yeah, wife, well, I'll tell you what, my what? wife is sitting there laughing, going, <laughs> The guy who wrote Shut the book, up. Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, he's the worst part of the special. He's uh -huh. a traitor. When he comes on, it's just, it's just I think annoying. He's just trying to score points. Yeah, but it's not even interesting. No. It's interesting just to watch a couple fights. Watch a couple fights. Yeah, right. That I learned from. That's why I thought it was great. Yeah. There were no good examples or no... No, There's no good examples. Every, every marriage... Mean, every the marriage... Got the better of it no, every wrong. marriage is tons of work. Every marriage, the guys are all miserable. The women are miserable. And it's the men's fault. And they stay together because you're supposed to stay together. That's the ideal. But and, and well, also because the next one ain't going to be any better. Uh, well, they say that. They say that in the special, that 50% uh, of first marriages end up in divorce... 60% of second marriages end up in divorce. You think it's going to be so much better. Yeah, but it's never it's better. It's the same show. Same well, what kind of jerk-off gets married a second time once he gets out of the first one? How about the guys that married the same girl? How about I'm how about there was a guy Gary was telling me about that married a woman, the same woman, three times? <laughs> oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, Larry King married one of the wives twice. Right. But what difference does it make to him? And no. he knows they're not going to last. Marriage for him is like dating. Well, Richard Burton is. But sometimes a guy gets married, then marries somebody else, and then goes back to the original one. But to marry them and divorce them consecutively. Right. Yeah. The only happy marriages are if you marry like a Playboy playmate. Yeah. And you're a real dog. <laughs> <laughs> then you can justify all the crap. Dance right. every morning. Yeah, yeah, you dance. You know, if you're married to, like, a dream girl. Yeah. She's not interested in trash. Or some chick who will take care of you financially. Either one. Those oh, will work because you got incentive to please her. Totally out of, out of balance. Yeah, but all I can tell you is... Well, then I couldn't understand after watching the special how your wife just screamed at you. You're from Mars. You know, she didn't understand at all. No. Well, she didn't see the special. She didn't? No. Oh, she didn't? No. I thought she had watched it. No, she just knows the title of the book and screams at me. And then screams at me. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. So is this supposed to help? Uh, it make you nuts. No, it, you know what? It makes you realize you're doomed. Yeah. It makes well, you realize. what you're supposed to do is... You realize this, everybody's in the same no, suit. men are from Mars, women are from Venus book, and then start cleaning your house. Yeah. If, if This guy's <laughs> theory is if you clean your house, your wife will dig you. <laughs> And she'll dig you so much that then she'll give you sex, even though she's not enjoying it so much, but at least she'll give it to you because she'll be feeling some affection. And then if when she talks to you and starts, you know how, like, my wife, I come home and she wants to, like, yeah. tell me her day, yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't want to hear her but day. If you act interested. But if you act minutes. interested and if you lie to her, this is what he basically said, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll get some. So like it's if you, if, a lie. Yeah, like, yeah, it's so a lie. So you're supposed to act, act the whole time you're at home. Like, you know when your wife goes... And you know how your wife gives way too many details when she tells a story? I don't know if you're wife, but, but I've related to every one every of these Every woman does, I think. Yeah. And, and they, don't know how to, they don't know how to capsulize and get to the point quickly. You don't even know what the point is by the time you're done, you're woozy. And then, like, my wife will come to me with problems, and I'll quickly solve them. I'll go, one, two, three, this is what you do. They don't want that. <laughs> they want you to listen. listen. And they want you to say, I don't know the answer. That was the hardest lesson I ever had to learn. I thought, well, you should do this, this, and this. And it's like, and they get mad at you. Yeah. Because you're not letting them talk. It's a real... It's because you got... Well, aren't you interested in the solution? This guy... The guy who wrote the book is retarded, too. And I'll tell you one thing, man. I know the guy's married, but he looks a little fey. Oh! <laughs> well, he's been totally, uh... Cast Pussy wife, yeah. <laughs> they took everything from him. His wife must have cut his penis off. <laughs> He's getting even with all of it. I tell you. I he think he should be, be wearing a dress. Yeah, I mean, really. Put on a dress and high heels. <laughs> 
And you should see these women these guys have to live with. Mm. Oh, boy. Some and of them need them. And they have the nerve. There was that one woman. The one with the black hair? Yeah. Yeah. And she had a fairly nice-looking husband. Uh -huh. And boy, did she give him hell. Yeah. She was hell on wheels. Yeah. 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 Oof. Poor guy couldn't do anything right. I guess I'm a guy because I sided with all the guys. <laughs> uh, Marie, you're on the air. Well, I saw both sides. Did you? <laughs> I tried to. I couldn't. Uh, Marie, you're on the air. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry, Marie. You're not on the air. Now you're on the air. Hi. 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 So I'm watching that the other night. Yeah. With my boyfriend and his roommate. Don't get married. No, I don't. I just got out of a marriage a couple of years ago. And I'm watching it and I'm like, I thought I was going to completely side with the women. And by the end of the show, we were all feeling so bad for the guys. Yeah. yeah. I almost felt obligated to do something for these two. You should have. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was thinking no, You should feel it. obligated to do something for me. But the, oh, I'm, I'm I came to the obligated. conclusion that men need different women. I would do anything for you, Howard. Because men will be attentive in everything a woman wants while you're dating. It shouldn't Absolutely. have to be a struggle, like you have right. to make it up. Right, right. because what, what it really is saying is after a while, the the uh, romance goes out. It goes out the window. You need new partners. Yeah. That's what it's saying, the special. I know. I know. And that poor black guy, Eve's oh. Marie. Oh, what a nice guy. Oh, he yeah. was so sweet. He yeah. was literally bending over backwards for her. This black guy was doing anything he could to make his wife happy, and she was such a bitch. They Shot him down were. every time. Oh, they it, all were. Even it, those women said to her, you know what? You're not up. willing yep. to do anything. Yeah. Is is that what it's all about? Like you live every day waiting for your, your spouse to do something nicer? Yeah. Yes. Like the, the women just... And my wife complains about me. She says that I am from Mars, that I am not responsive, that I no longer listen... That I, and I what was really amazing. Every right. guy had a cave. You know yeah. how you have your cave. Every one of them. Had yep. One. Every guy has a place in the basement. Yeah. And one guy's wife says to him, "We don't want you just clean out the garage. You could sit in here." <laughs> and it's like, "Well, gee, thanks, man. I'm busting my balls working to pay off this house, and I get to sit in the garage." And that was the best part. It was like, and he accepted I don't mind it. when he goes down into his cave because the whole rest of the house becomes my cave. Now, do you know why guys uh, go off and, oh, and do stuff? I said, "You know what? I'm surprised that special didn't end that way." <laughs> I, I can't believe it didn't end in battery charges. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Some of the women should have been severely beaten. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate to advocate that, but some of them needed it. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, that yeah. was tough what some of those guys were going through. All pussy lifted and stuff. Thanks for the call. And okay, that's what Howard. I did after I love you. I love you, too. I love you both. Thank you. I love you. Have a good day. Thank you. After the special was over, I was like, look at the, you know, they were declawed, defanged. It was just a bunch of married guys all sitting around, you know, trying to please these women as best they could, as best they knew how. I mean, they're working hard. Yeah. They're going out and making a living. Yeah. You know, they're doing everything right, and they still can't get a break. No. Yeah. And the guys don't even care what the women do all day. They don't. They're like, go out, have fun, do whatever you want. Just don't bother me when I come home. I just want to sit here and watch TV. <laughs> you can't, you're not allowed to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, oh, poor Eve, the black guy. He was like, have you guys noticed that you're not getting to watch TV once yeah. they took the cure? Oh, well, I solved that. I put, I listen to this. Downstairs in my basement, where I have my TV set and my own little setup, mm -hmm. I put electronic bolts on the doors. <laughs> Honest to God, the only way you can get in is if I let you in. See, I, I solved everything, but I threw money at it, you know? Uh, and not every guy can do that. Yeah. Because your wife just goes shopping every time. Right. Right. Uh, Blake, you're on the air. Yes, Howard. I wanted to ask you, um, did you get to watch 90210 last night? No, but I've got it on tape. That's going to be my big event today. I'm going to go home. That's his reward. <laughs> I'm going home tonight, today, after the show. I'm going to get in my special blankie that I have downstairs in my basement. I have now a blanket. I have a really? leather couch, and I sit there and I let, and I'm going to, I'm going to um, suck his thumb. Put on the TV and watch a two-hour 90210 premiere. I didn't get to see it. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> I mean, it was I did see Melrose Place. Was that two hours? No, be, Melrose Place was only an hour, right? Melrose. What? It's going to be hot as Melrose this year. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of bikinis and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the promo. It looked pretty good. Did uh, Tori change her hair color? Yeah, she did. Back to blonde? To no. To red? Yeah. What's wrong with her? I don't know. But, I mean, it was... You know who I dig? That chick with the giant breasts, the big balloon breasts. The one gets a little chunky every once in a while. Tiffany. Tiffany. Amber, yeah. Who oh, plays. she got that round face. I like that. Plays Valerie. I'd like to suck her cellulite out of her body. Oh, 
Man, yeah, I'd like to it cave her head in. Do you always watch it these alone, Howard? Yeah. You, you never watch be. these with your wife? No. Why would you? Why would you watch that no, with your wife? I don't like watching TV with my wife. I'm just he doesn't like doing anything. Not with I like to be alone. The guy show. Yeah. It was, my wife watches it, but she watches right, it alone, well, you too. You said she watched it, so she, you watch it independently. Yeah, like, my mother has a rule in her house. I don't know how my father lived. My father's just totally pussy whipped. My father has to watch TV with my mother at night and has to watch what she likes. Oh. Every night. Every yeah, night. She, she, yeah. And she does not believe in him being allowed to watch TV by himself. You talk about men are from Mars, women are from Venus. My mom's got him trained. Where's she from? Jeez. <laughs> and um, she goes, as soon as you start watching TV separately, that's when the marriage is over. Wow. And she's right. <laughs> How about when you stop having sex? <laughs> no, that happened a long time ago. Yeah. It was a uh, hot show, Howard. You're yeah. going to enjoy it. Do you watch it alone? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a hot show. I mean, you know, it makes you wonder... Damn, why I can't get a chick like that? <laughs> so what do you do for a living? Huh? What do you do for a living? I, I help, um, you know, you, the, you, the Mr. King that you have had on the radio, Don King? Yeah. I've helped his son. I do, um, I help his son do setups for the fights. So that's why you can't get a chick like that. Yeah. You gotta be Don King to get a chick like that. <laughs> yeah. I've had chicks. I've gone out to many places. All right. Yeah. I got to go, man. All right. We don't want to hear about, about your chicks. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably single sitting at home watching 9021. Melrose, what's up, man? Good morning, Howard. How are yeah. you? Yes. Uh, I got to thank Ponce for this one. Ponce called me yesterday and told me about this one. Uh, Macho Camacho was on ESPN yesterday. What? Remember Macho Camacho? Yeah, go ahead. Just talk. I don't know what he's saying. He said Macho Camacho was oh, on uh, ESPN. I thought he said Macho Sumatra. No, Macho Camacho. Hector okay. Macho Camacho, yeah? Yeah. So listen to this. Remember he made that comment about niggers? Yes. Remember he made the comment? Well, they asked him if he wanted to retract it. And he said not only did he not retract it, but he wasn't sorry at all. Wow. And then he said, uh, then a little bit later he says, it's like a two-minute tape, and then he says, it's a little, then he says, and by the way, okay, I'll call him faggots if you don't like the word nigger. <laughs> you got the tape? Yeah, I got the whole tape. Do you have it queued up? I'm already. You want to hear it? And this is where he says this? Yeah. All right, go ahead. It's all ready to go. Here it comes. I already played it for John. African American has the behavior, and then you get the nigger behavior. You know, and that's the behavior that Mike Tyson has around his entourage, and and it scares people away. It's no class. Those comments made in July following the Tyson fiasco as Hector Macho Camacho was talking to CNN SI in New York. You, a couple of days later in Las Vegas, addressed that issue uh, again. Are you sorry that you made that no, statement? No, I'm not sorry that I made that statement. You know, maybe I need the wrong kind of speech, but at the same time, I was talking to a brother, to a black person himself. He knew what I was saying, you know, but I just I was talking to him, and I forgot about the camera how other people are going to view it, you know, but... What kind uh, of reaction did you get? Uh, I, I got a lot of positive reactions. Positive reactions? Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> really? came on and, and said, hey, Mosh, you know, you're right, you know, but, you know, you got, you're the only one who would say something like that, you know? Wasn't there an outcry from, from blacks in the community or in no, boxing? No, no, people know me. You know, I grew around blacks and, you know, I mean, it, it's something too, you know, I'm streety and, 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 and nigger, the, the way nigger, you know, a lot of people, they get intimidated. It's a pretty good thing because I am a personality and they see somebody like me saying something like that, they want to comment off it. But it wasn't a big deal. But isn't that, that word, that term derogatory? You know, and you're, you, you were born and born okay, and raised I, in New York. I, I, I'll change it and I'll make it more controversial. Those faggots are wrong. You know, no, well, that would, that would also you know, be... Right, right. It's a lot different. It's a man... That's it. Yeah, that's Boy, he good. is good. That is really good. <laughs> well, i got to thank for that. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Larry. Hey, Howard. Yes. Remember me to the Dice Man. What do you mean? I know Dice for years. Yeah. You can ask him when he comes in. I've known Dice. Oh, yeah, you did his taxes. Okay, I'll tell you what. You call in when Dice is here. Really? Yeah. Okay, it's okay yeah. with you? Well, yeah, I want to know I want to know if Dice is that much of a maniac that so you did his you taxes. Tax That's before he was famous. Robert even said well, that. I want to know that he did your taxes. Uh, it was a long, All right, I'll call in. All right. Thanks very much, Howard. Uh, I don't know if uh, Les Moonves is listening to this program, but quick, give Macho Camacho a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Mario, you're on the air. Something about nigger. I don't know what it was. Oh, my.
But she's black. She's allowed to say nigger. But I don't know who was being a nigger. Mayor Giuliani? Yeah. That wasn't a she, Howard. That was a he in a dress. Oh, was it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you say about nigger? Something like, you can't get no bigger, he'll still be my nigger. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was shocked to find out that black people do not want Avenue of the African Americas. See, you don't think you know everything. I don't know everything. Obviously, I'm an idiot. Uh, Lydia, go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. Yeah, hi. Hi. How you doing this morning? Hello? What? Yeah. Okay, you're on the air. Okay. Who cares how I'm doing? Oh. Um, well, I just wanted to uh, give you a call and say thank you very much, Howard. You're welcome. And the reason I'm calling to say that is because... You don't even have to explain. Anybody who just thanks us is enough. Thank you. A thank you is always appreciated. Well, uh, well, there's a big reason behind it. All right, go ahead. And the big reason is is that um, last week my husband and I were watching Private Parts on pay-per-view, and we thought it was wonderful. And in particular, the, uh, the scene where Allison has the miscarriage, and you were in her room, you know, you were in the room with her, and you were trying to console her. And, right. And everything like that. And I thought that was really great. And um, it just so happened that the very next day I suffered a miscarriage. And See, what, most people who watch my movies suffer miscarriages. <laughs> but How many months along were you? I was five. Well, five is pretty far in to have a miscarriage. Yeah. That's it was, bad. Yeah. yeah. Pretty my scary. wife was whining, and she was only like two months or something. Oh, yeah. It was pretty... It was pretty devastating. Because when my wife had the miscarriage, mm -hmm. you know, she makes a big deal about it and everything. But I swear to God, it her period has but more she blood. Told you she was pregnant. Yeah, like you know, she had been pregnant for you know, and she she was blabbing around that she was pregnant. She yeah. learned to keep her mouth shut on the other kids now. Uh -huh. You know, you don't tell everyone you're pregnant because uh, then you got to go explain and you had a miscarriage. Right. But literally, my wife had like like the kid was not not even a blood clot. Right. I mean, I saw what was on the toilet seat. Mm -hmm. Well, what was in the toilet, quite frankly. And you know how Kathy Lee says she had a miscarriage? Oh, yeah. And she had she scooped her hands into the toilet to scoop out her baby. Remember she said that? And I'm like, mm -hmm. a baby? The girl was two months pregnant. Well, There's no baby in there. Now, five months, okay, you got something to bitch about. Five months, you might have even felt life. Well, Kathy Lee's got serious problems. But that's a different story. Kathy Lee's a skunk. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad Gift cheated. <laughs> I think we all are. I, I swear, and I'm that. looking in the toilet. After two months, I got more in my nose. When I blow my nose in the morning, I got more crap. More. It looks like a baby. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe my nose is pregnant, and that's why I saw that. Maybe you should be upset every day. But my wife, but literally, that, that scene, those couple of scenes that you see in the movie, I swear to you, that's exactly how it went down. Well, it. I thought it was great how you were just so... You were so behind her, and you were so supportive with yes. her, and you made her laugh, which I thought was very important. And when my husband and I were in the hospital together, I mean, it was just, we didn't know what to do. Our emotions were running wild, and we just, like, stopped and looked at each other. And that was, like, one of the first things we thought about together was that scene that we had watched the night before. And See, that's what I was afraid of with my movie. Now when, when guys' wives have miscarriages, they'll start cracking jokes. Well, like, uh, but they're not professional comedians. They won't have that tender moment. Yeah, right. Just before. <laughs> yeah, they'll yeah. Hey, why don't you, you know, they, they'll just start ragging on them. <laughs> but, uh, no, I know what you mean. It, 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 it was comforting to you. Uh, absolutely. Right. And um, my husband and I, would just looked at each other. We, we, not that we smiled and laughed on the floor, but we, it just made the situation a lot better for us. You got any other kids? No. Oh, that was your first? That That's real first. tough on a woman, because then they start asking themselves, like, can, you, can I ever get pregnant? Will I ever have a normal kid? Let me tell you something. In a way, it's a blessing. Now you have more free time. <laughs> Wait, Maybe you, you ought to rethink this. You'll have a kid one day, and trust me, your whole goddamn life will change in your marriage. Oh. Go get that men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> yeah. Look at what it's Wait till you and your husband start fighting over who's going to take <laughs> care of the kid, and you can't even walk out the door. <laughs> Does that happen to you? <laughs> No, I threw enough money at the situation and hired full-time help. Yeah, it used to. When we had our first kid, when Emily was born, it almost ended in divorce. My wife and I, I, I was dreading going home. Really? I'd walk in the door, and right away my wife would go, Oh, I've been, I'm exhausted. And I'd say, Well, you know what, I'm just going to go outside and exercise. No, you're not. I can't exercise. You, you know, I couldn't walk out the door without being yelled at. I wasn't allowed to leave without getting permission. It was like being a kid again. Mm -hmm. So I just said, get help. You never helped me. And then the whole then you got to start thinking, well, do you want some Jamaican living in the house with you and all this kind of thing? And then you go, you know what? I'll take 
Lex Luthor oh. and put him in the house as long as he watches my kid. I don't even care. My wife said, well, the person has to have credentials. I said, no. I don't even bother with credentials. Just get me how. I got you. Hire hire an army around you. I don't care. This is a nightmare I'm in. Just say get help. You never help me. And then the whole then you got to start thinking. Well, do you want some Jamaican living in the house with you and all this kind of thing? And then you go. You know what? I'll take Lex Luthor and put him in the house as long as he watches my kid. I don't even care. My wife said, well, the person has to have credentials. I said, I don't even bother with credentials. Just get me how. I got you. Hire, hire an army around you. I don't care. This is a nightmare I'm in. So I guess and then, she, then I come home and she go, well, no one went food shopping. You have to go food shopping. I go, I can't go food shopping. I'm famous. Famous people aren't in supermarkets. And that, you go, those were the days we used to get the list on the phone at yeah, work. Right. On the way home. Yeah. You could stop and pick it up. And, and, and I'd say, what? <laughs> my wife would go, famous shmamus. We need milk. <laughs> I said, well. the fun day. I said, I tell you what. I tell you what. You call up the supermarket. You tell them I'll pay 40% extra on every item, butter, milk, eggs, if they'll deliver. She goes, what? That's that's incredibly crazy. I go, not for me. And then, you know what? He makes it. He, no, he just refused. And poor Allison used to have to do yep. everything. Yeah. It wasn't really the next day that they were getting food. Let me tell you something. If I ever got single again, if, if I come up to you and say, I'm in love, I'm getting married, I'd allow you to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. And parenthood is from hell, man. It's tough work. These people are kidding themselves. <laughs> So, are you saying that I should keep them closed? Should just keep yeah. You don't you don't keep them closed. Wear a rubber. <laughs> keep having miscarriages. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot of work, man. Well, I'm sure it is, but I'm. Great. And most marriages end in divorce. You know how like they always said it wasn't the kid's fault. Uh -huh. It is the kid's fault. Of course, it's the kid's fault. Kid ruins everything. Marriage was fine up until that. That one of the arguments in the stupid special was. When was the last time you bought diapers? Right. Oh, please. That's scary. And Why women... don't you put him? And to you know bed? what? Women, they go, oh, it's hard work taking care of kids. Well, yeah. Well, didn't you realize that when you got involved? And you... this is what you wanted to have. One of the guys said you wanted to do that. Yeah. The guy said I was perfectly fine. <laughs> You talk about marriage. You say, here's Baba Bowie. Confess, my friend. <laughs> this guy had a beautiful wife. He got married and everything. What happened when you had kids? You're not Gary. Tell him now what you do. I don't do anything. What happened? You start your nose started bleeding. I started taking pills for headaches. See, started taking pills for headaches, and he used to beg me if he could sleep here. One of the guys in the special reminded me of Gary because he said, "You know, my my wife will call me at work. I need another hour. I just sit there. All right. Sit there in the office." Gary was sitting in the <laughs> office. There's an article in New York Magazine a couple of months ago, yeah, which or in the New York Times Magazine, which then my wife accused me of saying that guys stay at the office longer than they have to to avoid being with their family. And it's true. And she asked yeah. if I was doing that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't do that. But oh, listen, you did. But listen, you, know, you talk about like the article over the, uh, the argument over the diapers, yeah. right? Like, my wife and I will have an argument similar to that. She'll go, when was the last time you bought diapers? And I'll say, when was the last time you cut the lawn? Right. And then she'll go, I'll cut the lawn. And I was like, well, I don't want her to cut the lawn because it's my half an hour away. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have to sit there and babysit. She's, she's calling my bluff because she doesn't really want to cut the lawn. I thought you were still thinking about getting some help. We're still thinking about it. Yeah. Oh. What's the matter? You're uptight about uh, black people living in the house? No, no, no. It's just, we don't. You've never been to my house, but there's not enough room. Trust me. To... My first house, you saw my house. It was no palace. I got to tell you something. I didn't care. I said, I'll move out. Let the help move in. <laughs> I've been talking to a lot of people. Yeah. Who, I mean, you're lucky now because you've had a person with you for a very long time, but I've been talking to a lot of people. I have three people. Who have a lot of problems with people living in the house. You oh, know, yeah. You, you have to oh, I went through all of that. These group. I had one woman. I was, swear, I was sleeping with one eye open. There was one woman oh, yeah. who ran his house. And he was in the army. Yeah. The woman used to wear a starch white uniform. Yeah. I yeah. ordered them around. I got a friend. I liked it. My wife didn't. I got a friend. The woman made a great salad. <laughs> you know, you get these people, these nannies, they have a, they make a year commitment. Yeah. I got a friend who just lost his third one in like nine months. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, they all they they leave, they come, they go. You know, you you got to take they care. They want to go home to their boyfriend. Right, right, right. They all go to story. They are back in their home country. They are right. doctors, but right, here they're right. being treated like this and then the other. Trick is, and I, I don't like to make a stereotype. This isn't all Jamaicans, but <laughs> don't go with a Jamaican. Oh, I mean, you know, if, if, if there are some. How many Jamaicans did you have? I guess we went through. We went through three or four Jamaicans. <laughs> how are these, uh, these are European white women. Oh, they are. Yeah, well, young they, girls. They, they, they've got an issue too. They're too young. That's the problem. They're girls. They're yeah, girls. Babies. 
You need someone who, you know, who's got a good sensibility. But, you know, I have friends, you know, and I hear their nanny problems, like the girls come from the Midwest, let's yep. say. Yep, yeah. And they don't wear clothes. Hey, now. You know, oh, hey, now. They hang around the house. I told you, you, you want to know something? If I, they wear those, you know, those Daisy Dukes. Or I appreciate that. That'll ruin your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I told you the story. I had a friend. And by the way, if you're a woman and you get one of these, like, I know a guy. Him and his mm -hmm. wife are ready to kill each other. He didn't have a lot of money, but he says, I don't care. I'll get two jobs as long as we get some help. Uh -huh. So they, they listen to this. They, <laughs> they, they hear about some Polish company that imports these Polish women. They oh, can't speak yeah. a bit of English, uh -huh. but they work like horses. <laughs> they'll do whatever you tell them. So they bring over this Polish ch So they're waiting months for the Polish chick. they got to clear it through customs, the whole goddamn thing. But the guy swears who runs the agency, these Polacks are like robots. They listen <laughs> so to everything you say and they do it. Work, 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 work. good. Potato, eat. Me work. Yeah, so anyway, me work. <laughs> so, so he's figuring he's going to get some, you know, 60-year-old big old plasso. <laughs> One night, it's a rainy night. <laughs> the doorbell rings. It's the guy from the agency. He's bringing over the Polish chick. In walks Va Miss Va 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 Voom. Oh, my God. All right. Marilyn nineteen, Monroe's nineteen, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, nineteen years old. Ooh. Like he said, like Cindy Crawford. Okay, <laughs> big breasts, a gorgeous body. The wife opens up the door, takes one look in the rain. She just looked in the rain. <laughs> she slammed the door and said, "Get out!" <laughs> and that was it. And the and the girl was the Polish girl was sitting and crying. And the guy uh -oh. called me and she says, "Listen, I brought her all over from the all over from the homeland. There, what are you doing?" <laughs> She hasn't had a pierogi in three weeks. She's a guy to the east. <laughs> but she said, no way, because my husband, will, he'll do her. Yeah. I know somebody. And then the other thing you have to worry about is they want boyfriends. They have basically got these yeah. young guys yeah. hanging yeah. around your house. Yeah, well, I'll be the boyfriend. Like I have, like, like I had a guy. I know yeah. a guy. And he's had three nannies. Yeah. And she's brought, all three have brought the same guy home. There's like a, the guy. Yeah, just, there's a guy who's the nanny guy. The, the nanny, nanny guy. groupie. He's yeah. a nanny groupie. And there's, there's a place in my town, Howard. Yeah. We go on Friday nights. It's known. That's where you go to get the nanny. Right. They all go to this one club. Wow. On Friday night. And they're hot. Yeah, they're all European. They're hot they're and they're really broke. It's beautiful. Yeah. But you talk about, like, the girls from the Midwest. I yeah. think I told you, I had a friend, a couple who was Jewish. And they had this nanny, and she started making these anti-Semitic comments, and right. didn't even know they were wrong. <laughs> yeah, she started talking about Jewing people down and stuff. Right. Wow. You know, so you got to deal with that. Yeah. What's your last name, Podell? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, I, I mean, I'm, the nanny thing is difficult. It's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, no, it's, it but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, dude. But the, the you're gonna kill yourself. I know, they do say, I don't care that every oh. nine or eight months I have to right. get a new one. Go get a new one. Saving my life. You know, and Gary, seriously, I know you hate your life. I'm telling you, man, you're having a second kid. You better do it or else you're going to divorce. You're going to be slow. Your nose is going to be bleeding. No, no, remember you told me how cool your wife was and how she was going to be different and all that stuff? She yells at you now day and night, right? And and whatever other hours there are. Right. <laughs> Wheels on it, yeah. runs with the kid. Yeah. I got the baby jogger. I got the seat on the back of the bike. Yeah. So, ma'am, you've had a miscarriage, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't be in any rush. Well, you want to be cheered up, you call here. I have a question, though. Yeah. Why does it have to be like that for? Figure you it out. You, you tell us. You're the woman. Right. How Why do you have to oh. be? Because you have baby fever. We don't. Yeah. Well, you don't want to have, um, you know, spread your last name around or. No. Not at all? No. You don't cool, want you to be you have anything to do. I love my kids because my kids are being raised properly by my wife and the housekeepers. <laughs> Howard, that's a rotten reason to have a kid. Just because right. you want your last name. Yeah, a lot of guys are into that. I was never into that. Right. I like my kids. I have fun with them and stuff. Mm -hmm. and re the reason you have a kid... But if you got if you got to go home every day after work and your only fun in life is taking care of kids, right. you, you're a guy. You want to go out and have some good times, man. I go out care. drinking, yeah. mellow out, look at chicks. but um. Remember yeah, how cool your wife was? I would, would tell her, tell her, Gary, Gary, go, go, go play cards with the guys. Don't Gary, worry. Good. Don't worry. And Gary goes, now do you my wife's that? so great. Like, I, I, we, she let, she, like, she never even brings it up. I go out every night. She doesn't care, blah, 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 blah. They had kids. It all changed. When okay, was the last like, time you went out? I go out. See, now I go out a lot now because it's not as difficult to take care of them, but we're just starting all over again. Yeah. But I'll tell you something. Like, I got an appearance this Friday in Philly, right? Right. And you're looking forward to it. But No, by the time I get back from the appearance, by the time I get back to the city, it's going to be like midnight. Right. Maybe tw sometimes it's even 1 o'clock. So you're morning. going to stay in a hotel? No, no. So I got, you know, I'm going to go home. But usually, like, before we have the baby, I say, listen, I'm going to stay at Ross's house. It's, I'm getting home at midnight, and I'll see you, like, at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Right. Now it's like, you know, you, know, you come home and you sleep late. Yeah. Right. And then you get up and be here. Right. 
Oh. I mean, it doesn't sound... Oh. It doesn't, she doesn't say it like that. Yeah. It just sounds like that. <laughs> That's the way I hear it. Yep. That's but I his nose was bleeding, and yeah. he was sleeping on a couch here. <laughs> he was getting headaches and, well, because he couldn't handle it. No guy can handle it. Are you saying... And I got news for you. The point is... Women can't handle it. Nobody can handle it. It's tough. Yeah, that's the problem. If women could handle it, they wouldn't hound guys, but they can't handle it either. That's right. Like, I can't handle it. You take this. The only way to and get the through woman it is... Says, the guy comes home after work, and he sits down to take his break, and the woman says, I don't get a break. Oh, yeah. yeah. The only way that you can handle it... Like, my mother knew how to handle it, right? Like, she would just say to us, all right... I'm ignoring you the rest of the day. <laughs> I need some time to myself. You can't ignore a one-year-old. Yeah. That's right. You weren't you there. A five you don't remember what it was yeah. like at one. I don't know. And even in your house. My mother said she used to lock me in one room and just sit lock there with me. In. Yeah, and just sit there with me. What a fire hazard. Yeah, that way, even if I scream and yell, you just walk around. That's all. And eventually, you calm down. She was smart. <laughs> but women today, they can't handle kids. They want it all. My mother sat at home like a, like a vegetable with me. She was satisfied with that. But today, women have dreams. But doesn't Mary sort of work? Yeah, she works. She's got some dopey job no, on no, her. She, she has she got... a little work to do, too. Yeah, it's not important work, though. <laughs> Don't tell her that. It is yeah, important work. To her, it is. No, no, hey, listen. If your wife free... died tomorrow, the world would go on. No one would money, actually. Really? really? The money's good. Well, good. It's a big help. Get her electroshock. <laughs> 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 we should talk to our, our plane crash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, he's on the phone? Uh, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Well, we're glad we could help you. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you very much. All right. Yeah, don't be all bummed out with your miscarriage. Jesus Christ. Okay. It's a blessing. Have a good time. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. You got baby fever now. You got plenty of time. It's a lot of work, kids. People don't understand it. Oh, I just heard some good news for you. What? Wait a minute. When? How old was your... Well, she didn't quite make the cut, though. What? She wasn't in her 40s when she had her last baby. Uh... No, she was like 39. Yeah, they say that a woman who has a baby after the age of 40 could very well live to be like 100. Right. No, that's great. <laughs> By the way, I'll be dead soon anyway. I'm going to have a heart attack. By the way, I'm... My, 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 what a wonderful day. What is it? I'm having another boy. Oh, you know that for yeah, sure? Yeah. That's good, man. I don't know how you're doing that. That's good. He said he would, uh... I'll go give Allison boys if you need it. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't need it, though. I, don't, I got enough kids. You don't want that stern name out no. there? No. Nothing great about the Stern name. You don't want to spread it around. No. I can't believe the Delabate name will go on, but that the Stern name won't. That is going on. That yeah. awful name. <laughs> right. In a thousand years, there'll be a ton of Delabates and no Sterns. Soon all of Connecticut will be all lips and teeth. Oh. <laughs> on our phone now is, this is a guy. Every it's everything that's right with America. Remember, uh, Robin, I, I was talking about this at 6 o'clock this morning. Robin gave me this show to watch Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and it talks about how different we are from women, you know, men. So you know the, the black guy? That guy, Eve? Eve? Eve, who I said was like a really nice guy and his yeah. wife is hounding him? Yeah. He's on the phone. You're kidding. You know. Eve, yeah. how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How's yeah. it going? It's going. I know a lot of people didn't see the show, probably. Probably was low-rated, so all I'm going to say is, uh -huh. Leave your wife, dude. Really, I mean... No, it's obvious that he loves her. No, he don't. Who, who yes, he Howard? does. Yeah, it's Howard. How you doing, Evan? Hey, man. <laughs> dude, listen yeah. to me. Yeah. Dump her. <laughs> she ain't going to find... Where's she going to go? You tell her you're leaving her. Uh-huh. She's treating you like a woman. <laughs> this guy, his wife's got him so, you know, he so crazy. He cleaning the entire house. This guy's got to be one of the <laughs> nicest men I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, he's trying to please his wife every which way possible. And the wife just is never satisfied. She's a little bit heavy. Uh, she got freckles. Uh, you know. He probably thinks those are cute. Yeah, well, that <laughs> stops being cute. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, <sighs> wait, where's your wife? She's on the phone, too? I think she is. Oh, wait. Oh, Jesus, I didn't know that. Yeah, now when you're telling me that. Yourself, Marie? Yeah, just, yeah, I yeah listen. Here. Honey, I got to tell you something. Uh, Wait a minute. Before you say anything, oh, yeah, don't call... heavy. just don't forget, television puts 20 pounds on you. All right. And most people love my freckles, especially my husband. That's fair. i got to tell you something. Just watching as an observer. Yeah. You know, i got no axe to grind. Uh-huh. I, I, I watched Nor that show. I. I felt really bad for your husband, man. I mean, you're... Howard. Yeah. Howard. That was a one-day thing. <laughs> oh, what, that you helped out? The, the, the cleaning thing. I know. It's just that, you know what, you're a pretty nice guy. Most women would probably be happy to be married to you. You're not a bad-looking guy. You hear that, honey? 
I hear that. Yeah, and I mean, your wife, your wife's a, a very highly skilled professional. She's a lawyer and all that kind of stuff, and uh -huh. you know that's kind of cool. And she works just as hard as you do. And yeah. Probably earns probably earns more money than you. Um, I don't know about that. Right, <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. But the guy, like, like the guy, even had to get his wife's permission to trade in his car. He wanted a different car, and his That's wife right. just had to bust his balls. That's right. It's like you know, honey, uh, yeah, I've had the car for two and a half years. I feel like trading in my car. It's not going to cost yeah. us any more money. And she started busting his balls. Howard. He, he, she treats him like a kid. Howard. Did yeah. Get the part where he. I mentioned that he yelled and screamed that I spent too much money for Christmas, and now he wants a new car, more insurance. He wants a BMW. We yeah. have to, like, marriage is 50-50. We have to talk about these major purchases. Well, if it's going to cost more money, then you're right. But Of course it is. Well, he was claiming that it wasn't going to cost more money. It was an even trade. He, he was, it, it was an even trade, saying. but the only, the only thing I had, like, a better five-year lease that I had to, you know. Why don't you just put your man in a dress? Cut off his penis <laughs> and uh, let him clean the driveway with a toothbrush. Wow. They say women get turned on when a man cleans the house. We cleaned the goddamn house. <laughs> he did. You guys got enough money. Get a housekeeper. Let her, let her clean the yeah, house. I know. Nobody had any help on that. Listen, show. listen Howard. The, the thing I cannot understand, you know, we do have a house cleaner that comes in like we once, have a, a, once a week. Uh -huh. Right. Once a week. But it seems like whenever the, the cleaning lady comes, Seems like whenever the cleaning lady comes, uh, uh, um, she still wants me to, you know, clean. She wants me to do it. It's not not the cleaning lady. Here's the deal: yeah. men are different than women. Yeah. Uh, a guy needs his space. You are a great husband. Thank you, thank you. I mean, you just seem like a fun, nice, happy guy. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Howard, what you seem, I seem like? you seem like a woman who will never be satisfied, no matter what. And you know what? You'd probably be happier on your own. Howard. Yeah. You know what? When a woman when a woman is demanding, she knows what she's want, what she wants. She's articulate and she's strong. Men are intimidated by that. Uh, including you. You don't even give your man sex. I heard the guy complaining the whole time. Well, Just get in the bad. bed and spread your legs. How? Well, the problem was it seemed to me that he likes sports. Yeah. And she can't even let him watch a ball game. Yeah, let the guy watch a ball game. He's a man. Howard, the problem was he was watching too many ball games. Uh, for you. <laughs> too many ball games. Uh, Howard. You know, would a man, and I don't mean to be crude, ladies, but would a man ever spend 10 seconds with a woman if she didn't have a vagina? <laughs> I mean, we are not built to be married. That's what, I came away from that special so depressed. <laughs> because, you know what, it's too much work to be married. It's just too much work. I am. But I eliminated all my problems by throwing money at it. We would have been divorced years ago, I'm convinced of that, because we were going to kill each other. We couldn't even go food shopping. <laughs> <laughs> honey, he's right, honey. Right. He's right. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and as far as you go, um, Marie, yeah. you got to get into the sack, put on some nice outfits, and give your man every night at least hand manipulation. Oh, thank you. I'm That's telling you. Howard, I, you know, you're getting too crass for me. That's not crass. I'm be, well, how am I supposed to talk about sex? Let me tell you something, Howard. My how often do you put out? My uh, uh, Howard, about like once every two or three months. Yeah. What? Well, dude, dude, get out of this situation. Howard. Don't you think he's exaggerating? If I put out once every two or three months, we wouldn't be married. So, first of all, you got to realize that. He's exaggerating for effect. Are no, you that, exaggerating? No, When's the last time you did it? Good question. Good question. Marie, you're a lawyer. Answer honestly. You're on the road. Good question. I don't remember. See, there you go. There you go. I mean, if you don't remember, get out of it. Now, Marie, you want to know something? If you got a different man, you'd probably feel sexier. That's not true. I mean, don't you girls get horny? Howard. Do you get horny? Howard. Marie. That's a good question, Marie. Go ahead, answer that. <laughs> Do you get horny? I'm not going to dignify that. You're a better That's counselor a... than that John Gray. Oh, that, oh, by the way, John Gray, the guy who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, yeah. I think that guy wears a dress because he looks like his wife's totally pussy whipped him. Don't listen to that maniac. He's just selling books. I'm giving you the real deal. No, but his stuff works, John. Marie, you're not in love with Eves. I'm Eves not. is not in love with you. No, no, but that's the word. But Eves, tell me something, man. How would you like tonight to be with a young 22-year-old? Oh, man. You know, some scores chick. Oh, man. Who totally just who wants to have sex with you. you too. And, and thinks you, you know, thinks your ponytail is cute <laughs> and digs your whole... Wouldn't, wouldn't you love that, man? Oh, man, forget it. Listen to me. John Gray said that, I mean, um, Howard Stern said that I was a little heavy. Did you defend me? No, no, she's not heavy. It's the camera that shows it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, all right. That, what I'm saying is that you, that you should weigh, like, 100 pounds. <laughs> but i got to say something. you got nice cans. I got a what? A nice what? Nice cans. Yeah, he's going. she got a nice chest. Oh, you're disgusting. That's not disgusting. I'm a man. I'm telling you, you have a nice chest. That, is that bad to say? 
I'm sorry. Marie, is that really bad to say? I think it is. I'm sorry, say that again? I said she has nice breasts. Oh, she does. She does. I think television made them look a lot bigger than what they really are. Really? Because <laughs> they look like cantaloupe size. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> so do I. In fact, compared to the rest of those wives on that show, you're, you're uh, Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Some of those wives look like they've been in a train wreck. Listen, I don't think that's a compliment, Howard. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, all right, I shouldn't say Lonnie. How about um, uh, Whitney Houston? Well, I don't look like Whitney, but I wish I had her money. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'm married, but uh, yeah. I got depressed about my own marriage watching you, know, you guys. The reality is marriage is tough. You, If you love each other, that's you true. work it out. But you guys don't love each other. We do love each other. How do. can that's, you that's, say that's, that's, that's that? Because he that's wants that. to have a sex life. He's not even worked up anymore. She don't even want to he get in the sack. Worked up. She don't want to even get in the sack with him. <laughs> How in love can you be? And she's saying, well, if he cleaned more, I'll, I'll be in love with him. I mean, that's ridiculous. Howard, we, we'll marry Mr. Clean. Howard, you're quoting me. I said that if he helped me more, I would have more time and energy for him at night. But, but honey, I've been helping you for quite some time. Honey, when you're hot for somebody, you don't care about how dirty the house is and uh, energy. Listen, I have to get off now. If, 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 if uh, what's that guy's name, the black actor? Uh, was Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington was living in your house. You wouldn't care if the floor was dirty. You'd be up in the bedroom. I don't know if that's true. I know it's true. All right. Let me ask you something. Do you get... Do you, are you sometimes so horny you can't stand it? I'm not going to answer that. The answer is no, right? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> Howard? Your husband's a great guy. I Thank you, I'm Howard. I'm a great wife. You're an okay wife. I'm a wonderful wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. The best thing about you is a lawyer. I'd love to be married to a lawyer. Free legal. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. Howard, I'm going to go now. All right. What? All right. Okay. Go ahead. Honey. I'll talk to your husband. Okay. Bye, honey. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Dude? Yeah. Your wife's one, one tough woman. Oh, she's, she's, she's not easy to deal with. And i got to tell you, man. She doesn't have much of a sense of humor. I don't know what that... Um, she's, a, no, she's, a, she's a prosecutor, hey. <laughs> yeah, she's a tough woman. I mean, and you know what, man? Yeah. You are a really nice guy. you got a real well, nice... see, that was the thing I noticed. Even when they were at the seminar, he was enjoying himself, and he started to laugh at something, and they got into an argument sitting right there in the seat. Yeah, she's a tough cookie. You can't <laughs> please her. <laughs> man, and you get sex once every three months. I'll tell you. My Lord man, Almighty. I I haven't, let me tell you something. My wife hasn't been feeling well for two weeks. She hasn't even thought of using her hand. <laughs> she must, what does she think? I'm going to just sit around while yes, the rest of my, my oh, life yeah. wastes away? Yes, no, no, no. Are. I'm dating. I have a date yes, today. You, oh, you I have a date. I'm going to a hotel. I'll announce where the paparazzi can show up. <laughs> I'm meeting a woman in a hotel today. Yes, you're waiting around. Yeah. <laughs> I tried that, Howard. Yeah. I tried that. What I'm did you try? What, meeting the, 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 the hand thing. Oh, the, oh, the hand. hand. No, I don't mean the no, hand thing. Not, not your own hand. He's talking about his wife's hand. And you're a young guy. How old are you? You're in the 30s, right? I'm um, 36. Yeah. I tell you, you never saw a more pleasant man. I mean, really. I think some guys are jerks, like the guy who works in the post office. He seemed really jerky. Oh, he and was terrible. He seemed and scary. And that other guy, the big fat guy. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, Bob. Yeah, whatever. But you were like a real nice guy. I was like, man, any woman. My, you're the man my wife wishes I'd be. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, guys. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, Linda, hi. Hi. You saw the special? I saw the special. My husband totally, my husband and I totally agree with what you're saying. We thought his wife was such a bitch. Right. I believe it. I mean, especially then when they had the dinner party afterwards and they invited all the couples back after a few months. Uh -huh. Some comment was made to him. I can't even remember. And she came back with this comment that just slammed him. And we're like, oh, my God. They couldn't even believe she just slammed yeah. him again. And yeah, he's just like a yeah. happy, fun guy. I yeah. Mean, we were, I mean, when he cleaned up the house and doing all these nice things, she just couldn't appreciate anything. He wants to put a dress on this guy. And, and my husband's even saying nothing was going to make her happy. Yeah, I agree. Thanks. You know, so yeah. another wife. There you go. <laughs> Get a divorce. <laughs> it's not easy to get a divorce, but, man, the two of you... have kids, you know. Oh, what? Yeah. They'll, they'll get over it. Man, you've had the fun wife daddy. <laughs> no, he's still laughing. He likes you, though. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. She's a nice person. I, I think this is all a front, though. That, that's, that's the worst part. Yeah, well, keep hanging around and find out. <laughs> wait till, yeah, wait till she yells that, at you. The thing that would really kill me each time is, you know, he would be doing better. He says, yeah, I think everything's getting better. We've been having a good time. And they would say, well, what do you think about that to Marie? And she would go, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. I all right, know, guys. Man. Let me get back to work. Yeah. What do you do? Um, I'm an engineer. Yeah, true, true, true. Civil engineer. Cool. All right, guys. All right, man. I just wanted to let you know that I saw the special because Robin gave it to me. And, and we were in your corner. We're in your corner, pal. All right. Thanks a lot, Howard. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Robin. Take care, Eves. Right, bye, bye. 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 That's Eves.
black dude. Just trying to make his life happy. Yeah. I think men and women are designed to live together after watching that show. I want to see that now. Now you got to watch this show. <laughs> it's going to depress you, though. Yeah. Be prepared. Just be prepared. A lot of people. Because I warned you before I gave it to you. There was a warning before it was given to me. I said, this is your nightmare. <laughs> I thought he was going to kick her down the steps. He's got the patience I'm just of saying, a saint. I'm just saying. Happy to look at that. They're on TV, and she's just ber berating him right on television. Nah, she's just never happy with the guy. Yeah, he gets, he can't do enough. Can't no matter do what he right. does, it's not good enough. And the cat's saying he don't get laid like, a, like, a, but every month or something, once every, every month. month. He's worse than Fred. He's putting up with a lot. Yeah, he's a nice guy. And my wife, thinks you know, be all fun and hang, and like, try to make me happy, and I, and I just go downstairs. I don't even listen. This guy listens. He's trying. He's making the effort. There's a lady who's been dying to get on all morning. She has written a tribute song to Lady Diana. Oh. And she's convinced she it's great. Like yours? Oh. No, I, I just think... Thank you, Lauren. Lauren, you sound very hot, by the way. Are you? Um, <laughs> this is like a dream come true to talk to you. Thank you. I mean, I'm... I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. I got two young kids and uh. having a having a good time. Still taking care of myself. How old? Um, thirty eight. Oh, are you whipped back into shape? I am, and actually, I've been. I finally got myself back on a schedule at the gym, and you know. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was reading about some super hot chick the other day who had a kid and. She now does 70 sit-ups a day, Robin, and she's getting her abs back. Yeah. I thought, wow, good for her. Because what's more her, important that's... than getting your abs back? <laughs> not raising her kids, for sure. Well, she's not raising her kids. She's just at the gym doing her sit-ups. Right. right. These kids sort of take care of themselves. How tall are you? 5'7". <laughs> what do you weigh? 122. Let me think about that. That's good. Right, Robin? That's okay. You put it in your calculator. Right. Five, and seven. And it said good. I'm no Beth O, so. Well, no one is Beth O. Yeah, that's right. Do you look like How a celebrity? I, I get, um, this is so embarrassing. I feel like some of my friends, is, somebody's going to hear this. Uh, I get uh, Jennifer Connelly sometimes. Oh, she's good. That's a huge compliment. What are your? What's your bra size? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I should have known what I was getting into calling it. Um, <laughs> well, you didn't think we were going to talk about coffee, did you? <laughs> no, I also wanted to talk about rock with you, but... Um, what about what? About about some rock bands, because I know you All right, you it. get one question, I get one question. I'll go first. What's your bra size? <laughs> uh, 34 double D. <laughs> Whoa. And so most of, the, most of your 120-something pounds... Yes. boobs. Yeah, you can take 10 of that for boobs. Are those implants? <laughs> no. Oh, my God, no. And you should have seen me when I was like pregnant and breastfeeding. It was out of control. Wow. Can you imagine she's 5'7", well. 120 pounds, and she's got double Ds. Wow. Or F. They're pretty big. They're big. F? Yeah. I Who even knew? F you. No. F you. <laughs> uh, all right, you get a question. Okay. You have you listened at all to my morning jacket? No. Okay, my turn. Okay. <laughs> Did the kids slow down your sex life? <gasps> totally. Oh, really? How many times a week are you doing it with your husband? I mean, I mean, I I truly cannot answer that on on national radio on Sirius XM. Do radio. we know who you are? Yeah. What are I you? Have... What are you? The president? <laughs> I, I just have. Are you Melania? Um... Are you Melania Trump? I mean, of course you can answer that. We don't know who you are. It depends on the week. Um, like some weeks you don't even have sex. No, we usually find time at least once a week. Do you not, not like, do you not, oh, it's your turn. But, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. You're sidetracked. So I know I have other questions for you and Robin. All right, I'll go. Do you, Go ahead. <laughs> like, do you want sex or like, are you just like, ugh, fuck it. I'll just do it for him. So I sort of, no, I do. I go through phases and act, you know, and, but 
I go, I'm exhausted. I have two young kids. I still work. Like, you know, life is exhausting. So sometimes during the day I'll think, wow, I'd love to, you know, have sex right now or I'm totally into the idea. And then by the time the night comes around, I'm completely exhausted. So when's the last um, time you blew your husband? I'm totally not answering that right now. You I have can't. to. You have to, or else I'm not answering your rock question. Did she get a question? Because she just answered. I don't know. She, she, I gave her an opportunity for a question. She couldn't even think of one. That's true. You're right. I got put on the spot, and I... So you don't... Yeah. Like, do you ever say to yourself, okay, I'm too tired because I have the kids and I have a job, but you know what I'll do? I'll just blow this guy to make him happy. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Yeah. I yeah, you do. That. Howard I, says it gives you energy. It gives you energy. I, yeah, but I'm like you. I just... I don't, I don't need it all the time. I'm very... I love him, and I'm happy, and... I don't want to be with anybody else. And but how long do you about. think it's going to happen where he doesn't start, like, kind of looking around because he's so frustrated? Well, he, I satisfy him. I keep him mm. satisfied. How <laughs> often did you do it before the kid? How, how, yeah. When you met him, how many times a week were you guys fucking? I can't remember. Um, but I've never had a super intense sex drive. I'm just not one of those people. Yeah, but you know he does. Yes, he definitely does. So what do you think he's doing? Do you ever question that? Um, do you, what do you assume? He's just jerking off? Yeah, I I mean... You're okay with that? Yeah. Well, I, you I girls, you don't problem. get it. You know why he got married. He wanted you, those big double Ds or Fs. He said, I could have sex with her all the time. Yeah, he goes, you know what? I'm going to get married, and I'm going to get laid all the time. And now he's just like, and back in high school... You guys think I'm going to get married and I'm going to get laid all the time. Don't they know that when they get married? No, they... no, they don't. They're not that bright. Take it from me. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty bright guy. I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty common knowledge now. No, it isn't. They still think, wow, the reason I'm going to give up all other women. No guy thinks it's going to happen to him. So I can does. have her all the time. She'll just be there. I won't have to go looking. What? She's all there. The time. Howard, how often do you want to have sex? Not that often. I want to have sex at least three times a week. At least. Really? And when you're on your period, how about jerking me off once in a while? Who am I, Mel Gibson? I know. <laughs> you can blow me. Just shut up. And blow me. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you want something exciting to happen. That's all guys want. They'll do anything for you if you just give them that. Uh, this is this is good. No, I know that, and I do keep him satisfied, but I will make an extra effort after this conversation. What about anal? Is that going down at all? Nope. No. You have hemorrhoids from the baby? <laughs> Not for me. Oh, there's a big uh, thing staring at oh, there. Oh, she looks like Sal from Sal. Like Sal. <laughs> no, thanks. Not like Sal. <laughs> do you ever put on a sexy outfit for him? Definitely. You do? Like, what's your sexy outfit? I, I mean, you know, we I, you, we, I wear lingerie for him. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. I got to tell you. Sometimes I wish I was gay. Women are the worst at sex. They don't even know. Do you talk dirty in bed? No. Sometimes. That's a no. And then they want to torch. She's getting herself back in shape for what? For not to have sex. <laughs> so she'll look good for her friends so, when they yeah, go out. Yeah, she's torturing him. Yeah. For health, health reasons. You know. Like, would you ever go to dinner with your husband and let him put his hand, like, on your crotch? I mean, I think that might make me laugh, but... Exactly. There you go. <laughs> but his new girlfriend won't uh, be laughing. No, she with... won't be laughing. She's going to love it. You're not going to believe what my new married boyfriend does. Get a little okay. ass juice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever masturbate in front of your husband? Sure. Oh, you do? I would. Oh, but you don't. I no, I have, but I would. That's She would. never did that. <laughs> and do you wax or you shave? Wax. Wow. Can I tell you about waxing? It's a guys don't like that. Why not? Because it takes it grows it has to grow back. So then you deal with stubble? Yeah. You should but shave. No, shaving is worse. No, shaving is worse. Not for a guy. No, for, yes. For what of the visual? There's more of it and then it's mm. stubbly and harder. It's not that's not good. How anybody. far does your hairs go down? All the way down to your knees? Oh, it's yeah. I uh, yeah. Really? I totally don't, no. You have dark hair? <laughs> I do. 
Do you go to the bathroom in front of your husband? No. Tell the truth. I, I closed the door. But he can smell it. Oh. Can he smell it? No, I don't think he comes into the bathroom when I'm... All right. Does Beth go to the bathroom in front of you? Never. I've never seen her never. go. As far as I never. know, she doesn't go. I know. I've heard her pee, but never any duty. You have heard her pee. I've never, ever, that? ever heard about a duty, <clears throat> smelled a duty, nothing. She's never even been sick and nope. something's happened. No. <laughs> nothing. She's never farted. She's okay, never one farted. time I caught her with a fart. <laughs> we were running. And I think I heard like a... <clears throat> And it slipped out? I think. And she claims it didn't, so. I don't know. I, it sounds to me like this husband's got a, a dreary life. Like, he had kids with this woman, and now maybe once or once or twice a month he's getting sex. What? No way it's more than that. No, nah, I don't think so. You know, a lot of times women think it's happening more. They lose track of time. And women... Right. Uh, they would estimate that they're having a lot more sex than the man in the relationship. And then guys start to feel like, wow, you know what? What a bad deal I yeah, got. I'm, I'm not attractive anymore. And then some girl comes along and hey. smiles at him and goes, maybe I do have it. And then she starts dancing with you. I let him know that you. she's appreciated and loved and attractive. I you don't know. want to hear it over the breakfast table. Oh, I, I bet you this I guy is thinking about stuff. other women. I know playing this up because you also no. look for a lot more from Beth in your relationship I d with her. I do. Sister. I'm very evolved, though. Yes, your husband, not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is for ratings, but he is definitely much... Uh, he's evolved. He's How evolved. often does your husband masturbate? Do you even know? Mm, no, I actually don't. Right, because you don't know him. I probably know him better than you do. That's my point. He's living a whole secret fantasy life. Yeah. With porn, and you know, you're killing this guy. All right, so then I'll get. Yeah, I'll I mean, this back. is part of uh, you know, you got to kind of keep things hot. I, I hate to tell you. I will keep it hot. This is good. I'm glad we. He's have probably it. jerking off right now, for work. You think so? Yeah, I know so. In the car, like a creeper on the way. To no, work? not a creeper. He does it at home. Do you have a hot nanny or a babysitter? Uh, no, we do not. Yeah, good idea. Thank God. Yeah. All right, your I, question now. What do you want to know about music? Um, well, I wanted to see if you ever, if you haven't listened to My Morning Jacket, but I was going to suggest that they would be a good guest. They're, they're I've never even heard of them. them. What is My Morning Jacket? I, I thought you had a bunch of musical questions. Everything's Morning Jacket. No, 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 no. That was just one that I... I, I, I don't, I don't like that name, Morning Jacket. <laughs> My, it's called My Morning Jacket. Fred, has Fred ever heard of them? Or what to song them? does she like? Uh, Gideon is a good one. Right, what are these, like Gideon. one of these indie is bands? This a group? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think a guy's name would be My Morning I Jacket. I thought it was a radio duo. Oh. <laughs> that, that's, that's one. Is this like an indie band? They sound like that to me. They're not an indie band. They're an awesome rock band. I think you'd appreciate them. I, I don't appreciate this. I don't know. I, I'm, I mean, I don't know. Sounds okay. I man. don't know. All right. Just maybe consider. I know sometimes you listen to new music on the weekends, whatever. Maybe think about. I, I don't like new music. <laughs> I bet Steve Brandano likes these guys. He probably, he's like always. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, up on it. He's up on all the new bands. They're not new. Oh. They've been around for a while. I don't like talking the chairs. <laughs> Do you have Steve suggest new music to you? Me? No. I don't like any of uh, Steve's music. <laughs> Jason, you know these guys? I'm a huge fan of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. They're new guys? or No, no. They've been around. I mean, I've known them uh, about them for over 10 years. Really? Oh. How did we miss them if they've been around for 10 years? They did that. That's what I'm saying. I saw them old. on Saturday Night Live. And oh, yeah? They were amazing. And actually, this summer, I went and I saw him out in Colorado at Red Rocks. Red Rock or Red Rocks? Red Rocks, oh. I think. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll check him out this weekend when I have some time. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, if you ever think about wanting to... Where are you now? Work? No, on my way to work. 
What See, are you wearing? would she hold out on morning jacket? <laughs> what do you wear? Yeah, oh, morning jacket. Those legs would be spread. <laughs> oh, yeah. What uh, What are you wearing to work? Jeans and a t-shirt. What, t-shirt? With those gigantic jugs? Yes, I hide them. You hide them? Mm-hmm. How? You'd, you'd never know that my, you'd never know they were so big. Why would you, how do you hide them? Do you strap them down? No, I just. I just don't wear clothes that show them off. I never. I would have. think a T-shirt. You can't disguise. Yeah, these. how do you sh- hide them in a T-shirt? Right, Robin. You can't tight. disguise your boobs in a T-shirt. So it's no. not a tight T-shirt. I don't wear tight clothes. Oh, you wear loose clothes. Mm-hmm. Any guys at work interested in you? I no. I work with mostly women. Oh, you wear a bra to work? Of course. Okay, <laughs> take it easy. I don't know. Maybe you work at the Playboy Mansion. I definitely don't work there. Yeah. Well, send us a picture. Uh, I love you, Howard, and I love you, Robin, and I love you, Fred. The I, slot. How's the slot? <laughs> hey, Lenny, easy. <laughs> that wasn't us. <laughs> that <laughs> wasn't me. The no. <laughs> that was my alter ego, Lenny. <laughs> All right. Well, nice talking to you, I guess. You have a bush, probably? Or... You too, Howard. This is unbelievable. I'm a huge fan of the show. Thank you. Are you the hottest woman at your work? Um. I mean, you look like Jennifer Connelly. Who's hotter mm. than you? what is? What is there a Charlize Theron lookalike there? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm getting blood full right now. Uh, someone wants to ask you a question. Hold on, this is Rick. Yeah, Rick, go ahead. Hey, King, I'm trying to speak. Um, do you like to have your ass spanked for fun or for play? I want to know if she likes to get her ass spanked for fun or foreplay. I don't. I'm not really into that. Isn't this great, like, how like guys all pile in? It's like 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 Rick's driving his car, and he needs to know. He could never ask a woman this question, but on you, he yeah. can ask this question. It's great. Right, Rick? Isn't this fun? Oh, absolutely, Howard. Hey, yeah. you forgot about Fiona Apple. Remember that interview with David Blaine where he talked about how he would spank her ass before the concert, and she'd have to play the whole concert with a sore ass? Really? really? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, you got to go back to that interview. In fact, the first time I ever called you, I talked about Farrah Fawcett getting her ass spanked. So I've been contributing hmm. for a few years now. What's your thing? Like uh, getting, do you, you dig spanking girls? Yeah, like for fun. I mean, a lot of girls, uh, it heightens their orgasm. It gets them excited. Sure. Yeah. Robin likes that. Absolutely. I'd love to spank Robin. It's my dream. I think you should come down here. Whenever Robin gets out of line, you spank her. There's no out of line. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you could get out of line. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to spank her just to get her excited. Lauren, what's your favorite thing to do sexually? It, w- it wouldn't be that exciting. We'd like to know. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything right now. Boy, Lauren, we <laughs> wow. just shut you down. Wow. You walk over to her with your phone, and you put your phone right by her clit. <laughs> yeah, listening to Ronnie's uh, sex advice. <laughs> What about like, um, what do they call that? When when a guy sticks his penis between your breasts. You like that? Sure. Yeah? You're up for that? Would you ever lick a guy's balls or is that kind of gross? Mm. I mean, not any guy, but... I mean, your husband. husband. Have you ever done that to your husband? Sure. You've licked your husband's balls. Oh. (laughs) I don't believe her. (laughs) Because I just, oh. I can tell she hasn't. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I guess I would if he made me. No, she not said not any me. guy. Oh. No, not if he made me. How many guys have you been with? Oh. I I, I don't know. You not know. That, not that many. Wow. I don't know what's going on with her. All getting right. shy. Yeah, you really are. Yeah. You wear a thong or regular underpants? Depends on what. What's I'm happening? Depends on what kind of pants I'm wearing. Okay. All right. I'm going to go then. I'm going to leave you. All right, All right. Howard. All right. Take care. God. Love you. Love you. It's like dragging a... Uh, I guarantee you she's not having more sex more than twice a month. Well, she's got to start romancing that man. You know, like the problem bit, yeah. with women is, you know, they don't think about sex all day. Men think about sex all day. All day. 
and they don't. I know. And so the guy comes home, he's all revved up. He's all charged up. And she's cold as ice. Right. So, she, you know, like there's got to be some thinking about it during the day for her. She's got to, you know, start adding that to her marriage. So she's ready. Yeah, I'm talking normal, dude. Robin, you should teach a class. <laughs> Danielle, hi. 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 How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> okay. This <laughs> This Lauren chick is driving me nuts. She's, you and Robin are both 100% spot on with her. She is not getting it done with her husband. No. Guaranteed. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun over there. Yeah. No. I've had my issues, and trust me, everything cleared up 100% as soon as I, start, as soon as I started to blow my husband and have sex more. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. It causes all yeah. marriage problems. Yeah. 100%. His attitude is completely different if I'm keeping him happy. So... She's got to be religious or something. There's something going on there. Or, yeah, or like, uh, yeah, exactly. She's, she's one of those people who, again, you know, it's like, I had a baby. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have a baby, and then everything <laughs> stops. Well, and then she gets, she gets like you said, she gets super and fit, has huge tits, and then she's like, meh, I'm not going to fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell is that? Are you hot? Uh, eh. I've had a couple kids. Haven't gotten right back in shape yet. Yeah. I can't but, imagine trying to get back in shape after you have a kid. It's got to be hard. Yeah. I can't even get in shape, and I've never had a kid. I look like I had a kid. You should see what I got hanging off me. People but, go, did you, know, you have a baby recently? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I managed to keep my husband happy. You got to do, like, porn star stuff with your husband. That's what gets it done. You got to yep. buy into that fantasy. That, that's and then better. he's willing to overlook the fact that uh, you might maybe not be in shape. Tell yeah. you, it works. you're on his side. He mm. he likes that. Yeah, you're his exactly. teammate. Uh, you heard Mel Gibson. Yeah. He, he, he like ruined his career screaming at somebody who wants a blowjob so bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Easy to do. You bet. Thanks. All right, Danielle. Yeah. Hi, Stephanie. Hey now. Hey now. Hey. Love you guys. Um, I just want to say that I've been married for like five years, and my husband and I have sex for about like three or four times a week. Perfect. That woman does not want to be married. That's right. Well, she might want to be married, but she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be with her husband. Her. Exactly. She's not into him. And it's, it's pathetic. Oh, and that guy about spanking? Oh, 100%. 100% what? I love it. You like to get spanked? Yes. Oh. And um, you're hot, too? No. I wouldn't say so. But you know, in a way, your attitude is very hot. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that goes a long way. It's not yeah, always about I mean, being hot. It's about being hot mentally. I just want to be with my husband. Right. Like, it just, it, it pleases me to please him. Boy. I mean, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think about him all the time. And for women that say they don't, they don't think about sex all day, I think that's total bullshit. Because I do. Are you chubby? Um, a little bit. Seems like the chubbier wives are putting out more and working <laughs> harder. Am I right, Robin? Well, yeah. The women who are going to the gym are doing that for their girlfriends, apparently. Right. Anyone who's working out isn't interested in their husband. <laughs> I know. I, I remember hearing a story about some guy, his wife started working out like a maniac, and she left him right. for a guy oh. at the gym. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that's true. No. All right, Stephanie. Yeah. Often say that. Yeah. No, I married someone else. No, this is who you married. <laughs> the demons have always been locked inside. <laughs> this is the package. This is what was being hidden. Yeah. I don't even know what she does all day. See, she's lucky. She's not on the radio. I said, you know, Allison, I think for the next 20 years in our marriage, you should be on the radio, and I'm going to sit home with the Yentas. Find out what she does. Yeah. Two of my kids are in school all day, and the other, the, other, the rest of the day, she leaves the little one with the housekeeper. I don't see her. I, I just know she's out. I don't know what she's doing. I don't comment on it. I don't get to comment on it. I don't know anything what's going on. I'm doing a radio show. She could be humping, humping a whole pla uh, what are, what are those uh, garden. She could be humping a platoon over at the Army Navy base. <laughs> she could have the whole the landscaping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she's out by the pool enticing them right now. I'm here trying to get people to laugh. I said, you try it. You do it. You know, you're a funny gal. <laughs> you're, you're hysterical right now. Uh. Yeah, I don't know why she <laughs> spared us that. 
It's time you unleash your humor on the world. You can sit there every month waiting for Tom Chiasano to tell you the ratings. Okay? Why don't you do that? We'll see what you come up with. You don't like my... Obviously... So you, you didn't talk to her about it at all. You didn't even find out what the objection No, was. I don't want to know. Uh, I said, obviously, you have an idea for a program, and you seem to know what's funny, so why don't you do it? I'm, not, I'm willing to sit home. Write down some topics. Yeah, me. tell it to write some material for me. I'm more, you know, I'm here five hours a day, every day, <laughs> five days a week, coming up with material. Maybe I'm not that good at it. Next thing you know, she'll be Alice and Siri Eddie Martin. Yeah. You know, well, I, said you, I, I threw that in. I said, you sound like Jackie's wife now. <laughs> Sitting there and commenting on everything. <laughs> she goes, I had to turn off the radio. She goes, so, so that's the best thing you could have done. If you don't like what you're listening to, turn it off. That's, that's your right as an American. People. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to call her up right now, put her on the air what, at 6 o'clock in the morning. See what she has to say. Yeah, see if she's funny. Now, see if you can be however, funny. You can't complain. you got to entertain people. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Don't say anything <laughs> negative. Don't say anything that will offend anyone, and you'll be funny, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's great. Everybody's got something like some comment. It did flash through my head, and I just figured uh, out your response right away, but yeah. you didn't even deal with it, huh? I threw her out of the room. So get out of the room. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you again. So how was the rest of the day? Fine, she got over it. Oh, okay. Because she knows she's wrong. She hasn't caught on yet. I'm doing a show. <laughs> she hasn't caught on. She's the only one. I said, you know, I've managed to get all the general managers and program directors off my ass. I only got one person that I seem to have to answer to, and that's you. <laughs> you're I said, you're my critic now. It I never. come home, and I get a review of the show. It never ends. Yeah. She said to me, what was Ron Zimmerman doing on the show? I said, Allison, don't listen. She didn't like Ron? No, she liked him very much. She wanted to know how he got there. I said, I don't want to, I don't know. <laughs> he, he somehow appeared. I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. else get on the show? Right. Same way Fred got on the show. He walked in one day and he <laughs> never left. how Fred got on <laughs> yeah, the <right>. show. <laughs> Why did you ask that question? I've been trying to figure that out. <laughs> never oh, I know. There's a deep, dark secret. Yeah. I don't know how you got here. I don't think you deserve to be here. <laughs> I can't tell people how you got here. So I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, it's like, it was really like a bummer day. I just had to get the hell out of the house. Where'd you go? I just well, I walked around a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Outside for a walk. Got a little air. Oh, well. Tried to ride my bike. Did that for about 40 minutes and my ankle's throbbing. Oh, dear. Yeah, you know, so it's like, you know, it's great. There's no place to turn. No. There's no comfort for you anywhere. No place to go, no place to be. <laughs> so, you know, that was the first question I was going to ask. Did you go back to your uh, little chat room to find a girl to pick yeah. up a girl? Uh, yeah, I did. I wasn't going to be dissuaded. I uh, was on chat last night. <laughs> I spoke to Rubber Baby, as a matter of fact, who was in here. Is that right? Did yeah. you two have sex? No. Please, I saw her. <laughs> 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 that ruined it. <laughs> no more sex. No more sex. She goes, sex aren't we going to have sex? I said, I think you've had enough sex. <laughs> go, go to the other <laughs> go exercise. 50 men you're working right, on. Right, yeah. <laughs> they haven't seen you. Right. It's going to slow you down for the next one, too. Yeah. And you know my ankle's been hurting me? Uh-huh. Two days in a row, Gary has kicked me in my ankle. <laughs> he's such a klutz. He's passive aggressive. He is. <laughs> I go, what, do you hate me? <laughs> like he's kicked me in the ankle. And then he gets mad at me. Yeah. And he got made at Jackie. <laughs> How did Jackie get it? Yeah, then he yells at Jackie. No, 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 no. What happened? First of all, let the audience know that to say I kicked you in the ankle sounds like I wound up and took a shot at no, you. No, you tripped over my I ankle. I tripped over your ankle. Yeah, but he kicked Howard's it. got long legs, and, and it's, but it was my fault. Cause look at my fault. So the reason I got angry. The reason I got angry. My fault was I had long legs. The reason I got angry. Cut those off. The yeah. reason I got angry at Jackie was because I kicked Howard, and Howard, like, winced, and he was really in pain, and I felt terrible. And? So Jackie goes, Gary can't do anything right. Oh. So I, got, oh, I said, poor Gary's been running around trying to do everything right for so long, and then he stomps on Howard's bed ankle, and I giggle. Yeah, you know what, Jackie, though? Gary's right. We don't need color play-by-play -play commentary. Don't without a you know, back there. I don't need it without a microphone. Yeah, this right. You're going to get me hey, At least it's worth this something. This show ends and starts I mean, again in the back room, and I listen to it from you guys. Oh, no, you know, back what's there. funny don't is... Tell me I can't do my commentary. When I'm in the middle of pain... I mean, if you were kicked in the I wouldn't sit there and go, I'm sorry. Hey, guess what? Gary can't Gary, do anything right. And then you know what? Right. Gary can't do a lot of things right. Your pain is my <laughs> yeah. but, but Jackie right was like, he's been trying so hard to do everything right. <laughs> he did something wrong. Look, 
is that? That's such a. It's a knife in the back. Yeah, oh, right. It really is. Well, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds Far be it from this show to do that. Oh, it come on. It reminds me of your mother on those tapes. Yeah. Your father, your father <laughs> screams at you, and your mother goes, "What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with me? I'm not doing anything." <laughs> My father's yelling like a maniac. <laughs> so Jackie's, uh, Gary's mother. Yeah. She's What's wrong with you? It was so funny because you were sitting there. It's not like we had just changed positions. positions. You had been sitting there like an with your legs sticking out because for like my 45 ankle was hurt. minutes, right? right? Yeah. And all of a sudden he just got up and... And it was right into funny. my ankle. I'm sorry, you got hurt. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it was funny. It looked like it. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. And then, and then day two, uh -huh. Gary just does it again. Oh geez. And it's so obvious because my ankle, like I keep my legs sticking straight out because I'm trying to rest my ankle. Yeah. He had his ankle. He had his foot up yeah. on the desk. Right. And I think I, I don't think I kick it. I don't think I kicked him. Did I hit, kick it or no, smack it? No, you kicked it. it. You kicked it. I threw it down. It's for up a on the. Oh, it was down. Yeah, I'm trying to elevate it. I don't, know. I don't know how he, he would kick it up on the desk. <laughs> Only fa 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 week. Wait a second. Didn't you say yesterday? Fuff, didn't fuff, you tell fuff, Jackie fuff. you were thinking about Ooh. stopping by his house that your ankle's all better? And no, no. I said when it's all better, I'd like to do that. <laughs> if I ever get better, I said. <laughs> and, and then, then you kicked my it. ankle. <laughs> I said, but it's feeling a little better. And then all of a sudden, Gary kicks it. Fuff, fuff, fuff. I, listen, I feel terrible. Right, it. It's okay. Don't oh, worry that's about funny. it. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so from now on, after the show, I'm going to meet with Gary on the phone. <laughs> I don't want to see him, yeah. I'm going to tie a golf leg to my ankle. Maybe he'll notice it. Put a cone around you know, it. And it's so obvious that, you know, because my leg is in this weird position, it's so obvious that... It, it, you have to walk around it, yeah. you can't just walk straight. Gary gets completely flustered by the new oh, situation. Oh, position. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You have to have a traffic oh. person there to guard. And I know he's sitting there the whole time, he's going... I can't kick Boss's ankle. I can't kick Boss's ankle. It's in the middle of the floor. It's so obvious that Boss's ankle hurts. Oops! I got. I kick Boss's ankle. I got, ankle. I got the solution. Oh, you know what it is? You get so. You get so. Today we meet. You know, we have that big like boardroom table. Yeah. Today we meet on opposite ends of the table. I don't think it'll help. Yeah, because you just have a running start with you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'd rather you be closer to me. Anyway, I got to uh, take a break. <laughs> So that was my day yesterday. Gary kicking me in the ankle for the second time, and then uh, my wife yelling oh, okay. at me at home. Did she yell at you as soon as you walked through? Yeah, the yeah, house? yeah. She had a puss on. And I was just like, "What is this?" Welcome home. Yeah, I didn't even know what the hell I was in <laughs> trouble for. <laughs> like, oh boy, what did I do now? Uh, she better watch that. Yeah. I heard someone. You know, I was watching some stupid movie. Yes, then it was the typical scenario. Right. The wife who knows you constantly tearing you down. Oh, my and you God. And you a young girl going, oh, you're incredible. Like, yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, <laughs> I go from adoration to like some woman yelling at me. You know, all of a sudden you start to weigh. Yeah. You go, you know, well, okay, so I got to give them 50% of everything. It's still worth it. I won't get yelled at. You have a young chippy. Mm. Maybe a bunch. It'll make you happy. <laughs> I'm going home looking for some fun. Not for, it's work when I get home. Yeah, she better start saying what they say. Yeah, I know. I don't hear that enough. Oh, the show was so... Howard, you're genius. You know, I do need a little of that. I mean, I really do. Everybody does. I, I, I mean, I'm sick of, like, going home and getting yelled at for something I did on the radio. Well, it's a syndrome people get into and they're not even aware of. I know. Well, she's into you know, it. Maybe you should have taken this movie home. It was this Andy Griffith, as a matter yeah, of fact. Do me a favor. Why don't you call her and tell her about the movie? <laughs> Leaping to your arms. Yeah, I need Demi Moore type raping me in the back office. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, I get so hot for you listening to you today. Yeah, right. You know, oh God, you, you my come funny man. Right here. <laughs> I mean, you know, Jesus Christ. I don't like your show's too sexual. Huh? Well, yeah, well, give me a little sex. Maybe I won't be so damn. Well, funny. you said that the other day. That was a tip off. You didn't even have to do your thing the night you and she got it on yeah, in the middle right. of the week. That's right. Make me a nice Rob Roy and shut up. <laughs> there you go. Make sure the uh, glass is iced to perfection. Yeah, learn how to instigate. <gasps> and go for it. Yeah. My old man was making 20000 a year. She, my, my mother was waiting on him with Rob Roy's when he walked in the door. <laughs> yeah. I've yet to see one Rob Roy. <laughs> Women don't know how good they have it until their man gets fed up. Well, I would like to warn her. Yeah. So let, let's see if I find another sucker that even listens to what the hell she has to say. <sighs> Bet she could be blowing it. Yeah. Big Todd. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Never know which end of the stick you're going to fall on. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that I saw that movie yesterday. Right. 
blows with the wind. Okay? Thank you. When you walk in the house, is it? Um, do you know the second you walk in that you're in trouble? No, I didn't think I was in trouble. I was si actually I was sitting at my desk. I was already plunged into working. I was on the phone. Well, you know what's really horrible is if you don't even remember what happened on the show that uh, day. Yeah, and yeah. You're I'm sitting like, there and yeah. you're broadside. I'm not even thinking about this. I mean, I forgot about it already, and then all of a sudden, you know. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> oh, don't you say? Yeah, right. She goes right up to you and says, I'm not talking <laughs> yeah. to you. You've got to announce. You have to yeah. be talking to her, but she's got to Yeah, I wasn't to talking to you in the first place. <laughs> you could have gone until 8 o'clock and you wouldn't have known. Yeah, right. I'm just like, oh, what, is what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? I'm just trying to get through the day and I'm trying to do a funny, entertaining program and I'm just trying to get home so I can relax. But do you ever not know what. Like, I had no idea. I don't even remember what we do on the show each day. A few different things happen. Like, yeah. you say, well, which thing right. is this? Yeah, I was, say, I was saying, and I don't like to say that because then I think, well, maybe there's something that you don't know about. Right. right. Yeah, you don't there know you which go. one it is. Maybe you'll mention the one she hasn't even, hadn't even heard. Right. Yeah. Weird. Because I finally got Tom Chiasano off my ass and all these program directors off my ass. Pretty much I don't have to deal with anybody critiquing the show for the day. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Puts me in a better frame of mind. And I don't want to get critiqued at home. That's the worst place to get critiqued. I've had enough of, uh, of radio day. That's supposed to be your haven. Yeah, I've had a full day of this crap. I, I don't know how to explain it to anyone. But it's enough already. <laughs> to get home, I don't want to be caught up in that show and explaining it and everything else. I, all I have to do is get through Ronnie, the limo driver, him not saying anything, and, and then my wife. <laughs> he always has a little comment. Oh, that's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to give you his postmortem. Yeah. I didn't like that guy who was there. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think that was good. <laughs> Thanks. It always amazes me people's comments on the show because even if they like something, there's always a but. Yeah, there's always something going on. <laughs> All right, I gotta take a break. I know I'm gonna get yelled at for even saying. I know. I know yeah, my, you mentioned it. You no, know, my now my wife's gonna yell at me for just mentioning that she was mad at me yesterday. Now I gotta get yelled at for that. So I never win. She's not up to throw it though, is she? She could be. She sometimes is up. You know what? She ought to run away with Ronnie Lemo driver. <laughs> the two of them could discuss the show together. Wouldn't that be great? She married him. I didn't like that thing he did. What? I didn't like that thing he did. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> they could have their own. Right. <laughs> little cut. Yeah, they could have that. their own club. <laughs> they could sit and talk about the show. <laughs> Me, I'll just, you know, I'll be smiling. Don't you think if you and your wife ever got divorced, she'd have to move to a market that you're not in? I don't know. I mean, wouldn't it be too difficult to listen to you every day? Well, I think the idea is not to listen to me. You know what? But, I, I tell you something. If I leave radio in September, I don't think I'm ever turning the radio on again. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, don't, I don't even know why people listen to the radio. Yeah, but with you, I never listen to it. But with you, it's different because you don't have to listen to you to know what you said. You know, people are always going, oh, you're a brilliant talking. guy, Gary. Did I'm I ever sure. tell you that? What? Did no. he, wait a minute. What did he say? I said, I don't know. Don't, you don't have to listen. People to don't have to, to listen to Howard said. to know what he said because everybody tells you. Huh? Does, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> you don't have to listen to the Howard Stern show to know what he said because people are always going around telling you. Did but you who, what, then who's listening? Did you hear what Howard said? Did you hear what Howard said? Talking about Alex. All right. <laughs> See, Jackie does it again. Just kick my ankle instead. <laughs> yeah. I love when he goes, Do you think that well, do you think that Allison would have to move if you two have broke up? It makes no sense and then yells at me because I think it's funny. Uh, yeah. Total sense. <laughs> <laughs> In your mind. Yeah. At least you know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know that lots of people know what I'm talking about. All right. You're like the Einstein of your own thoughts. Yeah. I'm the genius of my own thoughts. I'm the genius of me, Robert. All right. All right. Very good. i got to take a little break. I can't do it. I'm too stupid. <laughs> Gary gets mad at Jackie for laughing. It's just so hard. I know. His laugh cuts right through you. He's having too much fun. He's too much right, fun. Right. He's enjoying laughing at yeah. you. Because he enjoys laughing at me. Oh, you, if only you could laugh at yourself the way you laugh at me. If only, if only you could laugh at yourself the way you laugh at me. Why don't you explain that one? I, 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 plain and simple. When we start cracking jokes on you, there's no laugh. Right. The human laugh track stops when we start talking about Jackie. Must not be that and, his, and his wife's businesses. Uh, what? Did you get yelled at yesterday, Jackie? Oh, yeah. Oh, did you really? Uh, no. 
I thought that you were a, it was you promotion. Were, I thought spinning you were spinning plates is now on the map. Oh, and he was thrilled. Oh, so it went that way. It could have gone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he didn't know which way it was going. You know, it's a got pendulum, there. you know. I'm in the middle of goofing on Jackie's wife with Jackie's wife on the air yesterday, yeah. and I'm talking to her, and I'm goofing on her, and goofing on her, and then she all of a sudden, in the middle of it, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty relentless. Mm -hmm. She goes. Gee, Jackie, thanks a lot for sticking up for me. And I go, thanks for all the support. Yeah, and all of a sudden I go, uh-oh, poor Jackie. Oh. He's going to get yelled at for everything I said. But you didn't get yelled at no, yesterday. No, but that huh? could happen any time. Yeah, right. Yeah. You saved him by turning off his mic. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she likes talking down the air. Once she, took, once she gets to put her two cents in on the air, then she's fine. You know what I do with your wife? I goof on her for ten minutes, compliment her on her cans every ten minutes, you know, like it's throw it in for a minute, and then she gets all excited. It's and like then, erasing yeah. everything you just said. Yeah, right. <laughs> compliment, well, compliment. Com com insult, 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 insult. And then insult, compliment. Insult, compliment. Insult, 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 <laughs> insult, insult. And it insult. balances the thing. Yeah, right. Nine to one ratio. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right, let me take a break. And, uh, to save Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take a break and then we'll uh, get the, we'll get to the phones and stuff right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Howard Stern Show. More after this. 971 The Eagle. 641 at the Eagle. This is Brad Baxter. It's 645 at 971 The Eagle. Howard Stern all morning. You'll rock all day. Yeah. 971 The Eagle. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. All right. Here's Howard. Hey, thanks. My wife's on the phone. Oh. I thought you'd be sleeping, Angel. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you'd be listening. <laughs> That'd be a long Gary was just telling me how his wife gets mad at him. Oh, yeah? I was wondering if she ever did. Yeah, what but over the do? stupidest things like you do. Oh, oh. Like, um, oh, Gary yeah. said, Gary, Gary said... He goes home sometimes, and his wife is just, like, mad at him. And, and he doesn't know it. Yeah, and then he looks at her, and she's not talking to him. What's that all about? She's giving me, like, phone treatment. Uh -huh. Or, or she's giving, not the phone treatment, she's giving me yet no answers. Uh -huh. Hey, well, how, how'd everything go today? All right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what, what Allison did. does. And then, so then, of course, <laughs> you, like, go, no, no, you, no. Go, you go through your little folder. Yeah. And I say to myself, what do I talk about today? And then I sort of remember, I, I think I know it. Yeah, well, but you don't, you don't want, want to bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up. Yeah, right. Why don't you just say, now what is wrong with you? Wait, wait a second. Well, I talked to my wife yesterday. I do. No, that's what I Yesterday, I said to my wife, are you, have you got men? Let Robin talk to you. No. I... Tell her Robin wants to tell you about a movie she saw. Did you hear that whole rap? <laughs> no. Well, I was saying I was watching this movie the other day, yesterday, and there was a guy who got pretty famous. He was, you know, he started out nothing. Right. And he worked his way up to being a big star. And he had this one woman with him the whole way, and all she ever did was, you know, put, pick out his bad points and criticize him and tell him, you know, he wasn't all that great. Meanwhile, there's Lee Remick in a majorette outfit, <laughs> throwing up batons with fire on either end. Falling in love with him. Falling in love with him. And, and tell him how great he is. And tell him he's the greatest thing since sliced uh, pie or yeah. something. I want to come home and just, you know. That has up, nothing to do. With... He wound up with Lee Remick because she found him to be incredible. Yeah. I want a woman who finds me incredible. Howard, that has nothing to, that has nothing to do with us. First of all, I don't need a public arena for every discussion I have with you. Okay, here we, I told you. Now I'm already in trouble because I'm, I'm, I'm going to get yelled at today. I get yelled at every day now. And I just thought you sounded absolutely disgusting and repulsive yesterday. Yeah, well, so and what? perverted. Yeah, but I don't think so. Listen, Allison, I've told you all along. I'm ready to retire. I want you to come in and take over the radio show. And Howard, I well, need... Write, and write the material for I, the show. I need to be able to discuss things with you. And I resent that, you, that you're putting a stop to it. <laughs> you can discuss anything with right, me. Right, fine. That's all I need. You can discuss anything with me. Fine. But I, I mean, I gotta, you know, I gotta no, come you, home and get yelled at every day. No, you're, you're missing the whole point. I was having a discussion with you. No, you weren't. You yeah. were pissed off when I walked. When you walked in, I saw the puss on the face. The, the puss greeted me. I call it the puss. Well, that's too bad that you that you call it that. She gives me the puss. No, know no. It well. You know it well, right? Yeah. It was the puss, and it was like, oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm mad. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what are you mad about? Well, you were disgusting yesterday. Absolutely disgusting. Well, then, Allison, but you're not quite off. being honest when you say you weren't angry and yeah. you wanted to just have a discussion. So no, of course want... not. She's not being honest. She's not telling you the truth. She was pissed off. I was no, no, I was upset with him, and I wanted to be able to discuss it with him. And it's but not I don't want to discuss the show when I get home. This is the, sh this is the stuff I think is funny. Well, I'm sorry. And what was so disgusting about the show yesterday? Oh, don't. Oh, well, really? What was so disgusting? <laughs> I, what, I mean, what, what, what was what was going on? This is, it was disgusting. If this were me and I walked into, I would yeah. say to myself, 
the is she mad about the girl from but Prophecy? But I don't want. But, but the point the is, yeah, I know. But I don't want to be. I don't want to be critiqued. But but well, too bad. But I don't want to guess what my wife's mad at. Why should she be mad at anything? I'm not, I said to her, I'm not cheating on you. Did I'm you? in love with you. What are you? What are you? Just come, trick, greet me. Let's have some fun for Christ's sake. Well, you sounded so perverted that I I was repelled. Did she tell you what it was in particular? Who, who, who knows? Sorry. I know she didn't. I think com the girl from the computer said it was false. It the was prodigy false. girl. It was false. It was. Oh, it was... so you didn't turn off the no, <laughs> I did. right away. You know, I don't know what you do all day. I, I have no clue what you do all day. I don't critique anybody's day. Whatever it is, it's near a radio. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I turned it right off. Whatever she does, she has a radio nearby. I turned it right off. Jackie, you just unplugged my monitor. Uh, he did? Yeah. 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 Not, not to uh, confuse the situation. But yet, yesterday was one of those shows, Howard, where I'm sure Allison heard the first oh, thing. Oh, I don't even care. I just said, I, you know, what, you know why? Because over. I know my heart is pure, like Michael Jackson says. I know my heart is pure. It's I know, all moral. And, and I know... Use his argument. Yeah. It's, it's all it's moral. It's not in my heart. I don't have any bad to do. <laughs> so I, I just, you know... I'm tr I'm on here All five right, hours I'm a day trying to be funny and trying to do my job and trying to be the best entertainer I can be. Well, I want to and be able to have a discussion with you. No, 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 no. Forget the discussion. No. I don't want to have discussion. Well, I don't care. Well, how, I about, if I how about if I don't want to have discussion? Well, I don't want to be censored. You've got to lighten up, though. you really got to lighten up. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I, like I don't lighten up. You don't? Yeah, well, let's I come see. in. I, my mother used to yell at me, yeah, less. Well, I think I'm pretty, pretty open and into this show. But why do you have to be into it? Oh, why can't you be like Bob Pittman's wife and not be into whatever he does? He, she goes mountain climbing. Well, I'm, I... I don't need a wife that's into the show. You never were into the show. She never was into the show. She should be in the Amazon. I yeah. was always into the show. What are you talking about? I mean, you know, you, Studying the rain you, part. You, I want you to listen to... Um, Okay. Who's on in the morning? I'm going to pick out an appropriate show for you. Well, if the Z100 was yeah, playing more music. The Zoo. The Zoo. Yeah, listen to Z100. I would like to. Listen don't. to those listen wimps. Listen to Light FM. Light FM yeah. plays tons of music. No talk. Well, or, or, or Q104 plays rock music in the yeah. morning. Play, listen to them. Okay, goodbye. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> you don't have to go change the station right now. <laughs> you can wait a few minutes. All I know is I want my, I've want made an offer to my wife that she could take over the show for a morning. And get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, be a barrel of laughs at 5, 6, and, just, and, and she can do whatever she wants. She can have guys in here. She can look at their penises and comment on the size of them. I don't care what, whatever material she deems appropriate. Or I've made even a better offer. What's that? Every night, leave me a list of things that are funny to do on the radio, because she has yet to write a bit. <laughs> and, you know, and I'll do them. Oh, I mean, I just have it. I just, gee, I've made the mistake of doing what I think is funny and good. <laughs> no. but, you know, I'm, so, I'm down there racking my brains every day. I'm getting tired of it. Oh, my life is in ruins. I want to be able to talk to you, period. That's what I want. Oh, that's a pleasant... Isn't that a, pl a pleasant attitude to come home to? <laughs> Not for me. It doesn't have anything to do with what I saw yesterday. No. <laughs> yeah, that movie you saw makes... There's no, it bears no relevance on this situation. I don't think so. I think Al, you should you're the you don't, well, why don't well, you, you don't tell me once it. in a while? Oh, I say it all the time. No, you don't. Do you believe what he says on the radio about my relationship with him? No, we, we, I say we have a great relationship. You're the one on the air bitching about it. <laughs> well, then, then what Robin's saying has, has absolutely no relevance to our relationship. It has tons of relevance. You should hear yourself. I'm a great guy. All you do is complain. I don't. That's the point. You're Sounds like it to me. I'm a great guy. You've got the greatest husband in the world. Okay. okay. And she really does. I know. And she knows it. I don't complain. And you never used to care if uh, what I did on the radio. Now all of a sudden everything's become you get you sound like Nancy Martling. No, I And that's the word because if I was married to Nancy Martling, I got news for you. I'd bail. <laughs> You'd be Jackie. Uh, 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 form another company or something. <laughs> Jackie's oh. wife is busy forming companies. Howard, we've had this discussion for years. No. No we haven't yeah, now. We have. No we haven't. Yeah, we have. I don't recall it. Well, I do. No, I don't like it. What right. discussion? Well, I have about my show, about I have, what I do right and what I do wrong. I have a photo shoot today. I, have to I know. I'm doing a photo shoot with my wife. Oh. I'm working on something, and uh, she helped me out. <laughs> and, then, and that's another thing. Like, you know, my, I, I tried to involve my wife, and then she's hard to get. <laughs> you can't get her? Yeah. Like, I go, okay, honey. She goes, what can I do? What can I do to help? It's okay. I need you for a photo shoot. Well, how I can't do that photo shoot. <laughs> what time? When is like, it? What is it? What time? I go, like, you know what? Take care of it. Just oh, be there. I have a... You know, I've got to now hook her up with the proper people. Just, you know, chip well, in and help. It's a little... Help bit... me. I'm overwhelmed. I'm I drowning. I told you these two weeks, 
with, with the kids. I, well, very Allison, I, I mean, I'm whatever week I ask for help is always a bad week. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm doing it, Howard. Okay, goodbye. Uh, wait a second. Oh. Now, you see, again, you're mad. I'm annoyed with you. <laughs> Listen to this. You turn everything around. No, I don't. Like you're the only one that exists in life. I am the and only I one that exists in life. I need to be able to have discussions with you if things bother me. And I can't sense it if things bother me or not. <laughs> I can't. Jackie, get the gun. <laughs> I'll get the gun. No, just shoot me. I'll get the gun, Howard. <laughs> you want me? You want me to live in a hotel? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm no. not sure what you're telling me. I'm not telling you anything other than. What uh, it sounds the... to me like I'm a bad husband. No, it I'm... sounds to me like you're saying I'm a rotten husband. No, I'm saying what's the big deal having a discussion if I get upset about something? Because I don't like the topic. Well, too bad. You cannot. Oh, you mean the... I'm not allowed to? I, you mean you're allowed to talk freely, and I'm not allowed to to, to, to stop you. <laughs> That's right. I'm not allowed to argue back. You. Uh... You can argue back. I don't like it, but you can argue back. And then you mellow it out. You will, you, we have no, I didn't mellow out. Oh, yes, you did. You mellowed out. No, you mellowed out. <laughs> you totally no, you mellowed out. All right, goodbye. I have to go. No. I have to You're go. not going to hang up angry. We've never been angry at one another, really. <laughs> We're not angry. Goodbye. i got to go. Uh -oh. i got to go. I'm leaving radio because of my wife, by the way. That yeah, what yeah that's what you're doing. It. I see. You can blame her. Okay. <laughs> I can't take it. Now I'll know who to tell people to blame. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> goodbye. I gotta go. <laughs> I have to hang up. Say goodbye to me. I'm not saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> she loves me. She, she she never can tell me she loves me. I can't. What are you talking about? Do you love me? I adore you. Well, no, I you don't. You. I think you think about other guys. Uh, I do, of course. <laughs> she does. This is about noise. It's better than Jackie's noises. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, Allison. Goodbye. I'll see you later. That's my uh, my sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a mess. <laughs> uh, that argument that if you worked in an office, you wouldn't know what you were doing all day doesn't work, does it? No, she's got to stay tuned and listen to what I'm doing. <laughs> She shouldn't go to work. And now, because she complained, I don't want her to think that she had any effect on me. Gary, get me some girls in here to get uh, naked and spanked uh, for tomorrow. So it has the opposite effect. Yeah, it has the opposite effect on me. Because this is I what I was to be trying pussy to point with. out, that everything is going in the wrong direction when you take this line. you got to change your strategy because it's not Look, working for you. If if she's upset by what I did yesterday, that implies that I'm not supposed to do it again. And that means... Because she told me, say you're sorry, and then it's not going to happen anymore. And I said... <laughs> oh, I thought you didn't have a discussion. Yeah, no, I said, it's not... It's, it's, I'll tell you what's not going to happen again is this discussion. <laughs> oh, boy. You know what? She never used to be like She's this. She's only thinking of you as her husband. You're not a radio person. No, anybody, no. You're on the air. You're her husband. Yeah, this is her and husband. And everything you do is somehow a reflection on her. Right, like Kevin Costner... Uh, is uh, the guy in the movie. Right. Uh, 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 the Riddler, Jim Carrey, is the guy in the movie. Right. And if he's with a girl in yeah. the movie, he's, then he's, he's cheating right. on his girlfriend. Yeah, my wife even told me, I don't want you with any girls in the movie. I go, well, what kind of movie is that? <laughs> she <laughs> likes to go see movies where there's love making. Yeah. Can't see you make the kind of movie she likes. Because I'm her husband. I'm not the guy in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just totally warped. <laughs> <laughs> you often wonder, though, how those guys get their wives to uh, go along with it. I think so. <laughs> I'm at the point where uh, you know, I need a little, I need a little air to breathe. You know what I mean? I need a little room. You can't, you can't, you can't lecture me every day and smother me. That's what I told her. I and said, then have you apologize for what you do for a living? Yeah, I love her because of the, when we have fun, not because of when I get lectured. I have. I feel less love when I get lectured. I feel more love when we're having fun. And you just wonder what you're apologizing for—the big house, the yeah. Uh, car, what is it exactly? You know, what exactly are you complaining about? <laughs> your 37 nail appointments a week. Your 27 massages. I apologize that you have your own masseuse. Yeah, she's her own personal masseuse that flies in from Maryland. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, flying in. Yeah, I fly her in. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. What do you What do you want? Like from right me? now, she had to stop the argument. Yeah. She has to get an yeah, she, well, she had to get her feet rubbed. Yeah. <laughs> what, well, everyone's on the gravy train. <laughs> Everyone likes everything. Who's paying for it? Sucker. <laughs> now, now, now. See, that's the wrong attitude to take. The sucker pays. <laughs> you're not the sucker. You're I the am guy. the sucker.
partner. I'm the idiot. Guy. See, this is what gets me crazy. You're the most happy fella. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm sitting here masturbating 37 times a week, so I won't cheat. <laughs> and, and I'm not a great guy. This is guy. what you get. This is what I this get. Is a but I, like, you know what? I'm, I, I have just been alleviated from all guilt. Thank you. <laughs> Allison, call me from the limo to complain. <laughs> from the limo. This woman now takes limos everywhere. She doesn't drive anymore. No. Oh, my goodness. Her she brother needed to get to my house? Yeah. She sent town car Jack a limo. <laughs> I said, Allison. I'm paying for a limo for your brother. Well, she goes, well, I can't go pick him up today. I'm busy. I go, well, couldn't the guy take a cab? <laughs> Have you ever heard of public? Yeah, I mean, what do I mean? Like, because I'm Howard Stern, i got to provide limo service for your you brother? You need a limo because you can't get around yeah. in public. I, I, use a limo, I use a limo for, to, to, get, to, to get to work and, and for a certain... I need it for convenience, and I'm willing to pay for it. But, but why does your brother in law yeah, I, I mean, why does my brother need <laughs> town car jack... At seventy-five dollars an hour, or whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, but I guess I'm a bad guy. <laughs> guess the new car, the whole thing, you know, the whole thing I'm juggling. It's wearing. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I guess I'm a real horrible fiend. She has irritations in her life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you the irritation. Tell me, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> no, you're up. You're hundred percent on the money. I can marry you in a minute. Uh -oh. You're a woman who knows what I'm saying. Hey, you need your room. you'd have complaints. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> i tell you something. I have no complaints when it comes to you. But I wouldn't be there, Howard. There'd be no song. I don't There'd want be you. There'd be nothing but service. All I need is sex three to four or five times a week. Can you Make handle that? Make appointments like you get your massage. I'll be out of there in ten minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, my wife was upset because uh, she couldn't hear the radio poolside, so now I'm putting speakers with rocks by the pool so that, 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 are, that are filled in. Yeah. It can't be. Yeah, so she can hear the music. Oh, it was inconvenient. Yeah, it was inconvenient for her. little portable She didn't like it. So she can listen in stereo now. Yeah. <laughs> is it going to be underwater too? So if she's well, yeah, she okay. won't miss a for the once a year she gets her hair wet. Yes. Speakers in every room. Yeah, everyone's coming down on me. I'm sick of everyone coming down on me. Working my ass off to the bone. <laughs> I work weekends. I work during the week. But you see, this is exactly where Andy Griffith was yesterday. He looked at the woman who was it's always Andy complaining. Griffith. Yeah, what movie is this? I gotta get this movie. I don't know. I came in in the middle of it. It was just. This movie might help me. I'm not gonna leave it around for my wife. <laughs> He's listening to her, watching her look down on him and say, you know, you're not really that great. Yeah. And then there's the girl with the fire batons and the little skirt. Lee Ramick. Not a bad <laughs> piece of ass in her day. You know what? Yeah. I'm going with her. Yeah. I'm taking door number two. Yeah, I might end up with Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I might go totally gay. <laughs> Fantastic. I want to be your wife. Yeah. No complaints. No complaints here. We'll get wedding tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And it wasn't that the other woman didn't love him. It was just that he it, got it tired was, of the yeah. criticism. I, I mean, I get criticized every day now. She thinks it's a discussion. I say it's criticism. Yeah, you know. I got a critique. Out that way. I used to get this critique from Goff Labar in Washington, D.C., my general manager. I didn't like when you did this. I didn't like when you did that. Why did you do that? <laughs> and I said to give him a rationale why I did stuff. Boy, I'm going to go home and be mad today. <laughs> I'm giving the silent treatment. <laughs> you know, I've never once given my wife the silent treatment. Uh, well, that seems to be a female thing. Yeah, right? it is. Gary gets the silent treatment, and Jackie gets oh, it, too. Oh, surely Jackie gets it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> sure. Once in a while. <laughs> if I'm lucky. Happens to everybody. Yeah, my, my wife's whole rap is that. Yeah, and your wife has no reason to complain. I, I want to know what she's angry ready? about. She doesn't like it when I talk about... Uh, past sexual experiences, even though they took place before her. Yeah, like, like, who's feels, all of a sudden you have no history. No, no, no. Yeah. But she feels that, that what you know that I talk it's, about stuff that's embarrassing because you I want to know the truth. It's exciting for these yentas to be involved in a hit show. It's and they power. Got, it's power. They want to give their input. Your wife met you. You were talking about all these broads on the air. Never opened she a yap. She married one. you with that history. At least my that's wife. My line all the time. At least my wife married me when I was a loser. She could complain about me now. But you guys must be flies on the wall because I always say, "Hey, yeah. this is the guy you married." Yeah, yeah I didn't <laughs> lie to you. Like, yeah, it's not like you weren't doing this on the radio that's with right. me before. 
<laughs> and not only that, I mean, he actually did this stuff he's talking about. Okay, so now suddenly she has a criticism. Like she got bummed out this just like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The day, remember the day we talked about the boat ride? Yeah. And I talked about a couple of years ago I met some girl in the parking lot. Yeah, the one that threw up on the inside. Right. No, that was, that, that, was, that was why she got really grossed out because John goes, the one that threw up? And I go, no, not that one. John goes, the one who went to the bathroom in the street? And I go, no, not that one. You know, first of all, I can understand if you had married your wife 15 years ago and you just gotten into the radio business right. and, you know, and you were talking about that stuff for the first time. Right. You been, she met you just a couple of years ago. You've and been talking this about this the nonstop. Gary we've been dealing with all this time, and the Gary yeah. she used to listen to on the radio before Women she married Women are ruining Now all of a sudden, like she's going to now have input into the show. Tell her to shut her yeah. Just what is the uh, <laughs> what, what does this do to her? She says it's embarrassing. Yeah, to who? Well, well, so is, there a, is there yeah? Is there a restaurant you can't get into now? <laughs> we can't in the yacht club. Yeah, I mean yeah. What yacht club has rejected you as a result of this? <laughs> oh. When did she become so proper? They all become proper. Right, she was always sort of like that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, she I always she has a change. You, know, you ought to Gary dump her, like, man. Uh, it's clear. It's clear to me you ought to get a divorce while you just have only one kid. He would drop <laughs> little hints oh, yeah. that you know Mary didn't uh, appreciate lots of the show. Yeah. No, not oh, lots of the show. Just the parts where I talk about sex. The bimbos. I, that's right. one of her oh, yeah. favorite words. Yeah. Every <laughs> wife. Every wife on the show thinks the same. I tell you something. I tell you what. Why don't we have my wife come in one day, do the show? Your wife can produce. Right. All right. Okay. You come in. My wife. My wife will be the the the, the uh, anchor. Right. Yeah. Jackie's yeah. wife can write. Yeah, and Jackie's wife will be a writer. Oh, she'll flip those little notes up. Right. Yeah. She can. She can become a writer. And we'll see how funny the show is. I'd love to see. And that. I guess I guarantee within three minutes they resort to sex. I'm not working that day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody with the sex. Red can say that. I've told my wife a million times. You know when you have to worry when you stop hearing sex on the air because that's when it's going to be going on that's off the air. That's what he's sure, going to be doing. That's when I'm going to be having an affair. I'm sure if they did that show, they would say. Let's get a bunch of naked guys up here, and yeah. then they have no ratings. Yeah, right. Yeah, like yeah. Who wants to hear naked guys on the radio? Women are always calling me. Going, no, you know what they would naked do? for Robin. Yeah, because it's not interesting. <laughs> I don't want it either. Right. Even if you, you did, know, we wouldn't do it. I've had men up here before. It is just not interesting to me. That, it's not interesting to me. Not interesting to guys in cars. <laughs> right. Hey, guess what? Robin had another really hot naked guy up there today. <laughs> No, I mean, whatever we do is what we do. I'm not into that. If a woman was sitting over here who was into that, she could have her own show. Right. But the point is, you guys do what you do. I do what I do. Wow, you have a philosophy on everything. Wow. <laughs> Very impressive. Quiver speak. <laughs> no, I see nobody's myself. making me not have men up here. I don't want them. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. <laughs> what? Quivers are so <laughs> But they would get on this, uh, they'd be Kathy Lee Giffords, all yeah. telling their little cute uh, Yeah, my wife would be telling stories. baby stories and showing you pictures. Jackson's got a tooth. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to arrange that. The wives are going to do the show. Jackson did the cutest thing the other day. I'm letting Allison, Allison will pick a date. It'll probably be in about two months because no day will be good for her. <laughs> That's right, we have to work it out. And I can't wait to see her bonking into walls from getting up at four in the morning to get ready for this. <laughs> Let her do one of our vacation days. Yeah, fine. That way we. That way, there's no loss anyway. Yeah, and have your wife produce and oh, have Nancy no. Missiriani, uh, off our rockers, Martling, come in here. <laughs> Spinning plates. Spinning plates, Inc. Have a lot of records ready. Yeah. Let them do it. I mean, I, I, I got so many critics who know what to do. Let them do it. That's all I always say. I say, I'm more than, since you know so much. And you know what, though? No. Let them do the show, like do best of or something, but make them take a lot of phone calls. So and let them no, I'll, I'll, no, I will no best them of run their show. Four hours of, of Allison Stern show. But I'm saying after they start doing it, let the listeners tell them how bad they are. Yeah. So but, you don't have to do it, is what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, Howard, everybody that listens to the show, everybody, yeah, they, they, they hear you, and it's so easy and flowing. Everybody thinks that it's easy. Yeah. I remember one time... Larry King says it. He goes... I can, uh, I can do it. Well, do it. I'm telling you, the one time you did this to me and you did this to Gorilla, you put us over there to be yeah. where you are. Yeah. I'm telling you, after like 30 seconds, it's like... Uh, uh, a dear car, man. Tom Chiasano once had the nerve to sit me down and start telling me what I should be doing. We had some ratings period about three years ago where my rating was down yeah. for one for one month. And not a lot. And not, not a lot. A like a point. Yeah. I said, Tom, the chair's right over here, pal. Sit down. Go do this. Do the show. Do it. Don't you remember? We, we did, did it. it. We yeah. had Tom sit in that chair yeah. for about ten minutes. It was ten minutes. It, it seemed like ten minutes. It was ten seconds. <laughs> Same thing with my wife. Everybody's now an expert. I turned out I didn't like that particular bit. Oh, you didn't? Oh, well, well, maybe. Just, uh, I wish you would have let me. that with another yeah, one. Yeah, well, well, I wish you would have let me know earlier. I would have just switched over to the other many bits I had planned for the day. Like it's easy or something. Uh... Sitting here racking my brain. 
Allison Stern, radio consultant. Mrs. Baba Boo. And I know my wife will hear the story about your wife and go, God, what an idiot she is. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it, what's wrong with her? <laughs> you know? And then she hears Nancy Martling. She goes, oh, what's wrong with her? <laughs> I'm not like that. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Nobody's like anybody else. Oof, uh. <laughs> you know. Sorry, I can't be like Rush Limbaugh to talk about the president all day. You know, hey, he wants us to pay more taxes. I don't want it. Uh, fat slob. <laughs> no nothing. Simplistic jerk. <laughs> you know. If we had a Republican, everything would be all right. We had one. We had Bush. You suck. Yeah, and he talked up Bush so much that Bush lost the election. Yeah, good job. <laughs> really, really what good way to influence he, the election. He did a real good job for him. He took credit for getting new Gin Jim, but how about taking credit for losing Bush's office? That's right. Yeah, how'd that happen? Yeah. I you like were on that. the air every day. Right. I wish my wife would marry Rush Limbaugh. She yeah. would never have a reason to complain. He's a great guy. It would be wonderful. Never has girls up to the studio. Unless to talk about President Clinton. He doesn't have them even then. Yeah. Unless they call on the phone. Right. All right, I got to take a break. Fuffa Floley's going to rack it up. Fuffa <laughs> Floley. <laughs> While you're racking that up, I just got to bring something embarrassing up and uh, just be done with it. So I get a FedEx at my house yesterday. It's from uh, Scott Einziger from E. Yeah. We have a whole crew that works in the back room and has, and we have robot cameras in here so that our television show can be taped daily. We're so lazy that we won't go out and do a separate, you know, television show. So we just tape the radio show, and that way we have a television presence without doing any work. So the guy who, uh, one of the guys who puts it all together is this guy, Scott Einziger, who's a real nice guy, a real talented guy, and I really like him a lot. I and you would say he's the main guy. Yeah, he, I think he's the producer of the show. Yeah. Not but the isn't Robin, not, not, not the executive Isn't producer. Robin Radizinski also a uh, producer? I think she's a producer. She might even be associate producer. I know John Ryber's the executive producer. I yeah, think. well, John has that, but he doesn't do anything. And then Scott's the producer. Right, Scott's the one who's here every day. John just calls me from California every once in a while and goes, I got to tell you. He got fabulous ratings last week. <laughs> That's the executive producer job? Yeah. He sends me notes. Yeah. He sends me really nice notes and stuff yeah. you know, about what a great job I'm doing. His handwriting's way too neat. <laughs> he's one of those E-men. <laughs> yeah. He's, right. he's totally heterosexual. I know he, he was even married, had kid and everything. He's got girlfriends. But he is so effeminate. <laughs> they worked him. They worked him over when he got yeah. there, no doubt. Any guy oh, who you works... think he was more manly? Oh, before? yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a professional wrestler before he got a hold of him. <laughs> Better be. <laughs> totally straight guy, but so effeminate. When so you sensitive, every guy they hire over at E, they turn into a woman. <laughs> Women think that's evolved. Yeah, I mean, even Scott Einziger, who I really love dearly, he's more like a girl than my wife. He's got to be a man because he's so hairy. I know there's a guy there. Yeah, but he acts like a girl. <laughs> he's like, hi, bro. <laughs> that's how he calls me on the phone. He goes, hi, bro. I'm like, hey, dude, don't call me bro, okay? <laughs> I try to talk like a guy. Hey, bro, I'm thinking of running the uh, show tonight with Richard Lewis. What do you think? <laughs> well, bro, and I love Scott. I, I think Scott's a great guy. He's a great guy. And Scott makes my life easy because he's super competent. In fact, all those E people are super competent. I wish my radio crew was that. I wish, Gary, you were as competent as I, Scott Einzig. I learn from him every day. Good. Keep studying him. Guy knows how to do his job. I predict big things for him and everything. He picks up on things quickly. Yeah. He's a smart guy. So I get a FedEx at my house yesterday. Yeah. Why it had to come to my house, I don't know. Why it had to be a FedEx. Uh, inviting me to his wedding. Oh. Did you get one? No. It's coming. Oh. Is it really? Yeah. Do you know that for a fact? I know everybody. Do you know? Look out. Originally, I thought it was just, I wasn't sure if we'd be invited. Then I thought it might I was be hoping just, I would just be. like the, what I call like, you know, the core of us, like, you know, me, you, Freddie, Jackie, Billy, and John. Yeah. But then I found out that Scott had a um, conversation with his future father-in-law who's putting on this wedding and said, hey, it's a party. Invite everybody. So I think, I, I believe. No, like, it's a party. Let's get some celebrities there. <laughs> I think that, like, even like Ralph is invited. And I think Ganji and Gorilla might be invited. I'm not sure. Really? Oh. No, I'm really not going. <laughs> and so anyway, so I get this invite, and it comes to the house, and it's all wrapped. And look, it's beautiful. Mr. Oh, yes, and Mrs. Those, uh, invitations. Mr. and Mrs. Stern, and it, the envelope is is silken, woven into the envelope. Oh, look at that. Satin. You know, yes. It's going right in the garbage. And return envelope with stamp and a black tie affair at a country club. Ooh. It's a black tie, yeah. you got to wear a tuxedo. Yeah, well, I ain't wearing nothing. 
Because I ain't going. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. You'll be in your undershirt in bed. Yeah, I'll be home. <laughs> and in 1995, at 8.45 in the evening. By the way, I, f I found out that you, you won't see dinner till close to midnight. Yeah, well, it's I, one of those nighttime weddings. I will see dinner exactly at dinner time, 5 o'clock. <laughs> I hear the wedding's going to be a six-camera shoot. <laughs> you know what's going to happen. You're not going to want to go. And no, here's the, get no, here, no, here's the point. Let, let, me, let me take care of all embarrassment right now. Because I already talked to Fred. Fred got his invite. And Fred's not going. Well, Fred's really funny because Fred came in here and Fred had a great excuse, he thought. <laughs> yeah. It was a totally lame excuse. He goes, well, you know, too bad, you know, we're going to be on vacation. Yeah, I go, no, I that's, that's, ne that's two months from now. Right. So that's Fred goes, oh, well, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> 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 I was I was fired because I love Scott. I really think he's a great guy. I think Scott's a great guy. Let me say something, Scott, because I want to yeah. get this all out of, out, of, out of my system. And I want to talk and I, I don't want to be interrupted. Okay. <clears throat> I really like you a lot. I consider you a friend and co-worker. All right. I mean, you're. I see you every day. We right. work every day. We talk to each other on the phone. We see each other. There's nobody who is more dedicated to the television show than you. You're always thinking. You're always putting your energy into it. And you make. And he's one of the guys who makes the show good because, you know, like, like we're putting together a video now for Scott the engineer mm -hmm. to, you know, s you know that stupid song of his. <laughs> and like Scott's out there shooting video and all kinds of things, doing it right. I never have to worry about Scott. And you're a real good guy and everything. And I like it, but I don't want to go to your wedding. I don't want any. I don't want to be there, stared at by your friends, by your father, your mother, your uh, who is this? Uh, by uh, Deborah Lynn's parents. I guess that's your fiance. Steel and Harry. Yeah, I don't want to be. Uh, yeah, I don't want Steel. Steel and Harry. <laughs> I don't care about Mr. and Mrs. Harry Silverman. Seal and Harry Silverman. I don't care if they see me. I don't want them to see me. I don't want my wife yelling at me before I have to go to your wedding. I don't want to sit there. I don't want to wait for dinner till midnight. Life's too short. How could I not invite you, though? Yeah. I'm glad you invited me, but I hope you realize I don't want to go. I'll get you a gift. That's cool. How much is appropriate to gift him? With the name okay. your, your prize. A, gen a decent, generous gift for two people at a wedding these days. I believe a, a generous gift is around $200. That would be pretty generous. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you three. Okay. <laughs> Just to get rid of you. <laughs> I'll donate 300 to your, your impending nuptials. Impending <laughs> nuptials. What are you, high getting married, man? You're a young guy. You're good looking. <laughs> you're you're going to get laid a lot off TV, man. Just walking around with that camera. What are you doing, you schmuck? Women well, care about it. Well, well, Don't you realize at some point your wife's not going to look like the way she looks now? And at some point, all it's going to be is her nagging personality. Ooh. You're crazy. Get out of it. Welcome to the club, fucker. <laughs> yeah. But don't you want to be like Bubba Booey and have children? There you go. <laughs> Eventually. He thinks he does. <laughs> oh, I'll change. So you'll, so you'll have children. <laughs> Proving he's not a homo. Is that what you're trying to do? Prove you're not a homo? No. Don't marry her if you're a homo. Oh, Just go oh, dating guy. Geez. I'm glad I'm getting married. I'm real glad. Really? Yeah, sure. yeah I hear your oh. pussy whip, man. She's like uh, the robot of Lost in Space. I'm glad I'm getting married. He's got a he's got his fiance. Uh -huh. His program. First of all, when when Scott uh, has to make a big job decision or something, you have to go through his girlfriend. Ooh. That's not that's, true. Oh come on, bull. That's what I heard. That's what Ryber told me. Don't even bother oh, to talk to true. Scott. Talk to yeah, remember her. Remember when Scott left to take that bad wrestling job? Right. And I said, hey, why don't you guys get Scott back? You know, I said, within reason. I mean, try and get the guy back. Yeah. And I really went to bat for him. And Ryber was like, oh, God, I got to call her his girlfriend. Oh, no. 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 I go, what do you mean? They go, yeah, she's the one who controls everything. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly don't what happened. Spare me, please. <laughs> the, the night that John called me back. I don't know. This is the word I got. Which was like 72 hours after I left. Yeah. I was uh, working real late at WWF. I don't edit every night. <laughs> what a job you took. And he left He left our show to go work for the WWF. <laughs> like, 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 after editing Worldwide Wrestling Federation tapes? There'd be a demand for him. Yeah, like, like, what would you go on to? <laughs> a different wrestling federation? Hi, it's a lot of show. We've seen your tapes and we need you. Yeah, we need you to edit wrestling tapes. <laughs> So so he called. I wasn't home. So Debbie answered the phone, and so it was a conversation. No, I've heard. I've any... heard that you got it, like, and you check in with her and everything. Doesn't she? She has a, nice... a beeper, right? She has a beeper, and I found out what it was for. And so his girlfriend can call him at yeah. any time. That's not true. Well, oh, I that's have a true. Just for her to call. Me. That's what I heard. I heard she's beeping every. As soon as you get off of here, she's oh. gonna start beeping you. <laughs> Follow. Him. I know that she evaluates his appearances on the show. Yeah. 
Everything's been. Fun. Is she real no, good looking? <laughs> yeah. Is she? Yeah. She's got a good body. Very, very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, I came to a party at my house once. Who's cuter, him or her? <laughs> um, <laughs> they know it's Ty. They're both. Re I mean, she oh, got a really good body. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I figured yeah, she, she must be something special. Really I'm sorry. What? She's, she's really thin. She's yeah. Got a great body. And you know, a lot of the women at K Rock think Scott's real hot. Yeah, Scott's a good looking guy. Thank you. We try getting her on the air, but she refuses to come on. Oh, she does? <laughs> no, what's her problem? It's too good for us? No kidding, man. You're really going through with it. You're stupid. I'm well, telling you, man. The invitations are printed now. He's in. When's the last time you had sex with a different woman? Like, how long have you been going with her? Uh, I don't get you guys. Like, a couple years. Like, you haven't gotten laid from a different girl in, like, a couple of years? Yeah. And she's so great in bed? Yeah. And she does it all because, man, that's it. That's all you get in the rest of your life. I know. And she moves around and everything. <laughs> Gets up on all fours, the whole deal, huh? <laughs> well, your wife doesn't move around. Mine doesn't. My wife hasn't moved it during sex in a long time. Howard was taking what he could get. <laughs> get my wife to put her knee above her head was a major accomplishment. I can't believe a prerequisite for you is she moves around during sex. <laughs> See what I don't get? When I think she's trying to get away. Yeah. <laughs> I have you to sedate her. Raymond, did you ever tell Gary you were getting jealous of him? What do you mean? He came in and one day told you about his uh, Valentine's Day celebration with his wife. Yeah. Where she cooked him this romantic meal. So Bubba of course they told home, him. And there's a beautiful meal and candlelight. Yeah, I don't get that. It's actually, I used to get that when I first got married. But you see, you see, I know why I got married. <laughs> I had no hope in life. <laughs> My wife is way too good looking now, for I've, a guy who looks like me. I've heard you say that no, you, let me that say she is your soulmate. No, that's all a bunch of guys say that in front of her. That's the Tom Hanks speech. Yeah, please. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I could be soulmate. If Robin spread her legs We're right now, soulmate. she's my soulmate. We're soulmates and I don't spread I could have legs. a soulmate right now with <laughs> Sally Kirkland naked in a hotel room. Okay? Oh, you're terrible. Whole mate was what I said. All right, listen to me. What happened in my case, and I, this is why I don't understand you guys, and I'm being serious. The thing that I don't, what happened to me was I was 19 years old, and I really had a hard time getting laid. And Allison came to my life, and Allison's really cute. I mean, she looks great, you know, and, and I'm talking when she's 19 now, right? I'm not talking about the woman you know now. I'm saying she looks great now for, you know, but she's 41. How you did know. you know her age and not your own? She's had her day in the sun. <laughs> so, you know, she's, she's getting older. <laughs> she's over the hump, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm saying, she, listen, she, she, she's no spring chicken. Oh, Howard, you're not I saying, married a 19-year-old. You're not saying she's hit any wall. <laughs> no, not her. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, right. So listen, when I was 19, I could never get laid. Never. I mean, if it happened, it would happen like on a fluke, like a, a freaky chick. When I say a freaky chick, like a weird chick. Not necessarily ugly. You don't ugly. have to explain. We've met them. Yeah. Like always freaky. Always LSD or alcohol involved. Right. O or lewds. <laughs> and always like a drug thing. And, and then all of a sudden, like, they were with me one night, and then they came to their senses, and they didn't want to see me yeah, anymore. Yeah, as soon as they sobered up. <laughs> and the ones that wanted to see me anymore, you wouldn't want to see. <laughs> I had one follow me around. I swear to God, like a, like a dog. I mean, like, like a dog face. Was this in college? Yeah. It didn't matter. High school, college. In high yeah. school, I never got laid. I Remember, had one girlfriend, and I had to go drive to the Bronx to get laid. And then when I got to the Bronx, she didn't want to have sex with me. Why just go to the Bronx? Because that's where she lived. Uh, he couldn't find a girl in his own neighborhood. Yeah. And when he was in college, he was driving all the way down to Princeton. Yeah. Wasn't you? Yeah. Because one girl was willing to have sex with me. <laughs> had to go out of state. Yeah. And then she dumped me because I had a small penis. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've suffered some really bad humiliations. And then I meet Allison, who's really, you know, pretty, and she sleeps with me every night. And she's really nice. She doesn't hassle me. You know, she seems really nice. And I was like, man, please marry me. I was ready to marry her a week after I met her. I said, I want to grow old with you. I was, I was already like a leech. I'm surprised she didn't dump me. But she like really loved me. But you married her because you, could, you felt you could lock it in for the rest of your life? Right. I wasn't like, giving that up. It was like a good mortgage. It wasn't even yeah. like locking it in. It was gratitude. Yeah, I mean, and also... I was so grateful that you, this woman would have him. And now I didn't have to go to any more parties and try and stand there and pick up girls while every guy got laid. I used to go to parties where every guy I knew got laid and I'd still be sitting there. We'd go to ugly girl parties, AZA <laughs> parties. It was filled with just ugly Jewish girls. Are you saying that when all the rejects, all the other rejects were taken, you were still standing on the yeah, wall? Yeah, well, I would go to parties. My friends would say, hey, we're going to this AZA party. I go, what's that? He goes, it's just like a real, it's just ugly Jewish girls <laughs> who are dying to have boyfriends. And, and we can go in there. They'll we'll, take anybody. We'll charm their pants off. I go, really? So, you know, I get all dolled up. I go over to the party with my friends.
<laughs> they all go there, and, and like I walk in, and there's a room full of pigs. And I sit down, and one by one, each one of them's going off, and we're all laughing and goofing on the other guy. Goes, Look at the pig he's with. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there, and then by the end of the night, I'm on the couch. And, I, and there's not one pig even talking to me. You're pigless. I'm, yeah, I'm the biggest pig in the room. There's still girls without dates. Yeah, they're goofing Yeah, and they're goofing on, not even talking to me. <laughs> so you know what that felt like? So, so like Allison rescued me from a life of having to go to parties and, and being rejected. goofed on and rejected. Yeah. And now I go to a party with Allison and be like, hey, F you. <laughs> and Allison wasn't even interested in other guys. Wouldn't even look at other guys. She was like totally in love with you. Totally into me. From day one. So how could I not get married? And who would have predicted I'd even be big on radio? I mean, I, I was awful. I, I, as a disc jockey, I was one of the worst disc jockeys ever. <laughs> so had I had no voice. I had no delivery. I tried to introduce records. I couldn't even get through a sentence. So had you been 30 years old, say it's 10 years later, and you meet Alice and you care about her a lot, but you're dating a lot of different women, you wouldn't have seen love in her? I might have, I might have really dated her for like a couple of weeks, but no more than a couple of weeks. I would have been on to, if, if I had the power over women that I have now, I wouldn't get married. And you guys, in a sense, Baba Booey, as my producer, was getting well, laid a lot. The one thing you can say about Gary is he did sow his wild oats. Yeah, I guess, but... I don't, guess he got tired of it. I don't buy that concept. Really? I, you know, I think the day you stop sowing your wild oats is the day you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and Einziger carries around a camera, and, you know, he's always ordering people. And he's sort of in show business, and he's handsome. Maybe all the opportunity you're going to miss. You're so damn pussy-whipped. What are you afraid for a minute? You want to have? A, it's you you got to be with her. At Nineteen. I'm t almost twenty nine years old. Big deal. Wait till you're fifty. <laughs> See, like Frank Gifford's age, then go get married. <laughs> Plus, you're going to be doing good in TV and stuff. I mean, you're pretty talented. Don't you believe in yourself? Yeah, no, I do. So now it's going to cost you a fortune. You're going to get a good job. You're going to have to get a divorce. <laughs> you're going to have that stupid beeper yeah. going off. You're in the middle of getting laid at some hotel. <laughs> and you'll be full of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of life is that? <laughs> stupid. I'm telling you, man, you're making a big mistake. No, I'm not. Think of all the romance that you could have, man. Like the first time you meet a girl and she slides her hand down your pants. <laughs> man, you're never going to have that again. I'm, I haven't had that in 20 years. I want a new girl to hire. I just want to hire a girl to slide her hand down my pants. Now, when you go home tonight, what are you going to say? To who? The woman you live with. I love you. <laughs> and I'm getting married was the smartest thing I ever did. Just kidding on the air? Right. Just kidding. Oh, you. I love my wife. There is no better woman on the planet. Most guys never would have even encountered this kind of temptation that I get. I'd still be the guy nobody would look at. I have a fluke situation. But so do you, dude. You're in TV. <laughs> and you're a nice-looking guy. I, if I was as good-looking as you, I'd never get married. Why are you ever? trying so hard? He's not going to back out I'm now. just trying to save him, man. If He's someone had done this for me... back out I, now, I, and they tried to do it for you. They did. Every one of Allison's <laughs> uncles came over to me and said, You are an a-hole. You have oh, no idea well, what you're doing. Our family? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, her uncles came over and go, what are you doing, dude? You could, you could go out, you could date. And I was like, I don't want to date. I'm in love. I could care less what you guys think. Every <laughs> guy tried to warn me. Feels right now. I, I appreciate You're advice. a douche. How long ago did you meet her? I've known her for 10 years. Really? We knew, yeah, we so you haven't gotten laid years. in 10 years from someone? No, different? no, no. We were, we were friends first. I, you got a picture of her? I got to see what it is that you're so worked up over. Uh, you got a picture? <laughs> I'll bring her by. I'll bring her by. She better be a penthouse pet. Oh man, dude. So what? And why are you get? You know what I hate too? What? what? You should know better. First of all, why are you making people go out and buy a tuxedo for your stupid wedding? What? You're so important. If You're a not, stupid producer on a damn bad channel. E. That was not my decision. Do you think Scott had anything to do with that? Wait, who decided that? Your wife? What's her problem? Oh, she oh, she thinks she's royalty. They're making they're making a really nice wedding. You know, if I had it my way. Oh, they're paying for it and everything yeah, like traditional. So, I mean, they're doing a nice thing. And why do you have to eat at midnight? Well, you don't. Have I hate that. Dinner. No, I have a wedding. cousin who did that. I wanted to take her and her new husband and throw them the right first... through a window. I go to first of all. You know how rude it is to do this. Let me let me explain something to you about weddings. And I hope everyone listens to me because I know everything. Not everybody has your schedule, huh? No. Some but, people are out for a no. good time. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, and I'll tell you something because you yeah. don't think other people. Let me oh. say something. <laughs> I read your book. Ah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll get married at midnight. <laughs> so here's the thing. When a guy and a, and a woman get married, and a lot of their young friends say, ooh, wouldn't it be romantic to have a midnight dinner? And it, you got to understand something. The majority of the people who come into your affair are older folks. Do you have grandparents? Yep. Does she have grandparents? 
Uh, no, they're not alive. Oh, good. <laughs> they already killed them all. Because they saw you. <laughs> <laughs> and first I have to pay $300 to rent a tuxedo. Yeah. So yeah, I can go to, to watch much. Scott get married and eat at midnight. <laughs> Auschwitz was better. <laughs> and I'm going to sit there and watch the nuptials of, of King Scott Einziger. Right. And I then say these are Broadway productions. These people, this is a one time. They're starring roles. Yeah, my early. cousin did this. She gets, she gets married, and she's going to have the dinner at midnight. My, my aunt, who was her grandmother, uh -huh. almost passed out from exhaustion. <laughs> my parents are old. Most of the people older were like, oh, my God, we just want to eat. We want to go home. We're tired. Mm -hmm. And people get hostile. They're sitting there hostile. But there's food before And my that. cousin comes out, her and her husband, and they're in big wicker king and queen's chairs. Yeah. Are you going to have a big no, wicker? No, I don't want that. Are you going to sit at your own what table? He has no say. What do you mean? You I don't imagine I'd be sitting. Tell me how it's going to go down. What time is the wedding? The wedding starts at 8.45. I think when you get there, they serve you some snacks. Before the wedding? Yes. Like so. what kind of snack? Canapé? Like rugula. That's a canapé. Like, like a rugula. No, like like no, come on. What are they going to serve? Those are called hors d'oeuvres, Howard. Like little snacks. What are you? Are you a Jew? Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to serve a rugula? Yeah. What? Takes a blanket. And your wife's a Jew? Yeah. Small boy. Yeah. Then there's the, the there's service. Give some party in that bed. <laughs> 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 then there's a service. I think it starts at 915. Should always like, marry a guinea or a speck. Oh, uh, listen why, to why, Because they go out of their way. Right, Robin? No, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Spanish person will take her tongue and put it where you wouldn't believe. I thought that was Filipino. And an Italian girl knows how to move and swallow. Wasn't that a Filipino, though, with the tongue? No. Uh, Philippines, or Filipinos will do anything. <laughs> Give their father 12 bucks. <laughs> Come on. They'll do all that, then they'll, clean, then they'll clean the house when they're done. Yeah, right. Oh, please. I would marry a Spanish girl or an Italian girl. Oh, boy. They love it. <laughs> Forwards, backwards, from well, behind. Well, listen to you again. You didn't wait for your uh, Spanish girl or Italian girl. Why should he? No. He wants to be as miserable as you. Needs a Jewess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's going to happen? You're going to go to the wedding, and we're going to wait till 8:45. We need canapé, and then Ooh. you're going to. The ceremony's probably 20 minutes to a half hour. All right, so now we're looking at 9:15. Well, Turn I think we're looking at a 10 o'clock finish of the service. We all so we, because the rabbi will see me in the audience and start droning on. That happens too, by the way. Auditioning. These rabbis love to audition for me. They see me. They all of a sudden they perk. They perk up. Yeah. Ooh, I've got to do my best. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to give a big long speech about how uh, how you should be nice I, to people in the world. I cut this short, but yeah. now I'm going to make some remarks. Yeah. Now I'm going to comment, and it'll be directed at that big gork. With the long hair. You a rabbi look at you and give oh, you Oh, please. And he's changing it, it as he's going on. Rabbis, along. they love to talk. They're like lawyers. I get the speech from Exodus. <laughs> we have a responsibility not to make fun of Israel on the radio. There is enough bad in the world. Right. There is evil in the world. Jews are persecuted. If you want to make fun of Schwarzers, go ahead. The Jews are persecuted. All right, so anyway... So then, okay, we're going to have a big wedding ceremony. So nice. And is your wife going to have a big formal gown? Is she a princess? Is she marrying her prince? Marrying Prince Scott Einziger? Prince Scott? I'll be Mrs. Scott Einziger. <laughs> <laughs> of course I have to wear full veil. <laughs> Rule over Scott's fiefdom. What is it, Stuttering John? Well, you know, the worst part about it is black tie event, you know that? You're going? Yeah. Fred, you're not going, right? You've well, already closed the coin. I will send a gift. But you know, I'm going. Thank you. Thank you. you are. I'm Definitely. not. But you know, like you, you have to wear a tux. All the interns go get tuxes. Yeah, I mean, who's going to go do that? <laughs> I'm not going. Scott, I swear I love you. I love your wife. I That's love cool, you. Man. I think you're a great guy. I want to work with you a long time. I just don't want to go to your That's wedding. Cool. I, I understand. I don't like to sit around and let people stare at me. So while you get married. Well, that's not very nice. Jackie just Jackie said, no, who no. pays for the taxes? So <laughs> yeah, I assume you're going, Robin, if you get an invite. Oh, I'm not. I don't care about people, but you say. Are you going? <laughs> Are you going? I don't even have an invitation. I'll you're tell you invited. when it is. You're invited. <laughs> you can have mine. Yours and I'm not going to see an invitation. <laughs> why mine had to be FedEx? I don't know why I couldn't just come here to the station. Billy's actually invited, too. <laughs> why? Because I like the... Yeah, but something's unclear about the party afterwards. Billy will go. No, I mean, we got an invite to your wedding, and it says something about, you know, going to the temple where you're having it done. Well, the reception's at the temple. Oh, it's... Oh, so okay. where's, the, where's, the, where's the wedding? At the, at the temple. temple. Oh, it's all, all happening at the temple. Yeah. All in one place. Yeah, yeah. if I'm stopped place. Hey, Billy, you're short enough. You could stand on the cake. You could be a human <laughs> groom. <laughs> this land is mine. <laughs>
Why would you want all of us at your wedding so you'd be embarrassed while we sit there and goof on you? Yeah, you know you'd yeah, I, I, hear the I, end I can tell you one thing. Maybe it's not such a good idea having them all there. Yeah. Exactly. We goofed on Baba oh, Booey. Oh, man, was this wedding great? <laughs> we had a tape of, you know, that Baba Booey, Baba Booey? Yeah. In the middle of the ceremony, we just hit the tape and went, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. And then, During the ceremony? Yeah. And then Scott Salem sang Hands Up. That was pretty rough. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Oh, boy. But remember, all the while, Gary thought we were going to really disrupt his wedding, so he was nervous. You didn't invite Scott the engineer, did you? Yeah. You did? Oh. <laughs> Now, I know he's got a tuxedo for all his gigs. Yeah, he looks great in it, by the way. <laughs> he really so then, adds something you guys, to a party. I, I, you know, I'm here every day. I see you guys. Yeah, isn't that enough? No, Why don't you just know. have a private thing for your family? We don't really care that you get Yeah, married. I mean, we don't really know anybody else you know. We don't even know your wife. We've never even met her. If you don't want to go, I won't be offended. Yeah, you know what? I do. I, I'm really happy for you and stuff. I just don't want to go. Okay, that's cool. And so I hope that clears the air. And please don't hold it against me. I'll give you a really generous gift. I really think that's wrong of you, though, Howard. You're not going either. <laughs> I really think you should go. I would actually like to go if no one else was there. <laughs> what if you just went to the ceremony? Why? Why do you need me there? So what, so your family can say, hey, there's no, his, his celebrity friend. He really does work with Howard and he's close with him. I, you know, I, I, I'm not into that. Don't you think that you have an obligation to Scott? No. <laughs> I really don't. I think Scott has an obligation to me. <laughs> Can't you just show up so you can take a picture with the bride and the groom? For no. The book? No. No. I'm not going. Okay. I really don't want to no, go. I'm it's just awkward and cool. stupid, and, and everyone expects me to do stuff. Are you just stuff. saying this on the air, and you're really going to go? No, I really don't want to go, and I never <laughs> want to talk to you about it off the air. That's okay. All right, I'm going to send you a, a generous check. Thank you. Baba Booey says send 200. I send 300. <laughs> Papa Paul, hi. I'll write the check right now. You I'll give you the cash. Where's my wallet? <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go to that. I guess you're going. going. I'm not going. Yes, you are. No, you're going. No, you're going. Jackie, you going? Yep. Yeah. And Jackie will go. Jackie loves the parties. Free food and free food. Let's get wine. Nancy, let's go to the... Uh, We're all going. Let's rent the limousine so that when we go, we get really drunk and we don't have to drive home. Sirianni yeah. moved the gig already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he rolled up go. fish that they eat. You got to go. For Christ's sakes. Boosting up. I'll, I'll be your wife for a second. You have to go and so does Rob. I'm not going. You have to go. Have I don't want to go. go. I don't want to eat at midnight. You have to go. There's a cocktail hour. So there's a cocktail hour. Hey, Jackie, you like that. Don't we always have fun when we hang out together as a group on weekends? Yeah, but, you know, Scott's a good guy and everything, but I'm not going to his wedding. Oh I like Scott a lot. I like him better than most people. You don't want to sit at a table talking no. to Scott the engineer? No. No. <laughs> and and neither do you. And his wife. Well, there was some ceremony, wasn't it? It was very beautiful. Yeah. I love the quotations. Excuse me, honey, can I get you a drink? Watch Would Scott be polite to his wife. Would you like a Jägermeister? Shut up now! Would that be a 7-Up, darling? <laughs> or a Rob Roy? Who else did you invite? Um, not Chisano, did you? No, it's basically like your, sta you know, your staff. Uh -huh. Kathy's invited. Oh, yeah. Um, Richard's invited. Richard? Everyone who I work with. Richard picks carrots out of a garbage pile. Oh, yeah. yeah, you don't have to worry about <laughs> feeding him. This will be a special night for him. You just take him by the garbage pile. Invite the guy that brings the food in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Janji, too, you invited? Yep. <laughs> I'm not going. Did you invite Tom? No, not, no, Tom's not. What about the other E people? Like, is yeah, Fran they coming the, in from the, California? Well, Fran, Fran was invited. I don't know if she's Fran's not going to go. Marta was invited. She's not going to go. Uh, <laughs> they go to Palm Springs every and, weekend and, and have their name, nails done. And John. John. Ryber? Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys have a lot in common. <laughs> 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 You've both been totally pussy with by E. Get out of here, you disgust me. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you, thank i got to meet this prize of yours. I'll bring her by. If you go to the wedding, you can see her. My wife uh, saw her. She ran into you guys oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. My wife said, yeah, she's really cute. And I said, well, I'm not going to take your opinion. <laughs> I'll bring her by. I'll look her over. Okay. All right. Good luck, If she's good looking, will you go to the wedding? No. <laughs> Don't you think it's the obligation of a boss to go to his yeah. employee's wedding? I'm not his wedding? boss. Yes, he is. I'm not his boss. Yes, he is. Absolutely. And you go. <laughs> we'll see if you go. If you go, uh, then I'll look at you. I don't have anything we'll have to do with Most of the Scott. weddings you've been to been a disaster in terms of people. I just don't want to go anywhere. I just want to, I want to have a nice, quiet weekend. I don't, <laughs> want, to, I don't want to be stared at. I don't want to get dressed up. Okay, I can no, but I can ask that for Howard. I've never heard you come back from a wedding and say, boy, did I have a good time. Yeah, okay. I, it's, it'll be a disaster. You know what? I like you too much to go to your wedding and ruin it. Okay. I right. appreciate it. All right. <laughs> I really think that this is wrong etiquette. I got the invite, and I was like, oh, how am I going to deal with this? You know what? I'll just tell him on the air. So, Robin, that means you're coming. I'm not. I don't know Scott. I don't know how he wouldn't invite well, me. You want to do the truth? I hardly know Scott. <laughs> I just work with the guy. 
All of a sudden, I got to go to his wedding, <laughs> which I don't even agree with. I think the guy should stay single. <laughs> Is that your protest? Yeah, you I think you're jump up when they make that statement. Speak now. Yeah. Douche. <laughs> I love you, though, man. Okay. I'm happy for you. I hope it works out for you and your, and your wife. Thank you. All right. Be all exciting. They'll have the same last name. <laughs> Is she taking your name? Yeah. The Einziger name? <laughs> What's her first name? Debbie. Debbie. So she'll be Debbie Einziger? Yeah. Uh, What's her name now? Silverman? Silverman. Oh, so she'll be Debbie Einziger. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big difference. People won't be clear on if she's a Jew or not. Does everyone have to wear a yarmulke during the wedding? Mm-hmm. Even Jackie? Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, we discussed that yesterday. You gotta go. <laughs> Conservative couple. <laughs> really? Jackie has to wear one? Come Scott, on, yeah. Scott's thrilled when he gets to wear a yarmulke. <laughs> Makes it look like he has hair. Oh, he can keep it on after the ceremony. Hmm. I can glue this to my head. Yeah. <laughs> he gets a black one. <laughs> like to comb my yarmulke. He <laughs> <laughs> just puts on that toupee. Yeah. Glue, glue the yarmulke to his toupee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be pretty funny. You got to go. <laughs> Just tape it. I'll watch it tape. Okay. All, right. All right. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. You're listening to The Howard Stern Show. 971 The Eagle. Hey. Howard Stern morning. You're right. All day. All 971 The Eagle. It's The Howard Stern Ooh. Show. It's Howard. <laughs> I wanted to take some phone calls, and I wanted to uh, do a bunch of things, Robin, but I see news time is here, and I'm really trying to keep to a schedule. Well, you know how you could do that is just by accepting invitations. What do you mean? If you hadn't spent a half hour saying, yeah. no, I won't go, you could have done all those things. Yeah, well, I feel kind of bad, but... You should, because I think it's wrong what you're doing. Gary just bet me off the air that I will end up there. He bet me 50 bucks. Yeah? And so I said, now... I'm not going. <laughs> I said, I'll go. I Fred will be there before I will. He couldn't believe it's a sure thing, only betting 50 bucks. Yeah. He's a little nervous. <laughs> but I think it's wrong for a person who works with you so closely. You should be there. Such a liar, because you know what you said to me one day? If somebody you work with really liked you, they wouldn't invite you to that crap. Oh, oh, that is not true. Did I say that? Yes. That's what you say off the air. <laughs> they know that you don't want to go, and you know you don't want to be there, so they can leave you alone and say, listen, don't come. I don't know. I, I changed my mind. You know me. The only fun aspect now is just watching Jackie and Nancy make a spectacle of themselves at the party. How can you miss Nancy comes in braless, low-cut top. Little short skirt. And as the evening wears on... You get a dance with her, you feel her ass. <laughs> <laughs> she gets good and loaded. How can you miss that? She gives you bedroom eyes. <laughs> Jackie's wife. So why don't you want to go? I can do that. I can just call her up for a date. What do I have to go to <laughs> Scott Einziger's wedding for? <laughs> She's as hot as a pistol. Oh, you're terrible. You got her last night. Did you? Sure. Got it. She's your wife. No big deal. That's yeah. not getting, is it? No. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> She's got a good body, his wife. Super thin with big breasts. Hmm. Dynamite combination. Me and her? No, me and her. <laughs> Is that super thin with a big load if you're talking about Jackie? And yeah. <laughs> That's her exercise just to carry Jackie around. Keeps it trapped. Real good body on her. Always wearing a bathing suit, thong, whatever. Still gets away with it. How old is she? What's she, about 35? 34. Yeah. Looks yeah, good. Yeah, got a young one. Yeah. Well, Jackie waited to get married. Got, that was about as good as he was going to do. Is it? Well, Jackie, I think, cheats on the side. She's beautiful. I think Jackie That's nails her and gets other girls, too. So? That's always been my feeling on Jackie. <laughs> and no one will ever convince me otherwise. I got done with it last night. No. Jackie has no guilt. <laughs> That's why Jackie still plays bad comedy clubs. God's punishing him for cheating on his wife. <laughs> he could have a better yeah. career. Yeah. He's that's, been cheating. In my mind, that's what God's little punishment is. Zanies. <laughs> that's living Howard Shadow the rest of his life. <laughs> Has to go to Slapstick. Yeah. For Zanies in Chicago. Easy picking. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I ought to get a lot of different girls. I love you. You're sold out. <laughs> Why, you think Jackie's faithful? You know, every time you say all this stuff to me and you make me believe it, but when I see them together, I oh, just can't. He has a great time with her. But he has a great you time with a lot of people. Yeah. You would too. 
No, she doesn't trust him as far as she can throw Well, him. I know she doesn't trust him. And with good I reason. Just, I mean, he does care about her. Cares about her like he cares about Fred. <laughs> <laughs> he cares about everybody. He cares about his cat, too. Sure. He loves that cat. Yeah, but he's pet on others. Yeah, no. He? He's got a... He's got a he loves them all equally. Fred, his wife, and the cat. No, he has no guilty conscience. He's got a great. Uh, he's got a great attitude about it. Free spirit. It's only sex, I suppose. Right. To him, it's sex, and sex he has with his wife is he's the best. He's in love with his wife. Yeah, he loves her. Eating ain't cheating. Eating ain't cheating. <laughs> oh, stop! I'm telling you. <laughs> Come to the wedding, and we'll swap. Nah, that's all right. <laughs> You'll be there. I bet somebody in the hall too. I bet Gans. Go ahead. I ain't going. I thought Heinziger's wedding. <laughs> sit there and be stared at by his parents. It could be rough. Yeah, and I'm going to wear a tuxedo. Oh. That's one thing he could have stood up for us and said, wait a minute. Not only that, I, if I do go, I ain't wearing no tuxedo. Well, you never do. You no. went to Trump's wedding and didn't wear a tuxedo. No. Nope. So well, why should you wear wearing, one for Heinziger? If you're not wearing one, then we don't have to wear one, right? Absolutely, you don't have to. You can wear your same stupid baggy black pants with sneakers. Look like a clown. Why don't you put a red nose on your face? He should wear his wedding outfit. Yeah, you can wear giant shoes and a red uh, red clown nose. You don't have to dress up. Bring a boombox with my music. Hey, you not wear one. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> Jackie Parade! <laughs> and Jackie could get really drunk and insult Scott Einziger's parents like he insulted Gary's parents. Yeah, I mean, as what? the evening goes on, Jackie will tell more and more racist yeah. jokes. Oh. The, last, the last time I went to a wedding <laughs> was, with, was at Gary's wedding, and Jackie was at the table. Gary's father comes over, and Jackie just turns and goes, Hey, your teeth aren't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <is> funny. <laughs> And his father's like destroyed, and he's like, you know, what are you making fun of my son's teeth for at his wedding? <laughs> Jackie thinks he's really going over big. Uh, <laughs> and he's just loaded. I always think I'm it's like if, if anyone had any balls, they just punch Jackie in the stomach while he's loaded, and watch him vomit in the corner. Yeah, you know, Teddy. Jack him up. Teddy Davis thought he was being particularly cruel. Jackie's like that all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he tells the president's daughter that her father has uh, Alzheimer's lost his memory. Yeah. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Hey, I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> oh, I gotta gotta read that book. I gotta read. What's that. up? There is one great thing that came out of this entire discussion. Yeah. Guess who called, offering uh, their services for Scott Isaac's bachelor party? Ooh, scores? Yes. Yeah, we gotta have a. Uh, hey, we oh, do no, have to have no, a no, bachelor no. party. That I'll no go to. bachelor party yeah. if you're not going to the wedding. When is the bachelor party? As soon as possible. <laughs> no <laughs> bachelor doing? party unless you go to the wedding. Yeah, Robin. Folks, she can keep talking. It's all right. <laughs> He's gonna go. I'm anyway. going anyway. <laughs> I could around ten seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Black tie affair? <laughs> sure. Ah, just go get black cool. ties and just wear them. And you know Einziger will be out of there in 10 minutes. I was going to say, I would say Einziger should boycott, but it wouldn't matter. You'd go in. Anyway. I'd go to his bachelor party whether he was there or not. <laughs> if he died, we'd go do his funeral. Yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks we should arrange for a bachelor party. Will he back. come? Bring him in. Yeah, he'll come. Oh, boy. Beep, beep. That's a tough He goes for like 10 minutes and stares at a girl for a second and leaves. Really? Because he can't stay there. That should be a good sign to a guy not to get married when you see a bunch of married guys standing around like <laughs> dying over and girls dying pulling their pants down. To go to your bachelor party. Yeah. It's a good indication of what your life's going to be like. <laughs> Bite all his in laws. Yeah, have his father. Oh, dear. We saw one guy, Jackie, worked at a bachelor party oh, where God. this guy gets up and uh, Jackie was the comic. And, uh, the hooker took him by the hand. Yeah, so the hooker in front of the guy's dad and the guy's future father-in-law right. got and up on stage and brother-in-law got up on stage and pulled the guy's pants down and gave sodomy to the to oh. the uh, bachelor. Lied him down on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right in front of the future father The future father was with a big smile on his away. face. Yeah. The stage was like, you know, four inches tall. You yeah. say he was smiling? Yeah. This whole thing? He could married her. He was proud. <laughs> yeah. Married the hooker. <laughs> I had to take a hooker to a hospital once after a bachelor party. Yeah, I remember that one. That was pretty funny. She was all bloody. Yep, we wrapped her up in the sheets and dropped her off on the front steps. And she uh, goes, is anyone going to come in with me? No. no. <laughs> I'm going to be with a hooker. Wait, did you leave a sign on her and say, please take care of my child? Hey, let me tell you something. Her whatever, he just left her. The all, pimp. Yeah, he left her all together. <laughs> we were nice enough to drop her off somewhere. <laughs> near, near a surgeon. Oh, so well, you, you'll come to the bachelor party? Yeah, the bachelor party I'll be at. Okay. All right. In fact, that's Howard's gift. Yeah. I'm throwing okay, you a ba I'm going to throw right. you a bachelor party you'll never forget. Did you have another one planned, Scott? No, Lonnie had mentioned to me that he was probably going to do something. Oh, was he? Was really nice. Lonnie's the man yeah. over at Scores. Yeah, that's nice. Scores is a weird place. You know, I'm looking in the newspaper today, and A.C. Cowling's, who I'm no big fan of, 
But A.C. Cowling's O.J.'s pal. Yes. Uh, he was over at Scores last night, and he got pissed off because they had a photographer over there, and they were taking pictures of A.C. while he was, you know, getting a lap dance or something. Or the girl was dancing for him. Right. And he was like, hey, I don't want a picture of me in the paper at Scores. Did you see that, how he got in, though? He used O.J.'s Scores card, but it expired a year and a half ago. Yeah, I don't think Lonnie cares. But I, that's always weird to me. Like, shouldn't a guy have his privacy? No, I figure if you're going to go out and do things like that, you might as well have your picture taken. Get lost. No. You don't even think no, that. I, I agree. I agree with you. Of course. You can't think I'd be a party and he wants to he's spend he, the money. If he's paying his good money and he's right. there, it's just like, why does, you know, you won't show pictures of everyone. Maybe he wasn't paying money. Yeah, well, I told Lonnie. figured he was owed something. I told Lonnie, ever see any pictures of me coming out of that? I'm never talking about your place again. Are you ashamed of what you're doing? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty shameful. I'm a married man with three children. <laughs> Sitting here looking at naked girls. <laughs> Hoping to rub against my leg. You want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah. Here's another. Yeah. Here's more funny money. More funny money. <laughs> I think that. Do you think that we can? The actually... beeper will be going off in Scott Einstein's pants every ten minutes. Do you think that we? I'm oh, sorry. Do you think we can actually break the bank on this one? Every time we've gone, you we started out with. Like, I remember we, we were like, "Wow, we got three thousand dollars in funny money," and the next time it was five, and I think the last time we went to close to fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Each time we spend more and more money. A million dollars. Yeah, it'd be a million dollars in funny money. And all of this happens in about a two-hour two period. Oh. Yeah. We go through 15 grand in uh, two hours. Plus shrimp and lobster and... Lobster. And the goal this time should be less guys at the party, yes. more money. Yes. Lonnie from Scores is on the phone now. No. But it should be, you're absolutely right about that, Howard. There's too much dead wood at these parties. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, Howard. Hey, Lonnie, seriously, how does A.C. Cowling's picture end up in the newspaper? Well... That's not cool. You better never take a picture of me. Well, as you know, we've never, ever in a million years even considered taking a picture of you or notifying anybody or... Thank you. Uh, A.C. has an unusual situation because we agree with you. O.J. is guilty. Right. A.C. knows it. A.C. Oh, is not a nice guy. It's a oh. political statement. Oh, it's a political statement. Okay, then I'm with you. All right, Lonnie, say no more. What is the picture show again? It's just A.C. sitting there with a girl, her, her, her beautiful ass, like, like, like to the camera. Uh -huh. She's shaking her uh, boobies into his face. Oh, I got it. O.J.'s guilty. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I never argue with Lonnie because Lonnie's the guy who gives us the funny money so the well, girls do stuff. I am not looking for anything from Lonnie. I can say whatever I want. You know what's real embarrassing about how much time we spent at Scores? Entertainment Tonight did a piece. You know, Demi Moore went down there last week because yeah. she was doing a movie. Yeah. And they were interviewing all the strippers. And I'm sitting on the couch with my wife. And she goes, recognize any of your girlfriends? And I recognize all of them. Yeah. I'm like, I know her. I know her. We know every one of them. <laughs> by name. Yeah, they got some good-looking girls over there. So, Lonnie, you're saying we can have the Scott Einziger bachelor party over there? Of course. I spoke to my boss, Craig Carlino, and he basically says, Howard, uh, anything for your people, and on the odd chance we might even get you, anything you ever wanted. Hey, can you do me a favor? Don't keep it so bright in there when we come. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the cable. He does want to see what you're doing. <laughs> That's right, we I went to room, it's pitch watch. black. We like it. He yeah, well, one thing, Lonnie has a bunch of guys there hanging around and watch me. Yeah. And I, I told him, no more watching me. Well, we want to make sure that absolutely nobody gets in your way, but we'll we'll keep them at a far distance. Yeah. <laughs> and Fred has to see the stairs so he can fall down. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stay down. Can you pull all the fuses in the place and we'll bring flashlights? We'll provide our own light. <laughs> I thought that the last party, though, I agree with you, Howard, I thought the last party was a little crowded. You mean but, too many girls or no, too many guys? Too many guys. Yeah, me too. Oh, but that was a Super Bowl party. Well, different because it should be only Scott's closest Scott's friends. Scott's friends. And I think none of his personal friends, just guys he knows professionally oh, like yeah. us. Well, see, that's what I was going to ask. Is this going to be his real bachelor party where his friends get to party with no. him? No. This is his K-Rock bachelor party. It's going to be me, Gary, Jackie, Fred, Billy, and Scott. That's and that's it. That's the perfect party. That's it? That's yeah. That's the perfect <laughs> You guys in the back. Nah, no. you don't need them. No. You don't want Eric and Scott? No, like, yeah. Eric likes to dance for the girls anyway. Yeah, Scott. You want, you want those guys? More we guys, less guys. girls. Or are you going to have like a homo? And only two more guys. All right, and you know who else? we got to have Neil, because he's fun. Oh, Neil. But then what about... What are you Neil's, gonna these are my you're friends. You're going to get Gay Rich? Gonna, gay Rich is good, because he doesn't take up the girls, and, he, and, and Neil always ends up pulling down his pants. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about Gorilla Gangie and John? Don't need them. Okay. Extra garbage. <laughs> Baggage. 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 All I know is the guy keeps bugging me for funny money. What do I need him there? Gangie puts money down and, like, eats with the girls and chats with them. Let him do what he wants. He wants to act like a homo. Let him do what he wants. Look, that's as close as he gets to even talking to girls. I want to talk to the strippers. <laughs> so, how'd it go when you were dancing? <laughs> yeah, last time at the Super Bowl party, Gangie did his best interviewing at scores. Yeah. <laughs> and tell all the girls... They have to tell me every five minutes, 
that I have the biggest genitals. Ah, <laughs> They've got to be coached. Okay, Lonnie? You got it. Yeah. Every five minutes they have to tell me I'm the biggest. They're into fantasy. <laughs> yeah. That was great. That's how they get all the money out of me. They start telling you about your... They go, your... you're the biggest. Look at the size of your feet. Look at the size. Look at... Mm. <laughs> I rub my knee against you. Look at that. Ooh. And your pockets just turn themselves yeah, inside go, out. Keep saying it, honey. Here's another 20. Oh, Robin, i got to tell you, Howard is very popular because it used to be Charlie Sheen was the girl's favorite, Sean Penn. But lately, it's been Howard. No question uh, about those it. Those other guys haven't been in town. Huh? That's my problem. I always want to be popular wherever I go. I'm always trying to please. With Lonnie's money, I'm the most popular. Oh, yeah. All right, Lonnie, we're going to be over there. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, That's very Lonnie. generous of you. Lonnie from Scores. <laughs> 20000 in funny money. <laughs> Six guys. <laughs> Six guys, 20 grand. Oh, I want to see what happens. Oh. Yes. It's like pigeons all over. I can't over. believe you're saying too many guys. Hours. They always have, what, 50 women there? Yeah. Perfect. That's yeah, but, right. But, but it's, it's just like the jungles. There are some guys who get all the money, and they keep coming back for more money, and then they say, okay, you five girls. First of all, Twenty of the girls go with Howard immediately. Yeah, and so you know what? That overwhelms me. But still, there are thirty girls left for the rest of you. Yeah, but do you want some variety? Some of the girls you don't want to, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. so you some say he's all type. the best girls? Yeah. Well, quite frankly, I'm the, I'm the guy holding about ten grand in funny money. <laughs> three of them converge on you at once. You got to dole out the money. Yeah, and you right can't right even right. enjoy them. Yeah, right. the one of the time. Yeah. Billy, you're easy. Yeah. <laughs> Billy sits down. It's the same girl each time. She just stands there and he just around. gives one girl all yeah, the money. all his money. I love you. Yeah. That's just a cool move. Some of the guys, there's like three or four of the guys do that. They get yeah, they get like, they get wives for the night. Because exactly. Ronnie's like that. You take you bring in Ronnie. Yeah. Because Ronnie gets one girl, right? Yeah, Ronnie goes. I had the best girl. I go. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes. I kept her all night. I'm like. Yeah. But it sounds like you're married, douche. To me, you go to strip club, you keep them coming. <laughs> the variety is the name of the game. Yeah, you want, you want monogamy, go home. Lap is the name of the game. <laughs> right. But all centers around my lap. Lap. <laughs> lap. Next. <laughs> Next. Next. I need someone to attend to my lap. <laughs> <laughs> the world's most important lap. Yeah, right here. Got twenty grand in front of it. <laughs> that should be our next promo. The world's most important lap. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, man, it's great. Well, anyway. Now you're glad he's getting married. Yeah, now I'm happy you're getting married. <laughs> See? Oh, he's right. changed. When do you guys want to do the uh, bachelor party? <laughs> Seriously, come up with a list of guys, because, you know, it, it, let's keep it tight this time, huh? I, I'm sick of all the riffraff. I mean, do we care that he's getting married? I mean, does when, he get, when he's getting married, does it have anything to do when with it? When is he getting married? May 20th, so should we do What's it? today? Today's uh, March 29th. So let's do it next week. <laughs> yeah. What if he cancels the wedding? <laughs> yeah, don't cancel that wedding until we have the party. So what do we do like middle of April? We'll do it in like two or three Fridays. Okay. Well, a Friday's good, right? Friday's always good. Okay. Gets me nice and relaxed. That way I go home and I hate my wife for the weekend. Was it next Friday? <laughs> what about the Friday before vacation? Next Friday? Sounds good to me. Next Friday's good. No, the Friday before vacation is not that good because we actually have stuff to do the next day. Yeah. Okay. We need a day we can recover. Don't have a tired lap. You know what? Why don't you wait two Fridays? Because I'm still kind of sick. You want to be recovered. I don't hand, want to give the girls any On the other hand, won't this make you better? Right. That's what it I was going to say. Wouldn't this be a healing experience? I'm just afraid I'll miss it. <laughs> if all the girls lay their hands on you, it will heal you. Yeah. You know, but he's going to have a hard time convincing his wife that it's okay for him to go if yeah. he's sick. Yeah, good point, Robin. <laughs> She's starting to think like I do. <laughs> you know, honey, I didn't even want to go to scores. It's Einziger's fault. I don't even want to go to scores. It's because of Einziger. We have to do it. <laughs> that way we don't have to go to a stupid wedding. Yeah. All right. We've got to take a break and do the news. All right, Einziger. There you go. You're going to have the best bachelor party. Thanks. Thanks, boy. Four guys, 900 women. Ooh. That's what you live for. You really... Have you seen him at one of these things before? Yeah, he's a big pussy. Oh, okay. He's in love. <laughs> but I, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. <laughs> Do you you stay what? Maybe a total of ten minutes? No, I stayed longer than that last time. What? I stayed longer than that last time. I stayed longer than that last time. <laughs> I'm telling you, all these e guys who talk like women. <laughs> did you stay longer? Did you get a dance? Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. Did you like the girls, or you're not really that interested? No, yeah, they were nice. Yeah. Did you get aroused? Um, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. All right. He's okay. lying. Of course I did. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
was the best 11 minutes I've ever spent. <laughs> I licked the sweat off her. Oh. Is that the list? The list is done. Yes, thank you. Let me see the list of guys. Uh, Howard, Gary, Fred, Jackie, Billy, Stuttering John, Grillo, Ganji, or they're out. We have, I thought we'd, we'd decide. And then Ronnie, Neil, Scott Isaacer, and the two guys back, and he gump at the pace. All right. <laughs> Why are we calling him Gump? Every, I don't even know his name anymore. Yeah. Everyone calls him Gump. He looks, like, he looks like Forrest Gump. Really? But that's what everyone calls him. Yeah, that's nice. He answers to it. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> he likes it. All right. And what about Gay Rich? He doesn't take up any room. Well, no. you know, let's let's because then we open it up to a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, because Neil needs somebody to goof on. Yeah, exactly. who's gonna dance for Neil? Well, well, I, yeah. I like to throw yeah. Neil some fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> so get some other gay guys for Neil. <laughs> All right, gay rich will do All right, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with the real news about marriage. Uh, and there are things that go through a man's head. I'll tell you what goes through my head. Well, listen, to the book he wrote is called "She Wants a Ring and I Don't Want to Change a Thing," which would be right where you are. Yeah, I'm kind of, well, I, listen, I don't get any pressure from Beth that she wants a ring, so, you know, I'm not getting that that thing. But there are sometimes I fantasize about, gee, it'd be really nice, and this and that, we'd be married happily ever after, but I've been married, and it went wrong. So, I sit and go, but maybe things will get worse instead of better. Like, maybe and they that's can... why you're always saying, things are great the way they are. That's right. why I'm this is right where you yeah, are. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. If it His became name? important to Beth, would you marry her? If, like, she came to you and said, you know what? Uh, That's a good question. I think I, you I know, really want to be married. At this point, I don't know, because, like, I really don't want to, I mean, I don't really need to be married. I what love if she says, woman. I'm out? I mean, it's uh, not in her nature. I would, hate, I, think... I would hope she didn't, because that would just suck. Then you feel like you're being pressured instead of yeah. doing it for the right reasons. Well, not I'm out, but, you know, like, it's mm. just, you know, you love her. It would her make me happy. I'm not happy with the situation. Yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, yeah, sure. I, I, you know what? By then I know I said I'd never get married again, but I could, I could say. I told you that. Yeah. You're, you're Robin, you're right. You're getting closer and closer. <laughs> I told Robin she was right. <laughs> um, I said, you know, it's just like, I don't know, you know. It's just, it's so perfect. I, I mean, you know. I don't even want to go through the embarrassment of a wedding ceremony. I, I find them horribly embarrassing. Well, yeah, but you don't have to have a huge ceremony around. anymore. I mean, although she means we're... she means so much to me that if that was going to kill her, that she wasn't, you know, this is stern. I told you this even about a baby. If that was going to kill her, you love her, you're going to do it. No, I can't go there. Yeah, you would. But Beth no. would never. Beth, Beth would Don't never argue with me. I've been right well, all along. Then, then you just talk me out of getting married. Because you know what? If the next thing is the baby, I'm just so not ever there. All right. Here's what this guy James uh, says is on men's minds when they think about getting hit. The life sentence of for better or for worse. Right. That's number one. Absolutely. Giving up that dream of tasting the fruits of all nations, splitting from woman to woman. Right. Number two. Let's see. Because that's what marriage is. You're vowing that you're never going to be interested in other women. Ever. I don't know that. It's Ever again. The, the, the um, vow should be my penis now belongs to you. Yeah, and that's there's something sort of romantic about that. Like you don't give your penis to someone else, mm -hmm. but at the same point, you don't know that you're not going to have that feeling about someone else. Look at Richie Sambora. But most guys who get married are guys who, just like Chris Rock says, you know, are out of options. A man just faces right. his options. The what if complex. What if I fall even more in love with another woman? Right. Mm. Number four, divorce. Right. <laughs> Number five, <laughs> replicating his parents' failed marriage. Or replicating his parents' happy marriage. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. No matter how you slice it, marriage sucks. But you know, you know what? You, you know what else the big fear is, and this is going beneath the surface. Those are all the obvious. Well, I haven't gotten to six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, go ahead. Be in oh. here, surrendering his post as president and CEO of the Fun Firm. Hmm? The Fun Firm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Becoming an active member in the Tamed Husband Fraternity. She might get fat. The blah life, boredom over familiarity and routine. Right. Bagging Surrendering quiet control space privacy, watching ESPN all night poker and suds with the guys, cigar breath, and stinky sneakers. And giving up erotic break the guest room fold out couch sex. Right. For regulated you do this, I do yeah. that, now let's sleep sex. And she'll get fat, which isn't on that list. But the the other thing is too. A lot of guys, like me, always think something good is going to turn into something horribly bad. That's the thing. And, and like, well, that's, he said that. He said the idea that it could all go wrong. Yeah, I mean, guys and people in general, 
have this thing that, you know, oh, I don't deserve anything good in a way. Some deep psychological kind of thing. Who, who knows how we get that way? The fact of the matter is, we live in fear that whatever is good is going to turn bad. But don't you see that happen a lot? People are so yeah. happy as a couple, and then they get married, and it just goes to shit. There's something hot about being the boyfriend and the girlfriend <laughs> as opposed to the husband and wife. Oh, it's definitely sexier. You yeah. Know, and... I mean, I look at my married friends, and I go, they're jealous that I got a girlfriend as opposed to a wife. I well, think. when you were married and you used to talk about having sex with your wife, I used to say, who does he think is interested in married sex? Right. <laughs> well, you're like, wow, I banged my wife. You can have. Yeah, I banged my wife. Boy, I got her. <laughs> Good score. Again, we're doing this strictly from the man's point of view. But... Yeah, was there another point of view? You're right. Well, I was talking about the man's point of view, Artie. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's what I'm saying, but we got to listen to broads anyway. I mean, you know, hey. So Look, what's the upside? The upside is if you're a guy who can't get laid or you're feeling like in the future you're not going to be able to get laid. Like, look at me. I'm 52. How much longer? When are we going to put up with my old ass? I always remember oh, that you, you'll argument. Be able to get, you'll be able to get laid for but a while. I always remember that argument the, that they say Frank Sinatra had with his last wife. Mm -hmm. You know, they were at it, at each other's throats, and it was like, uh, I'm walking out kind of a fight. Right. And he looked at her and said, who wants either of us? <laughs> <laughs> right, he knew. There's nowhere to go. That's right. we got to stay right here. So, like, like, if you take a guy... Who hasn't been getting laid? Suddenly, some chick for some bizarre reason starts banging him. He's like, "I better lock in here and, and do the full Monty because if I don't, she's going to go leave. to somebody else. It'll be another ten years before I get laid again." Yeah, but Ralph's right. Your situation is—I mean, you'll be able to get laid for another fifteen years. I'm talking years. about Robin asked why guys still get married, and that's they the also reason feel they have to. Like other friends are getting married, and they, they well, just... children too. You want kids, but there is this idea of a, of a, a deeper romance. I That's mean, right. When I'm sitting there, like with my girlfriend on a chaise lounge, and we're we're just sitting there holding each other, and we just feel so close. It's like you almost go, shit, man, It'd be so great. You know, Lock you can be, in. you can, yeah, you can, yeah, you know, and you commit to each other. You know, it's it's a great little pipe dream, but god damn, it goes wrong so many times. Even the hottest chick, would, you know, hey. Heather and uh, Richie, yeah. come on. He got bored. Or well, she something did. Something happened. Something, something happened. happened. That's why Hollywood marriages never last. And I'll tell you something, my marriage wasn't even that bad. I mean, we, you know, we really cared for each other. Just shit happens. And it's like, it's like, I don't know, man. And then, then the legal aspect. Even you see these guys, they sign prenups and they're getting shit thrown at them. You know, it's like crazy. Yeah, but the prenup usually holds. Yeah, it does. But you know, the, the chick always finds some shenanigans with a lawyer. You know. Yeah. How come? Then know. how come you always hear about that? That these girls had prenups and then they're suing over them. Yeah. The next thing you know, Perlman's paying Ellen Barkin an extra ten just to shut her up. <laughs> no, oh. just because she wasn't giving him problems. Oh, I'm gonna pay you more. Yeah. There you go. Hey, you know what? You're so nice. I'm gonna give you more money. <laughs> she hit the mother load. That bro. Twenty mil. Oh man. Yeah. And she's probably pissed. She's probably like twenty mil. That guy's got three billion. Can't please anybody. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, when you're living a three billion dollar lifestyle, right. you have to go down to a twenty million yeah. dollar. She's pissed. <laughs> that hurts. Hard. That hurts. That hurts. I don't know, man. That's tough. I see these people get married, man. I go, ooh. But don't you? You got to take the gamble if you're Sometimes a marrying you man. Sometimes you do. People seem not to be able to be alone, be self-sufficient. Right. Yeah, they need somebody to clean up after them so they get married. If they wind up needing to have that person around, I guess you should make a commitment. Nah, who knows? Hey, so let me tell you a story real quick. So Friday, Everybody's all depressed. I know, you talk about marriage, the room goes dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's real bummer. The M word. <laughs> See, all Even Fred, who's supposedly in a happy marriage, doesn't pipe you know up what? to defend it. No, I don't hear any married guys. No, here, here's the deal. I do love it, but there's no place for like a, a balanced <laughs> opinion on this one here. Ralph's totally off the mark. Because I don't understand why he's so angry about marriage, considering he's never been married or been oh, in a relationship that's yeah, yeah, yeah. been long term. I was going to say about Ralph. Ralph, have you ever been in love with anyone because he doesn't get it sure. ralph listen, it's not just about, about like ralph. fucking all i'm not gonna even I'm, I'm not even goofing around about this ralph has deep deep psychological he really problems. does and not only that is like for example you're not married to beth right but 
I'm in a loving, caring relationship. But would you trade that relationship with Beth away to, like, date a different chick every week? No. There so you Because I, no. I could have had that. <laughs> so, and I, I know you can. I mean, so I was doing it. So there is some validity to having a solid relationship with another person. I like so, it. So, you know, the fuck them and leave them kind of stuff is, is no. good if you're young or whatever, but after a while it but gets tired. But sometimes I think to myself with you, there's still a trust issue there. With Beth, you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? Explain. Because if you, you know, you, you that one little thing, you know, but if I do this, Go ahead. things will change. Like, she's not exactly who she'd be if you'd marry her. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't think know. any woman is. Yeah, they change. They all change. God, Beth's How so would you great know, right now. You know what it is, too? When you get married... I know people. Here's a theory. You know people. I you get married. It puts you haven't had any personal experience. It puts, it puts so everyone. Wait, 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 wait. Here, here's the fear. Got to figure it out. All right. Got to figure it out. You get married, and that puts the woman on equal footing with you. No? That's right. Losing the CEO thing, which yes. is what the guy said. That, now I understand yeah. what he's saying. Right. Because like you look at you look at Gary. Okay, I'm going to use Gary's marriage. <laughs> Gary came to me before he got married. My chick is so great. She lets me do whatever I want. You should see. She's so totally cool. Blah 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 blah. They get married. Two seconds later, she's telling them what to do. I was CEO. Now I'm janitor. <laughs> yeah. You've been busted down the janitor. And in no, a way, you know what? The little boy in all of us wants a mommy to take care of us. So it's like we like being giving over the control, and then we give it over, and then we want it back, and we can't get it back. Yeah, but you want it back when you want it. Yeah. yeah. And but you can't have that. That's you can't, right. You can't have it both ways. I think the CEO thing is really uh, should be way up there on that list. But don't you think a relationship involves, like, one of the things, a lot of my friends who've gotten married, they're like, you know, I can't believe I have to do this and I have to do that. But in any relationship, you got to do. There's got to be, you got to you got to make some concessions. And, and Ralph, Always says like, oh, you're such a pussy. You do this, you do that. But any relationship, you, you know what I mean. Just in any relationship, Gary's there's got to right. be some gear. Gary's right. I mean, one thing that defines a marriage or a relationship with anyone, it's sort of like the bad shit you got to do and the attitude you do it with. Like, like, yeah, I don't feel like getting up and doing this for my wife. Yeah. But when you do it and it brings you closer together. It's it, like wow, that that it's well worth that it. Was worth that it. was worth it. She could like, put up with that on a regular basis. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's tough. That's just. Yeah, but I don't girls... even. I don't get the concept of going from, like, if I had a stash of money and you get married and it goes from your money to our money. Yeah, that drives me nuts. I, would that, freak. I never could. Yeah, wrap but my Ralph, head you have me. no money. I don't know. Right, why right. So you have nothing to worry about. Well, let's say I did. <laughs> but you don't. Let's but you don't. You won't. Let's say I did. No, but... you know what'll happen to Ralph? He'll get married. He'll be so miserable. He'll actually go to work, <laughs> make a ton of money, and then he'll have. You know something? That's the only reason Ralph can't get it together. I he hope... thinks it's a psychological. It's because he's not married. You get married, you get you motivated. I hope Ralph right. does I'll become be wealthy so we can test this theory. What? I hope he can become wealthy so we can test his theory. <laughs> Give me some money, Fred. <laughs> He's willing for you to make him wealthy. Well. Tell you what else, too. If Beth and I, let's say, have been married for five years now, she's not worried about leaving me for six weeks. Now she's on her toes. She's like, hey, I can't leave for six weeks. No, you're right. Yeah, you're, but you're right. Howard will be out there banging. You like start that. to, you do start to take each other for granted on some level. Like I remember, yep. I was reading that book. But that's not good either. What's that guy, Robert Evans? Remember the, the producer? You know, he was married to Allie McGraw. Right. You know, she was a lot younger was. than him, and she was like, she, he said the hottest piece of ass ever. She went to Texas to make a movie with Steve McQueen. But it's Steve McQueen. No, but he's like, sake. but he was like, they're married. You know, she'll be there. You know, she loves me. We're married. You know, there's right. that sort of comfortability you this, factor. You get this comfort thing. Yeah, and guess what? Guess what? He's he left banging her. And he even says in the book, he goes, his exact phrase is. What a fucking idiot I was. I left her alone for six weeks in Texas with Steve McQueen. She kept calling him, please come visit, and he's like, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. And that's what happens. You know, you yeah. get too comfortable. That's and then he went out and banged another odd chick. Right. Well, that's, that's part of it. Also, know. her relationship with him was predicated on the fact that he was a power broker, and she just moved to another power broker. Right. She took the better looking power broker. Exactly. Yeah, the guy who could actually give her something. Broker with looks. Yeah. <laughs> but, Howard, to go back to your relationship and what Ralph was asking about for a second, with you not being married, even though. You always talk about the kids thing and that you both don't want kids. Before you're married, that's never an issue. Right. You know what I mean? You, the kid thing, people seem to feel you have to be married before you can have right. kids. Right. You can't so, have that issue. That way, this way, yeah, we don't you, have you that issue. that off the table. Exactly. There ain't no kid discussion. <laughs> right. I think the, the kid thing complicates it a lot. Yeah. Big time. I tell you. Well, that's why a lot of people get married because they're like. I think the kid thing for me is deal breaker. You know, I just can't. I can. Like, like, but, there, you, but you've huh? done the daddy and Beth thing. Would say to, and, and Beth would say to me, "Well, then you wouldn't fight for me. You know, then you don't really love me." And I'm like, "No, I love you. 
but that has nothing to do with it. I don't love your kids. <laughs> yeah, I just thought, yeah, I just, I could not, I just know that it would be unfair for a kid to have me as a father at this point. See, you've been a dad already, not, and you yeah. liked it, and you're done with it. That's right. No, I get that. I, I mean, I totally get that. Like, I love my kids. But I've already got the, I've already got kids. Right. Yes, but on a level, she's making the point that wait a minute, if that's a part of me, you should love it too. Yeah, mm. yes, yeah, and she's right. No, I listen. Well, she's I, right about that. But I see people. Can't, can't. I see people where like they're in a second marriage, but only one person is, and like the guy's been like, I've already thrown a big wedding. Yeah. And the woman's like, Well, I have it. And then you have that whole discussion about who's. Oh, uh, that's who's, that's another pain in the ass. Sure. I know. Uh, my buddy's going through that exact thing right now. No. Oh. Because when one person's already done it, how can you yeah. reduce right. that the well, other person hasn't done it? One thing I know about it. Beth, she wouldn't want any kind of wedding. Like, she, you know, we, we both would be like, okay, let's go let's get married with, like, two of our friends there. Like, right. Fred did on the beach with yeah. the janitor watching. <laughs> <laughs> Fred didn't even invite me. Fred...